Block 4, it would still be very reassuring to have him even if in a different army. Despite him being how he is, it would certainly make a variance. In fact, I'd like to see how the old man would have tested Aurora. Upon hearing those words he reminded himself of the gigantic dark aura that completely hid the sunlight in the last fight against the few thousand monsters. I wonder about that, but it would certainly be quite interesting to see. Don't even bother imagining it. She'd stand absolutely no chance, he smiles at the reply pissing her off. Year 5009 After the system day 6 of the sun season in a steer village potion shop, business sure is skyrocketing Vincent. Luke laughed happily yet tiredly as they've been in a chaotic situation where their stock is running out ever since the war began. Gosh, true war hasn't even started and it's been quite a hassle, potions enhanced with your unique light element sure have become popular but we can't produce enough, we're forced to close the shop earlier every day as we run out. Yes, I know. We've even put Elise to make some with the skill I taught her, but it is still not something we can handle by ourselves. We can't make miracles, plus we get to go house earlier it's not that bad, with both girls away I get to train more village kids too. It's almost like you're making an army of kids Rosalyn, Vicent started laughing while teasing her. At least, if the village is ever attacked they'll be able to defend themselves. That's very true dear, you're doing a great job. Come let's close the shop for today and I'll stay behind making some potions, I'll meet you home when done. All right love, as Luke finishes exhausting his mana on the last potion storing it inside a box with proper divisions so they don't move while the box is reallocated, he sighs and then looks through the window wiping his sweat off. I wouldn't have minded joining you in the front lines dear daughter, but I couldn't possibly leave the shop and the business with the prince unattended, so I hope that my potions at least help you over there. I pray to the goddess Arya every day to keep you safe my little Aurora. A while passes and Luke sits on a bench near the usual fountain surrounded by a small garden. Been a while ever since I sat here, not as pretty as the river I have close by home, but it's still pleasant. From time to time, I receive a report from his highness himself and all the gratitude he has towards me. But ever since Aurora rose to a general, and has started to achieve victories after victories, he's been requesting me to assume my family as nobility and even own land. I still remember how Iris didn't want to become a noble or a knight when Lady Alicia gave her the opportunity to. I suppose this was the reason why since things do get complicated the more influence one has. I've achieved my share, and have done my share for the girls, but I don't think I'll be assuming nobility much less the territories awarded to Aurora for her ascension. It sounds too troublesome. Living quietly in a steer village has been my and Rosalind's dream as well as decision, turning our backs on it now sounds awkward. I'll wait for my daughters to return home and see what they'd like to do, for now, I'll refuse his highness saying. What could I tell that wouldn't upset him? He crosses his arms while thinking for a while, perhaps that I don't want to be a noble? Not sure he'd be happy with such an answer. Perhaps I could tell him I want lands close to where I already am, towards the river and the mountain area. That way I'd still be able to remain close to a steer village instead of living close to the capital. That sounds like a great idea, that way in the future if the girls want to they can have animals and expand their fields, perhaps even hire some peasants to attend their territory, Luke smiled happily and as he did he left his seat and started heading towards his home as he had come to a solution. On his way there he'd stop by to greet a few people who knew him eventually reaching his house. Upon arriving he would look out every day of the field his daughter Iris made with a lot of effort and remember the money he had to spend to make her happy, which filled his heart with warm memories as she'd be super ecstatic seeing as how things grew from a little seed to big fruits and vegetables. Iris has always been quite a kind and happy girl, I hope her pursuit for strength doesn't change that side of hers. He kneeled some dirt from the ground and rubbed it with both hands as it slowly fell while he prayed to the goddess Arya. Rosalind who was sitting on Iris and Aurora's bed was staring at his husband who had been doing this every day since the one Iris didn't return home, in order to train with the swordmaster Ray, she had been sitting on their bed for a little while looking at the window. 
She got up and headed outside once she reached him she knelt next to him and prayed with him. And so we pray for the safety and future of our beloved twins who were born on a scary and dangerous world full of horrors and chaos. We seek the guidance of Arya the goddess of good as she brings fortune and life to us, humans. They hadn't been much into praying but ever since the saintess blessed Aurora at the annual tournament, in other words, Iris, they've become pretty reliant on praying to her as they knew their fate was now connected to the goddess in some way. Once they finished their praying Rosalind got up extending Luke a hand who took it gladly and she pulled him towards the river where they walked happily. As they got there she took her shoes off and lift her pants upwards then placing her feet inside the water. Luke amused copied her sitting next to her and then saying, You used to do this with the girls from time to time. Yes, it was by doing this that I first saw Aurora smiling kindly. In the end, despite trying I didn't get to uncover the past life of her. I did learn about Iris's one, however, it was a pretty short one. The mother died. The father despised her, the new wife and their children bullied her, she became a bookworm back then which ended up reflecting in this life as she became an avid reader. Eventually becoming a happy girl as she was meant to from the very beginning. It's a good thing we were able to mostly heal her, mostly. We did our best as her parents. Yes, we did what we could, but Iris's heart had already learned fear and hatred with a big intensity. To be fair while I was surprised when she told me her class had been witch. It also felt like it matched seeing as how she suffered before. Indeed, there's a big chance her old world memories and experiences influenced the system choice in this one though I do believe as a witch or not she'll be always a kind and happy girl. I believe so especially since she has honorable reasons to become the strongest human. Our little girl said she wanted to have the power to protect those who she loved. Rosalind upon finishing talking leaned her head on Luke's shoulder while smiling. A nine-year-old protecting us isn't that funny in a way, makes me wonder if I shouldn't have kept adventuring becoming further stronger which would allow me to teach her more things, don't think like that. Our choices aren't meant to be regretted plus if that had been a thing, there was a chance Aurora wouldn't be where she is now as your relationship with the Prince Julius was a must. Yeah. Uck. Talking on that I think I'll tell him that I'd like him to give me the territory all around here towards the mountains and the southern forest. Eventually it'll be suitable to live if our little general conquers the enemy kingdoms there. Aurora just placed her earnings on you didn't she? Yup, she truly just does as she pleases, without allowing me to contest it. Luke laughed making Rosalind smile happily. Well ever since we met her we knew she was very special, not to this extent since we didn't quite know what to expect, but for sure interesting enough to one day become someone extremely unique. They must find it hard to believe how a nine-year-old knows war from the palm of her hand, if only they knew her true age. Yeah, when we visited Iris at Tun Village and she told us about the dark robes and the red book I couldn't believe it myself. To think she was that old. Putting the 10,000 years apart that she was sealed into a mirror type of pocket dimension like the magic bag that was eventually destroyed, she as a fellow human lived at least 200 years and apparently was a general in Iris' old world. With such an age it's not unlikely to have mastered war, and well. Their world was more advanced than ours in that regard, so I'm fearful to say, but to Aurora what's she doing is but child play. True. I don't know what she did while being sealed but she must have thought a lot on everything perhaps including how to better improve her war knowledge, kind of like people play chess alone to figure out new plays and ways to counter oneself style. In her place, alone for 10,000 years, I doubt I would have remained as sane as she appeared to be, as soon as such words left his mouth, Rosalind grabbed his hand tight and spoke, I don't think she's sane anymore. It would justify the affinity to the dark element, the ominous aura, the eerie and creepy expressions, and the only reason she didn't attempt to murder us, is most likely due to Iris having saved her from such torment. In a way, Iris was blessed with a monstrous being, on the other hand, it may be a burden too heavy for her to carry. There was no information about their soul bound. No book about releasing the curse she implemented onto Iris, so we can only pray they'll be able to get along in the future.
Since both can die if one of them dies, I don't think Aurora would ever dare to hurt Iris reason why I've been able to hold in the worries ever since I met for the first time. Yes, all in all, everything she did has been to help Iris whom she feels like she has a huge debt, even if they may argue in the future. At this point it would most likely be as two sisters of the same age. Sisters. She might even see Iris as a granddaughter or a disciple of the sorts. It was not explicit as to how their old world worked, but Iris said which has also existed back then, and I wondered if Aurora wouldn't have been one of them. Since through soul bound it could have happened to pass to Iris, that's not impossible. But since she's a book now and her class is apparently Grimo I related I don't think she can have access to her old powers so it should be fine, I hope. Personally I wouldn't mind if she had as it would be useful to teach Iris, and if both became truly strong, in the big picture it would be best due to the other races, the enemies humanity can't defeat, Rosalind said coldly tightening Luke's hand hurting it. Yes, that's why I wouldn't be bothered if Aurora somehow became capable of destroying all of them, since she's a weapon. Then at least she could become the necessary tool for that to be achieved, even though with her war knowledge I'm starting to believe that it'll be possible for us to live a truly peaceful life with our adorable daughters. That'd be the best, by the way, Luke. Rosalind while burning inside sits on top of his legs and whispers to his ear, I'd love if they had a younger sibling when they returned. I want a baby, and as soon as she finishes saying that she kisses him fiercely. Year 5009 After the system day 17 of the sun season in Princess Liliana Army Camp. A soldier upon reaching the tent running enters it hastily and says, Princess we've received a message from General Aurora. The three women inside look at each other as it had been a while ever since they had been contacted. Do speak, I'm eager to hear what that little doll has for us. Yes your highness, she said she's going to dive into the territory of the goblins in three days and agitate things as her planning has come to an end as well as this sealed letter which only you and General Angelica must read so I haven't opened it. He walks closer and delivers it with a light bow, and then stepping back all the way to the entrance to not see the letter contents. We may have to discuss its contents so you may leave. We'll call for you once we have an answer for her. Thank you for your hard work. Your gratitude is wasted on this messenger, he bows and then leaves smiling. Once they leave one of the ladies says, men really can't help but smile in your presence princess. Well my dear Ange, that too is a woman charm, plus Lady Angelico is here too and she's also beautiful, men can't help but be tempted and captivated by beauty. The numbers of our army did increase a lot even since it became official that if one of them slew the Goblin King they'd get to marry you. Ange frowned remembering the talk they had about it. Indeed we've managed to get ourselves close to 400,000 soldiers 70% men. But it's a good thing that even some women wish to try. There can never be enough manpower in an army, Angelica said finding it amusing. Exactly, as long as someone manages it for me that's plenty. The princess made a grin unbefitting her, we wouldn't have it as easy if it wasn't for the princess talents. Yes daughter, in this world talent and skills are everything, and it just so happened that our little princess received the cursed skill puzzle path which allows her to choose any path and depending on it a different puzzle is given allowing her to acquire information that she wouldn't know otherwise, by gathering knowledge and doing specific actions towards it. Of course that if she wasn't as smart as she is, it'd be a useless skill. Oh my Angelica praising me so much on this lovely morning. Liliana laughed gracefully at her own words. So what do you think Aurora's message will be? There's only one way to find out. The princess says and picks a thin silver dagger cutting the letter carefully and upon picking it up and reading it with her full attention. There she goes again. Ange said softly to not disturb the princess while her mother placed a finger on her nose to shush her. Half an hour passes and the princess returns to her senses. This will work, she smiled happily as she had gained the chance to match Aurora and even surpass her achievements based on the information she gave her as she didn't know about the princess skill. What was the letter about, princess? Upon hearing such words she laughs wickedly and then as she stops words come out. I really want her in my army, 
that girl is a genius, I want her, I want her, I want her, she repeated herself while feeling possessive about it making the two ladies who were with her expressionless as they were used to the real her. Prepare a good amount of soldiers were going to capture some kobolds alive and burn the letter. The two of them bowed and executed her request, and then out of curiosity Ange who couldn't contain it asked. Kobolds? Why are we going to capture them? Weren't we focusing on the goblins instead? Yes we were dear Ange, but this princess has been inspired by that blonde doll of my brother, so I can't help but make amends with such furry beasts. Perhaps even taking them on our side on our war against the goblins. Upon hearing that the ladies gulped and Angelico asked, Do you really mean it? That we would go as far as to ally ourselves with the kobolds? Aurora said it is quite possible as the enemy of our enemy can become our ally given the proper preparation and right set of emotions. Should we really trust her words, princess? I chose the path to become a queen my dear Angelica, and Aurora seems to be part of that specific puzzle, in other words, we have to outshine her while using the abilities that girl owns towards war. If we're going to ally ourselves with the kobolds then I apologize princess Liliana. But I'm failing to understand why would we capture kobolds? Wouldn't that give the opposite effect? Normally it would, but she came up with a very exciting scheme that if done correctly would make this entire war quite entertaining. Year 5009 After the system day 20 of the sun season inside the goblin territory surrounded by black trees who resembled coal. We've cleaned the pathing for the horses to run freely along with the traps that we've carefully prepared. So the rest is up to how well you'll command your group Lord Zylf. The man on top of the horse looked down to Aurora with a grin while having fabulous wavy hair, colored with white and red. It seems that despite the protests of my men against doing the physical labor of many types, they indeed grew stronger, as such. I'll reward you with an exemplary show on my side. He grinned feeling superior towards everyone else with slim gratitude towards the little girl next to him. I pray for your success as I didn't pick anyone else believing in your potential, so I'm sure you wouldn't betray this lady's expectations. Isn't that so? An eerie expression appeared on Aurora's face making Zylf experience a momentary sense of danger. Humphrey, just wait and see, I'll show you how the great Zylf shall taunt those pitiful goblins. He struck the horse slightly getting a tight grasp on the reins heading towards his men. Zylf really does find himself to be high and mighty, I really do hope he's not all talk, otherwise, I'll have to make him disappear and take hold of the cavalry myself, next to Aurora a woman in white clothes spoke. That man really is unpleasant, no matter how many times I see Zylf. I can't bring myself to like him as a fellow human, feels no different than a beast, as long as he's useful I'll let him be Saint Tess, after all, we need his cavalry. We don't quite need him though. Aurora turned to the woman next to her smiling evilly. To think this little girl would make such expressions while having absolutely no disgrace whatsoever. It really makes me wonder what disgrace implies and why it doesn't reach her. The goddess didn't reject my choice, meaning it was rightful, but. Don't make such a worried face Saint Tess. This world is filled with monsters, and we're here to defeat them all while using those who are on our side. Plus I made sure Zylf wouldn't fail, I placed a few interesting people who know horse riding for this occasion replacing some of his mercenaries without him realizing it, to do something that a beast wouldn't realize. I suppose that this little general is something even worse than that, but at least, she doesn't hurt children and people, nor does she have a liking to torture and crimes, so in a way Aurora is a good girl. That sounds interesting Lady Aurora. What was it that you schemed this time around? Saint S smiled happily while asking as she detested Zalf with all her might finding this extremely amusing. Aurora then points at the rear of the cavalry that is now following Zalf further into the goblin territory. Ten men in black clothes. Does that mean they're men of Balthazar? Yes. They're powerful magicians, who will use a large spell towards the goblin base as they'll be close enough to it. Wouldn't that angry the goblins making their number overwhelm us Aurora? The saintess asks with a worried expression. That would certainly be funny, the more they come the better. Though I do hope it won't be every single one, they're sure going to find themselves in a world of surprises. 
At the end what surprises me the most, is all the confidence you have in everything you do Aurora. Well it would be troublesome and worrisome if I wasn't sure of my own plans, don't you think so? It would make you a lot more nervous if I wasn't self-confident. Well that is quite true, hmm? That is? Yes. I also made Romeo sneak in and take a trip with them as he has a peculiar skill, which allows the plan to become extra exciting. For someone as young as yourself, you sure seem to love war. My dear Serenity have you ever found that one thing that brings you the most joy? That you feel that you were simply born to do, that everything before that felt dull and boring through your entire life. Something like that for me is war. She once again speaks almost as she's lived for who knows how long almost as if she's experienced those words herself. Aren't you a bit too young to reach that sort of conclusion Lady Aurora? The little girl asked with an innocent expression followed by a childish voice. Ain't I too young to lead an army of 700,000 men? Yes yes, prodigious one. Nothing's impossible as long as the goddess Aria is willing to bless us rightfully. It appears to be so. Yet I've heard that you had quite the troublesome time. How'd you manage to survive for the first years you were sickly? Obviously with the prayers to the goddess Aria and the daily healing from my father Luke the healer and his almighty unique light element. Being showered with light element and ending up with the opposite, that's quite ironic, and I've heard that name in the past. He healed someone from the royal family during one of his quests while working as an adventurer I think. Yes, even though my father is currently retired as an adventurer and a potion maker in the little Astia village where we live, sometimes working for Prince Julius, even though I don't know who he healed that made him become famous. I'm not sure about the details either. I suppose you'll have to ask your father the next time you are with him. That'll depend on how long this war will take. I can't allow myself to leave this place anymore. Earliest I can visit is when I have conquered the entire Southern Territory. Quite the great ambition you possess Lady Aurora. Though I'd be disappointed with less after how you made everyone think highly of you. But even so perhaps during the moon season when it's extremely cold, not even beasts would go search for a fight. Perhaps you are right, in their place I wouldn't disregard the dark nights that come with that season. I'll see if I can visit my parents by then. Thank you for your concern Saintess. Aurora lightly bows towards her making the woman smile kindly at her. Year 5009 After the system day 20 of the sun season goblin's perspective, it had been a usual day like many of working for the green creatures who had been making weapons and black armors along with hunting towards the south and making some defensive structures similar to the ones the humans made, walls with spikes glued with clay that was now dried in front of it. Despite not having much intelligence the ones who did were mostly goblins who attained classes related to magic which would lift the negative statuses they'd get each year of their life by spending points in intelligence and wisdom while naturally getting stamina and strength. Goblins were known for their superior health and physical strength, even a mage couldn't be taken lightly as they would smack their opponents with staffs and wands without caring for the weapon's durability. If necessary they'd break them and use the broken pieces as piercing and cutting power. If one of these creatures was to arm wrestle a human both being the same age, the goblin would win ten and ten times, due to this fact the weak were forced to use their brains to find ways to not fight the green ones through brute force. Despite knowing the enemies were stronger the humans were forced to protect their territory as such, they kept dying over and over again. It was only when the goddess predicted a full-scale invasion, thousands of years in the future after the system, that she started making heroes being summoned with exceptional skills and classes. They would not only fight for the humans, but they would also teach and improve the overall lifestyle they had, which would then be forgotten as that generation died since only nobles studied and the majority of the population consisted on peasants who didn't know how to read and write. Thus, both sides over time increased in numbers and as they did, so did the neighbor beast races who would clash with the goblins giving the humans time to expand their numbers up to the present population of nearly 10 million. A great number for a race that was in the bottom level of the food chain. Of course that if the creatures instead of having split their tribes thousands of years ago and would be led by a single goblin king, 
Now the humans would have been long gone with or without heroes and visions making the goddess Arya fail in saving them. It just so happened that on this specific day the Goblin King was checking on to the goblins his presence would make them work harder, but also motivate them, and he wasn't alone. He had a lot of females following him for his every need whatever they might be on the spur of the moment. He picks one of the axes, one of the older goblins made, lifting it in the air and looking at it, this could cut many human heads I like it, well done, for such deep praise, you should use it, great goblin king Vrag, the smith said happily showing his decayed teeth, as hygiene wasn't their strongest point. The big goblin wearing a black crown made of iron started laughing greatly feeling over the top and then said, save it for me once my curse is finally lifted I shall slay a thousand human heads with it, for the day that happens, I will craft the best shield possible and protect the great king from any incoming harm, even give my body if someone tries to curse you once more. The light of the summoned heroes this time around came later than the other times, so they won't have anyone powerful as they had about 100 years ago, they are doomed, and now we too are a lot stronger with our mana and elemental coating thanks to our great goblin lord, he started laughing loud while making the weapon shine greatly in a blue light making the goblins round praise him, making him laugh even more. Bring some food let us make a small banquet for these goblins who've been working so hard, he shouted loudly making the ones around shout happily. After a while, the female goblins along with a few male ones brought a bunch of food on top of a long table and everyone started encircling it waiting for the king to take the first piece of food as tradition implied. In honor of our fallen goblin warlord and the old man shaman who everyone respected greatly, even though we've buried them and made them a funeral. I will once again in their memory pay respects, and take the first piece from the table by eating their fill, the goblins started beating their feet on the ground while clapping in approval, and then as the king approached the food, almost touching it with his right green and dirty hand and black long nails. The day suddenly became brighter and brighter as the seconds went by to what one of the goblins yelled, king in the air as he turned round to see what was the scream about. A gigantic fireball could be seen falling down on them. At that he charged the axe, throwing it against the little sun to buy some time and then started running. The axe collided against it and the mana was drained, giving further strength to the fireball, unknowingly to the goblin king who didn't know that he had to fight an elemental spell with a different element. He ended by accident making the enemy spell stronger. The others around him noticing him running, they too started moving away as fast as they could, the goblins who knew magic started making small elemental barriers that were destroyed one after another as the enemy spell fell down on them. Once the fireball fell on the table it spread in a wide area burning everything around it in a range of 20 meters turning three goblins into charcoal who were too slow to get away in time. Shit who the fuck is attacking us? With a louder voice, the rag yelled. Put down the fire and check which race is attacking us prepare to attack them, from the direction the fireball came. A goblin in panic ran, finding his majesty due to the shout, King, King. The humans are attacking us on top of horses, they've killed some of us destroying some of our defenses. As soon as he heard that he clutched his fists and roared in madness and then he heard a loud bang as the metal part of the axe that didn't melt fell on the ground, making him shift his attention to it becoming even angrier as he liked the weapon that he had been gifted, finding the goblin who made it completely black few meters next to it. Unique Skill King Screech he screamed angrily and loudly making the birds fly away from some of the trees and some animals that were loitering around escape. The voice vibrated through one-fourth of the territory alerting every goblin who heard it that the king needed them. A very beast-like method, like a stampede shaking the ground, the numerous goblins picked weapons and war armors, some rode wolves and boars that they had forcefully domesticated while others enhanced their physical abilities to go faster. The trembling was so loud that it felt to the cavalry led by Zylf, a clear warning that now was the time to run away and that loitering a second longer could easily mean death to them, as such, he gave the retreat command and as he did the goblin king shouted, murder those dirty humans, the goblin king started by seeing ten goblins who shortly became a hundred, 
eventually reaching a thousand while the biggest and strongest ones remained by his side waiting for orders kneeling on the ground. Your command, O oh great king, he glared down at those awaiting his instruction, visible darkened veins popping out on his face. Goblin who was the one leading that attack? How many do you estimate? The small messenger replied loud enough for everyone to hear. I saw a weird one with white and red hair in a blue armor approaching shouting, so I believe that was him along with around 20,000 humans on horses. Good. He faced a specific group next to himself. I'm going to wake up Giganto while you four destroy those men so we eat their horses tonight. They fisted the ground happily and shouted. At once. Great King. Don't bother with them if you see yourselves outnumbered you'll be leading a massing number so it should be easy. We'll retreat if we see an equal or higher amount of those things. Good, go hunt. He shouted angrily to increase the morale of his generals that stood in front of him kneeled boiling their blood with the thirst to kill. The King walked towards the center of the territory to find the one they called Giganto. One of the elders of a special type of goblin still haven't received word of the goblins I sent towards my sister for a smart goblin general. So for now I'll have to hold those humans down, once it gets here I'll start tearing them down killing them by the millions. The king made an eerie expression as he thought. I don't remember humans using animals like that before. But our goblin wolf riders can easily catch up to them and we have more than 20,000. So it should be a matter of time. Till they catch them, he started laughing wickedly as he couldn't wait to eat the free horse and human meat. Human fried limbs. With horse cut in big fat cubes. I can't wait for such a delicious meal. Water started overflowing from the corners of his mouth dripping the ground as he moved. A while passes and he stared at the one five times taller than himself. Giganto who looked down at him being ten meter tall, as he notices the king he takes a few steps backward and then knelt. Welcome Goblin King Vrag, it's been a long while. Has the time come for my family to be used in war? A hundred gigantic goblins started noticing Vrag, one after another kneeling towards him. Soon we will make those humans pay and enslave them while feeding on their children. The Giganto smiled making the rest copy him happily. Year 5009 After the system day 20 of the sun season Zylf perspective Lord Zylf. It seems we're being chased by some weird goblins riding wolves and what I believe to be wild boars. This has become rather complicated, but we can't halt now, we stick to the plan if we wish to survive. He shouted nervously while grabbing the reins tighter as they gallop through the path Aurora mentioned over and over making him tired of hearing it. But Lord if we go this way, we'll be going into the middle of the traps won't the goblins simply follow through us towards the safe route? It doesn't matter mercenary chief Lahal, you saw the same as me. A little girl with high intellect it's too late to have doubts about her. As we've already provoked the enemies by launching a big fire spell like that, Zylf turned around watching 40,000 enemies riding beasts chasing after them. Shit, they'll close in, in no time. But we must at least reach the safe route ahead, he hit the horse body with his feet so the animal would start moving faster even though it was already at maximum speed. As he looked behind once more Zylf noticed someone giving orders to black clothed men, further on the rear who seemed to be preparing a different spell from before, making him suspicious as he knows most of the mercenaries, whatever you implemented in my forces on my back, better keep me alive Aurora or I'll come back from the dead and haunt you girl. The allies passed through the safe route and then as the enemies approached the rear, Romeo shouted, blessed skill sage boost, and skill amplification. With the initial use of sage boost increasing all his skills considerably, he combined it with amplification, channeling both together towards the green spell the men on the rear were chanting, as such once they released it, something fantastic happened. A big and vast boulder fell on the ground between them and the goblin riders shaking the ground increasing the gap, forcing the enemies to go around it from left and right instead of wasting time destroying it, as it would take a tremendous amount of time doing so. The goblin in the front touched the wolf's head making it howl aggressively, causing new orders to spread through the rest of the riders. As the human force kept on moving away at a fast pace, the riders entered the sides of the path, increasing the weight on the ground severely as they gave chase. 
By the time 5,000 on each side were running through it, the ground collapsed making 10,000 goblin riders fall into trapped spikes at a depth of 8 meters, making them unable to climb out of it. The rear guard of the cavalry then chanted a fire spell similar to the one they had used to provoke them, and sent a fireball to each side burning the goblin riders who couldn't escape, decimating every single one of them as together with the spikes, loads of oil had been poured. With madness and rage for their kin that was slain the goblin riders went around the long pitfalls to murder the humans which made them once again ride further away from them. Square formation like we trained, Zylf shouted before they entered a new ground segment of the terrain, following Aurora's orders meticulously as they didn't want to end up like their enemies. The goblin riders upon seeing the enemies moving through the entire ground unlike before, mimicked the humans by going in a big flock of riders, almost catching up to them when a soft voice triggered the unthinkable. Ava your turn. A really big circle appeared beneath the goblin riders as the girl along with Aurora were hiding behind some rocks that looked like a natural camouflage, hidden from everyone else. The general unleashed a great amount of mana channeling it to Ava's body, who poured all that into a big explosion making the ground collapse once more, making 20,000 goblin riders fall onto their deaths burning, and being stabbed by the dangers that were beneath them, as the whole like the last ones became hotter than an oven. Now, charge with Zile Forder, the 20,000 men, turned back and charged at the left over 10,000 goblin riders who were in complete disarray as they were extremely confused about what happened since the humans moved on top without any issue, and suddenly there was a gigantic hole in front of them after a loud bang, that harmed the sensitive ears from the animals they rode on. The human cavalry used a pincer attack on the enemies from both sides by going around the pitfall ultimately encircling the enemies, with the rearguard causing nothing but destruction to their forces, causing even more screams, as the ones from the goblins becoming charcoal inside the pitfalls, since flying was a skill no goblin or human possessed. One of the pieces of information Aurora received from torturing goblins. With 200 human casualties and 40,000 goblin rider deaths, the humans further retreated into the outpost before the rest of the goblins who were marching would get to them, after burning once more the ones who fell in the pit, making sure there were no survivors. With this, unknowingly to Aurora, she had destroyed the most mobile force the goblins had in their territory, allowing her to have the most movable force in the wars to come which would allow her to fully use Zylf to her heart content, a man who by no means enjoyed being used, but without choice and seeing as today had granted him quite the achievement. He was forced to be basked in that glory admired by the mercenaries, and those around who started wanting to learn how to ride to join him. Once the cavalry reached the outpost gate, the healers started attending to the injured, while the ones who were fine took the horses to the stables so they could rest and eat. With a smirk on her face, Aurora took Ava back with her to the camp on a horse that was waiting for them a bit further to the east. Ava had been silent the entire trip thinking about what had just happened, causing her to be the reason so many goblins died. It's not like she regretted any of it the problem lied elsewhere. Just now when I was using my explosion element to cause a small bang in the middle of them with a thousand mana the circle. It extended at least ten times more. Who in the world is this Aurora? The mana she charged me with felt infinite. I had so much power circulating through my body that I was able to cause a devastating explosion killing no less than 10,000, and I received the entirety of the experience as giving mana to someone else doesn't share it. I just won 10 million experience from 40,000 beasts, the riders and the ones they rode. Simply like that, I'm currently level. Personal Info Ah, uh, why am I only level 60? Not like it's a low level but. My experience towards it is 6000 out of 6000. Don't tell me this is my limit. Mixed tears of happiness and sadness started flowing down as she grabbed the girl's waist tighter in front of her as they rode the same horse. What's wrong Ava? Aurora asked confused feeling the grip looking behind hearing her crying. I reached level 60. My experience is maxed and it didn't go higher. I think this is my limit. Even my rare class got maxed at level 3 and nothing happened. 
It didn't evolve or anything, she shouted while the tearing got worse making her lean the face on the back of Aurora drenching it. I didn't know there was a max level for us humans. Since I'm only level 3, Aurora laughed surprising Ava with the information she spouted. Level 3? With all that mana, how is that possible? Well I got blessed by the saintess and the goddess so I suppose I break through somehow. Plus my sister's class is level 4, that's certainly not the limit for a human. You might just not have the requirements to go further as you currently are. So cheer up, you did a great job, and I'm sure you'll eventually find what you're lacking. Upon hearing such words Ava cried like a little baby, but this time instead of sadness she did it out of relief, as she wanted to surpass her teacher Ryan while he was still alive. With a soft trembling voice, she said softly, Thank you, General. No, thank you Aurora for easing my heart. A kind smile appeared on the blonde girl's expression going forever unnoticed, as no one was there to see how beautiful it looked. As soon as Aurora arrived at the gate later than the cavalry, she was greeted with victory shouts and applauds for yet another small successful victory to what the girl shouted. Prepare the defenses, there's a chance we'll be attacked by the Goblin King today or in the following days, we may all celebrate together once we've won this war. Don't get complacent, for the war that is a monster has just started engulfing its victims. The gate opened and she went inside silencing everyone forcing the soldiers to focus on the open field in front of them, for any following enemies which wouldn't arrive, for a while. Some time passes and Aurora can be found inside her tent alone thinking, thanks to Ava I now know the full utility of fame and disgrace, without it being high enough the class level will get stuck thus capping the user and class level, in other words, on Iris case. A grin appeared on her expression as she knew her sister had an abnormal amount of disgrace. From Balthazar's side of information, it is within the expectation that the first awakening occurs when she reaches level 5 of her class, seeing as Ava is level 3 it means her fame and disgrace are low, she needs more titles to rank it up and possibly to kill different species, her goblin slayer title should be maxed now, but that would only give so much fame. There's also a chance the system didn't see it as her own sole effort, thus not giving her special titles for what she achieved. In Iris's case, everything was her own effort no matter how basic it might have been, and at a young age too. This leaves me with a soul doubt. Now that I'm fully awakened my class remains without a level. Perhaps as a weapon I don't need to level it up, as I'm already fully fledged or almost completely awakened my pandemonium skills are locked I didn't even get to try them. Uck, the system sure is making things complicated for me. I can't help for Iris to awaken and remove these restrictions. May I enter? A familiar male voice entered her tent interrupting her thoughts. Yes Romeo, come in. Upon entering he said, we managed to defeat those goblin riders, and we sent a team to bring their meat to store it for the moon season through multiple magic bags and the warehouses we built with the help of the few ice mages we have upon your orders. Do be careful as the goblins may attack us at any given time. Yes, of course, though after that big loss, I don't think they'll attack right away. Their leader must be pissed off, at least I would be in their place. That would be nice. A leader who falls into rage won't think straight allowing us to capitalize on more opportunities, thus allowing us to close our number gaps for the upcoming fights. I followed your instructions regarding my skills they were quite an amazing combination, it made the spell of the men I took with me become extra fierce, he said excitedly unable to keep his composure, I'm glad it worked out since it was not my skill, I was unsure if it would work, but since it did, in the future we shall make good use of it once more, upon hearing such words he grins happily like a kid overjoyed of the power he has which is different than the one from the past. Shouldn't you be giving the good news to Sophie? Ah, you're absolutely right. Thank you for reminding me before she felt like I ignored her killing me in the process. He started laughing nervously and headed out of the tent in a rush. I guess with the changes on his body by the goddess, Romeo became quite different from what he used to be. The old man sage who was annoying to deal with, in my case. I didn't receive a new body neither am I a human being, so I guess I didn't receive some sort of brainwash by the goddess Arya.
Thanks to her handling the sage and the hero, it has become quite easier. Year 5009 after the system day 30 of the sun season. With the news of Aurora's newest victory against 40,000 goblins with half the amount and only with 200 losses from Lord Zylf's force. Rumors had started reaching in the entire Lumen capital, and the fanatics started seeing blonde people as pretty fine too. Since the goddess and the saintess had blessed one of them, Pope Klaus after a lot of meetings with the higher-ups of each church had decided to lift the restraints on the disgraceful classes and non-black-haired people upon apologizing to the believers, the fanatics, and the normal citizens who had been mistreated in the process, however, the hate for demons continued as an anti-race doctrine, leaving the dark element on the side portraying it as a simple type of magic which Ryan the Magic Institute leader had referred many times before, so this time around the Pope took his side being able to once again stabilize the church with the human race. These changes had been suggested by the Saintess upon conversations with Aurora as well as with the favor of Princess Liliana who had planned on using the church to create schools for peasants which would give both sides great support from the people. In fact, as she had announced such plans, not only did the Pope accepted it, the Prince Julius also went and signed the petition, who was completely approved by the Queen as it was a two against one vote, since Marty had denied it. With the planning proceeding flawlessly by the Princess Liliana, she had obtained another piece of her puzzle, whereas those who felt unjustified all their lives for being forced to never get the chance to learn, and progress in their jobs, and education, be it combat, magic, or other types, were leaning on her side boosting her army force which would increase a lot more once the peasants saw their kids going to such schools. Another suggestion made by Aurora? In one of the letters she traded with the princess was the release of the information the church had stocked on disgrace classes and for those citizens who would like to try one of them should be properly educated on the use of the dark arts as Balthazar had called it, only with the mastery of both types of classes that Aurora truly believed humans would be able to ascend in this world. The saintess also agreed with them and wrote a personal letter to the Pope requesting it. The saintess had also told Aurora all about the past crimes the church had made from torture, killing to experimenting with the human bodies of both classes to which Aurora said they could only use such information in the future if there would ever be something they required from the current pope to do, but even then they'd hardly achieve anything from such blackmail attempt, and they needed the support and influence the church had in the kingdom for the army and the war against the goblins. Apparently, the church did have a unique book of their own like the red one used by the Balthazar group, but it was secured with the highest level of defense, deep in the church, as such, it was impossible for the current Aurora to be able to see what kind of information it would be given to her. She tried to ask the saintess about it, but she has never seen it herself as such couldn't disclose what she didn't know, so it had been left as a side quest for the girl's future. Not that Aurora would be willing to risk her life for it. Due to all the propaganda the church had been doing, for Aurora, who had absolutely no disgrace as the Pope himself had checked, she was starting to be considered by the peasants be they believers or not, as the candidate for one of the Lumen Capital titles. Some titles were only achieved through great honorable acts, like being called a hero despite not having such a unique class. This one was given to those who sacrificed themselves for others with great deeds independent if there was a reward or not. Other titles also existed like the strategist who currently belonged to Lord Ryu. A different one also very famous was the one Alfred, Sylvia, and Ray, who had the title of Swordmaster, sought by all who wielded such weapons, improving themselves daily be it in the army, adventuring the battle academia, or even through other methods like learning in nobility dojos. With the reduction of prejudice against peasants by part of the nobles, Princess Liliana had requested from higher status humans to be teachers themselves as they couldn't defy or deny a request from a member of the royalty, at least, not without great consequences, even though she made sure to give them enough benefits for them to not do a bad job either. Highly educated peasants, merchants, and priests were also procured and hired to start once the first set of schools would finish being built, each would take up to 300 peasants as students, 
and as a demand from the Queen due to war, only a set of ten was initially allowed. However with 3,000 citizens being tutored the princess firmly believed that it would be a matter of time for this trend to spread through the entire territory as those who have nothing, are more willing to study and work harder than the people who have everything, in long term. This would allow the princess to recruit many tools packed of talent who would only accept working for her as she was the benefactor. Most of the children would be removed from the slums and the poorest of places to further manipulate and enhance Liliana's image with the peasants which as a secondary effect would reduce the criminality against children, and some families would even start working harder to support their kids. Slowly but surely the kingdom was being reformed as the royalty kept on excluding Prince Marty's ideas who would most of the time end up in a loss in the majority votation between the three siblings. As the princess contrary to what he initially thought of being neutral was behaving like a true successor using Prince Julius as a support pillar to reduce the gap between peasants and nobles which he hated, though in his head he figured it was the elder brother who was manipulating the younger sister hating him even more, unknowingly to both, the princess would accept some of the proposals of Marty, in other to, induce him to such thoughts thus both siblings being deceived by her. Year 5009 After the system day 22 of the sun season After the events that happened with Aurora in her outpost, the rich man left for the capital, realizing his mistake as he had learned about the existence of a ruthless authority figure even worse than the royal siblings he had the pleasure to meet in the past. The merchant association leader Ricardo Colabzo having spoken with his wife a resolved and hard-working noble who participated in all the deals of his husband supporting each other on equal terms since the day they met thirty years ago. A love story of a poor merchant who ended up on the graces of a rich noble lady, who as time went by started believing in the man potential towards business eventually becoming one of the richest in the Lumen capital becoming part of the merchant association raising all the way to the leader position and the marrying lady Selina. In terms of money alone they had more comparing to the eight great Rose families, but lacking in everything else as money alone couldn't possibly close the gap as the kingdom was. Once the wife learned about what had happened with the general of the army she had thrown an expensive glass cup to the wall, shattering it mercilessly as she couldn't accept the fact that Aurora had been so unjust to her husband. Dear calm down, I'm alive, that's what matters, a bit of humiliation never hurt anyone before. As soon as she heard those words the fury inside her increased ceaselessly. No, no, no. Who does that woman think she is making you kneel just because she is authority that belongs to the prince? Ah, I forgot to tell her love, she's a kid, nine years old from what one of the soldiers told me. Eh what? Her expression was so excessively filled with confusion that her anger had vanished temporarily. Yes. It was because of underestimating her childlike appearance that I ended up letting my ego overwhelm the common sense as if it was Ryu or Mark I would have been more refined about my ways. Still greatly confused, she muttered once more. A what? A. Kid? Yes. Dear. I know how you feel. It is without precedent a little kid being the general of the biggest army in history composed of 700,000 men. A role awarded only to either the royal family or one of the general of the great Rose families like Lord Ryu who seems to be an advisor to her. But, how is that possible our youngest daughter who is seven with the tutors we hired for her can do a lot of nice things such as math, which I've invested most of the money on finding a good merchant to teach her, can easily speak the language and write to some extent is starting to learn what's a bad and a good item, but even if I had invested on the war tutor instead with all the money we had and gathered all the generals to teach her, I know Selina, the odds she'd reach where that girl Aurora is, is unthinkable, people call her a prodigy born to wage war, blessed by the goddess, and with an intellectual ability to beat the greatest chess player the Prince Julius. Then wouldn't that mean that, the talent she has is the definition of her capabilities? What do you mean? Think about it, if I were to accept that she's truly outstanding in what comes to war, in the end, she's nine years old, if somehow she was born to wage war, the girl was certainly not born for any other thing like handling trading. So you want to exploit that possibility? Yes, of course, handling such an army even with most likely the amazing and extraordinary help of her advisors, 
They wouldn't allow her to extend her knowledge to every area which would allow us to take advantage of her lack of capabilities. Upon hearing his wife's words he started explaining everything that happened since their encounter to the words used by the girl so that his wife would better understand that while it was not a bad move it was still a bold one and if she was wrong it could certainly lead to the end of their lives. At the end of the disclosure of that event, Selena threw another glass angrily at the wall and then smashing the table with a closed fist, shaking the leftover things on top of it to some degree. How? You make it sound like she's beyond a prodigy, where did she attain all that knowledge? She shouted. Having an idea, you said she was blessed by the goddess right Ricardo? Yes, ah. You're thinking the same as me? If that the knowledge may have come from her. Yes I am. Yes, exactly. But that would mean we're stuck on getting her a fair deal, which we should be able to make lots of profit nonetheless. I doubt she'd want to put it in a bad spot and we can refuse the deal if it's not to our liking, yet, it would be good to get her in good terms for the future of the Merchant Association dear husband, so we have to show her that we're not a group she can just use either, as he picked the bottle with alcohol in it and lifted it in the air, he placed it back on the table and poured water instead as he had to keep his mind sharp since this deal could very well ascend his business or collapse it. We'll have to come with a few proposals to negotiate with her and I'd assume her advisors, so I guess she wouldn't be alone. Selena hearing this opened the door and called for a maid, shortly after an old woman in her sixties dropped by and asked, Yes my lady? Tell the higher ups of the association to gather up tonight for an emergency meeting, and call someone to clean those glasses before anyone steps on them. Yes, right away ma'am. Let's go, Ricardo. It'll be best to think about it with everyone. Sure. You're right love. It'll make things easier with more brains as they're all capable people. Year 5009 After the system day 23 of the sun season during the night in the merchant association reunion room, after a lot of objects moving in and out by the workers of the association, 21 seats were finally placed with a few tables making a big square enough for everyone to be able to take notes as the discussion would progress. Welcome ladies and gentlemen. It was on short notice, but I appreciate all of you coming here tonight, as the biggest deal yet will unfold with the help of everyone's amazing brains. What's all this about Ricardo? To go as far as to assemble every single one of the higher-ups of the association, that's unheard of. Arnold shouted as he felt like their times were being wasted, and there was no opportunity valuable enough that would require all of them. Now now, calm down. It is still too early for that, he says while waving his hands downwards, sit everyone so I can start. After everyone picking their seats Ricardo satisfied started talking. Recently I went to explore the southern outposts created by the three royal successors, as such, I confirmed the existence of one, in particular, the middle one, where a unique little girl of nine years is currently in charge of the army, allow me to detail. It consists of 700,000 men approximately. What? A little kid is? What is the royalty family thinking? Isn't it too irresponsible of them to allow such a thing? Not even some adults have the mastery enough to do something as complex as managing an army much less leading one. Abigail declared after pondering carefully pointing out the flaws she noticed in Ricardo's words. So the question is how does the little girl fare? I'm guessing she's the one we're going to do the main deal with. Yes, Nicholas that's exactly right. But despite her age, she's the real deal. Recently she defeated 20,000 goblin riders with 200 hundred casualties, it is unprecedented. Ricardo reported the war details in a way that his colleagues would be careful and serious towards this discussion of interests. That sounds impossible. How did she manage such a feat? There must have been some trick no? We're talking about a goblin rider here, they're easily the fastest and the most annoying types since in the end. It's like fighting two beasts at the same time, they go as far as to take wild and ferocious animals. Abigail explains thoroughly as the general knowledge she possesses is wide. A trait that merchants, in general, try to possess as information is everything in such a job. 
A different female voice spoke, with that particular fight alone, we can already confirm the merchandise of equipment from armor's weapons, to animals, and of course the soul stone of at least 40,000. Yes Lady Brittany, at the minimum we'll have all that to handle though we can expect a bit more from the rest of the fights she waged, Ricardo added from the information he received from the talk he had with a few soldiers. Lady Aurora was it? The girl from the speech at the Southern Wall? Yes Richard that's the one. In fact, I'll tell you all everything about my meeting with such a child, Ricardo spends a while telling them all the details while being encouraged by his wife as they listen to him silently. To think there was such a human. Even among the noble families who are raised to think and feel superior to others. You're absolutely correct Lady Abigail. It is without a doubt an unprecedented case to which we must be extremely careful to not be on the loss. In fact, shouldn't we leave this to other merchants? I disagree, Richard, now is the time to take the first step and get a good profit with war. After all, I don't think she'd know the prices or even the value of the coin. Her head must be filled with war tactics given from her advisors. In fact, it wouldn't be weird if she's just being used by them and Prince Julius who is the very best in chess. A person with such an intellectual would be capable enough to pull out a trick like this. Don't you think so everyone? You do have a point, Sir Nicholas. However, imagine you're wrong and the worst comes to be, are you willing to partake in your life for the sake of a deal? If that girl isn't gifted in warfare but in reality at everything related to managing an army then the economy would be something she had long learned, maybe the second thing they teach her. Richard advice also has some sense into it which we can't ignore even though I as a noble guarantee that noble kids don't get educated both in war and economy. However, if we were to assume Prince Julius himself educated a human girl since perhaps she's seven solely for the role she's in, it would make sense. Even if you say it like that Abigail she became a noble kind of recently, so I doubt that is the case. After all, peasants don't get educated if they do it's no more than reading and writing, and for those who whose parents have prior knowledge numbers and lowly etiquette, and that's already exceptional. Not saying you're wrong Lady Brittany, however, first we should understand her origins, only then we'll be able to get a grasp on her knowledge and talents, seeing as Ricardo was there not that long ago. There's a chance she's being instructed about the economy right now, but market prices are something set for us aside of the undervalued goods of fast trades, so she wouldn't know about either, not forget she's ultimately a kid. There's only so much that can go into someone's brain, be they blessed by the saintess and goddess Aria or not. As much as I'd like to believe that Abigail after meeting her in person, I don't know to what extent that would fit her, especially since she was already an intellectual human before the blessing, it is known she beat Prince Julius in chess. We do not have certainty that with the blessing her intellectual simply didn't rise to a higher height. I understand that you feel fearful after what happened Ricardo, in your place. I believe that only someone insane wouldn't be, still we can't simply give her an easy cheap deal. I feel like a decent proposition where neither side loses anything would be the best. After all, they're the ones risking their lives to keep our families safe, be it how it may be. If they are on the loss side economically and that makes them lack in provisions it's only a matter of time till the army falls, after all, you mentioned 700,000, just on Lady Aurora's side. It is too many mouths to feed, to not forget that if they do well we'll win in honor, some money, and have safe merchant routes all the way to the new lands the future may bring if they expand, kind of a gamble, but if Ricardo judges her that highly I find it worth to gamble. Chelsea said taking Aurora aside after thinking properly and the best case scenario for mutually benefit. Upon hearing the peasant Chelsea words, one of the few in the merchant association with a leadership role, Ricardo spoke, in that case, I'm sure you wouldn't mind taking responsibility for such words, and handle that affair from here onwards, gaining the biggest share of the deal if it's successful, as well as the biggest loss if it's not. Very well. I Chelsea shall sign the responsibility contract and bring this association to a higher standard if I win the gamble. Then I'll take your title as the association leader Ricardo. With a cold tone, he replied, 
Oh, then in the case you lose, you shall become my slave to pay off the debt we'll have along with everything you own becoming mine, and by all means, let me remind that it'll be forever. He grinned, knowing that it was too good to pass. Very well. If you want to go that far then I'll have the same done with you as the profit can also be worth your share of the association. Upon such words Arnold bumped the table with a fist and shouted. Now that's what I'm talking about, don't be a coward again Ricardo. He started laughing, knowing from the story with Aurora that he most likely had shit his pants making him say, very well. I'll give my position to you along with 50% of my wealth which is already double of what you have. Fair enough. I'll take that deal. They shake hands and proceed to sign a contract that is passed by every leader making them witnesses. Back in the day, the twins were blessed by chaos and evil gods. Obscurity, grotesque, slaughter, disorder are the four main words to describe the inside of a creepy cave where blood poured from its entrance practically every day. That liquid, nothing else passes as it is one of the monster nests where multiple vampires are forced to fight one another to the death, to slay, to prey upon. Day after day, death after death, the one who won yesterday is the one who dies tomorrow. No being is forever guaranteed to survive in such a place where the strong prey on the weak and the weak's backstab at the strong. No one takes sides, no one makes a truce. To kill or be killed is the one and only reason for thousands of years. The faithful and only law such monsters revere. In such a place a certain irregularity was born at the same time Aurora received the class pandemonium. Drinking from a blacked chalice filled with blood, the god or goddess of chaos loot, an androgynous divinity who often is seen as male or female depending on the mood smiled delightfully at his deeds. Not only had he successfully tricked the god of evil Harthus to give power to the twins but from the leftover energy also gave birth to something elsewhere. The system which was perfect in reality had a few flaws placed by one of his makers, in order to, further enhance that god's purpose, a goal which is neither victory nor defeat, but a pure and simple wish to bring the biggest and the most marvellous pandemonium to Artana. He had used powers to check Harris and Aurora after their deeds realizing that their existence was peculiar. In fact, the system made them quite unique. It was to such a different and entertaining extent that Loot couldn't help his curiosity towards them, and so he attempted to peek into their souls. When he did something unusual and intricate was perceived by such a being, a curse inside Aurora blocked him from having access to her information. It was on that day that he decided to make use of both of them guaranteeing that both her goals would be realized, for Aurora the tome of her dreams which he stole from her old world, and for Iris, the possibility to grow stronger than other lowly beings. Blood. 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 More of it, more I need more, dead bodies, carcasses, corpses, body parts, consume and devour, bit by bit, through the darkness, under the floor through the small holes where none of the vampires will notice. Slowly I'll consume all there is to absorb, without leaving a drop of that fabulous liquid left. Then one day I'll leave this place, one day for sure. What should I do when that day arrives? If I become strong enough I should be able to do anything I want. Power, I need the power to devour. This place? To absorb other places too? I see. I shall gain everything and eat all of it, carefully, wickedly. Without anyone noticing I'll grow viciously into a better version of me. A year goes by and the blood stopped pouring from the cave, and the seal in it was broken as a victory was decided since there was the condition to unlock it. A dungeon whose purpose was the outcome of a single being, a grotesque side amusement to loot. Never again would there be more of that liquid coming out of it for the being inside had devoured everyone else becoming a lord. Year 5009 after the system day 70 of the flowering season during the night where Aurora consumed the goblin woman, the rustling of deceased leaves spread through the darkened forest that had come to death, as monsters passed slowly on top. Inaudible voices crossed through the entire place through the camouflage of the night, through telepathy. A monster sent a message to another and this repeated endlessly till it reached their leader. This specific race could only communicate by such methods, as such, this skill was normal for them to have since birth, and generally would use it at all as they live neutrally without any need to convey thoughts. 
The human that is not a human, but a vampire type like our lord, has won the battle against thousands of beasts through splendid tactics such as putting fire to the entire forest ruthlessly, forcing their way out in a brainless charge. Truly like the beasts they were, if only our lord could consume all of their bodies, he'd surely grow even stronger, perhaps go as far as to transform into a king type, I'd love to serve one like that. The humans call them kings and queens, princes and princesses, I think a family like that would even suit the likes of us. For that, the lord would need to get a queen and he becomes a king. Such thoughts must be conveyed to him. We can make it as our race desire. Even though we don't have something like desires, thanks to the lord we do, we even have an ambition, an aspiration to live on without being stepped and farmed for the experience. Well, in that case, pass on the message as you're closer to the Lord, so that he may think of finding someone that could befit his inner desires if he is any. I'm sure he does. After all, even today he thirsts for blood, the blood of the race he brought to extinction with the death of all the vampires. What a shame. He should have kept a few of the women to expand his underlings, and we'd be able to have future generations to serve. What's done is done. We can only eagerly hope he wishes for it. Year 5009 After the system day 20 of the sun season during the night where the humans had their great victory against the goblin riders. This. Amazing. The vampire woman Aurora has destroyed 40,000 beasts. If only our lord was here to consume their bodies. Perhaps he'd transform into a king instead. Or were that many even higher. We must warn him and start to deal with the goblins further south so the humans have a better chance at getting rid of the ones here. The Lord replied, What did the Almighty One said? We should ally ourselves to this fake human girl, she wouldn't dare to refuse our power as she's lacking in numbers if all the green things join together. Should I go try to meet her then? The Lord mentioned he'd come for her during the second moon season from now, under a red moon that's when his skills are strongest just in case she attempts to kill him. So for now we keep reporting what we see through the entire southern area. We must, for the Lord to be able to do the best decisions. He's truly interested in a vampire girl, after the memories that were collected from us. It was a good thing we have the skill to hide our presences it makes us perfect spies. That is so, let us go before someone happens to step on us by mistake. It is a very natural thing to do and then those who do end up being devoured afterward. Some of them are pretty delicious too. That's quite true. It's a good thing the vampire woman didn't notice us, but I wonder if the Lord will be able to subdue such a scary looking being. I doubt he wouldn't be able to. After all, she needs our assistance. Just she doesn't know yet. Do you think she's a vampire like the Lord? She did look similar to the tales he told us about, plus she too devoured that big goblin woman. Aurora looked strong and dangerous. I'm sure if it was against us, we'd be dead. Well, our race isn't the weakest the two of us that are powerless. We too should start consuming and become more useful to the Lord, so that he can take us to greater heights. Tell everyone else to hide and consume carefully. The Lord doesn't want us to die. I'll pass on that message too. She did look like a vampire, matching the Lord's appearance, both very old looking in a human aspect. Tell the Lord we'll stay here watching what will happen next between the ones called humans and the goblins, surely there are more battles to go for. I will. I've also warned all of us and established new connections to the ones around to focus on the green creatures. Good like this will help the girl without her knowing, and then one day when she meets the Lord she'll surely wish to serve him. Ah! That is something worth waiting for. Can't wait to see all our enemies being devoured by both, especially by the Lord with that crimson color of his. Yes, truly beautiful just like blood. Depending on our own war, I wonder to what point we won't ally ourselves to the humans. Think the god of monsters would allow such a thing? If it is to cause more chaos. Perhaps he wouldn't mind? That could indeed happen. I wonder what the Lord intends to do next. Return to him and assist. I'm sure you have some use. I shall keep looking for evolved beasts like the Lord mentioned so that we can make him a king. Only place left to look into is the human's territory. Think they'd have any? Worst case we find a powerful enough human, seeing as the Lord consumes anything. 
it could help consuming a human. Sure, pass on that message as well. Perhaps it'll bring a good influence to our master. I shall make sure you consume the corpses of the following wars if you have a chance to. Maybe you'll evolve into a lord too. Wouldn't that be great? To assist him with lots of power. I guess every king needs a couple of lords to keep him safe. Perhaps that Aurora is a lord in disguise, the way she shape-shifted. To think she'd have a skill like that, we must be wary. Worst case she devours the communication skill we possess being able to check on our intel, that would backfire everything. Devourers like the Lord truly are problematic, no wonder the Lord wants her in his army. Doesn't mean she can do it like him, but there was something ominous to her, different than the master, perhaps he'd be interested in devouring her instead? Maybe after defeating the goblins, conquering the humans, the kobolds, and the orcs. What would be left after that? There's plenty of other races left. Too many to count certainly. We must get stronger, maybe use our commanding abilities to help us in wars. For a human that young. For a human that old. In unison. The voices speak. For one to be so fascinating. Year 5009 after the system day 40 of the sun season after lunch in the southern outpost inside Aurora tent. Well then, I didn't expect that the promising deal of the merchant Ricardo was to bring a cute woman in his place, Aurora mocked lightly the person in front of her while giving a compliment at the same time making her slightly nervous, an easy way the girl used to test others. With all due respect G.I. General Aurora, Prince Julius, after a discussion between the 21 higher-ups of the Merchant Association I decided to take responsibility and supervise every deal that will be made with this army, so that fairness may be brought to both sides along with mutual help and future growth. A large pause passed as Chelsea waited for either of them to say something. So, you're not done are you? Aurora looked coldly at her while feeling a bit more respect compared to Ricardo who didn't mutter any significant words. She grabbed the papers in front of her filled with numbers and started speaking. I shall proceed, after spending some a big sum of time evaluating the achievements and goods acquired by the army since it started I noticed a few peculiar abnormal issues. Something amiss? The prince asked with some curiosity as he hadn't been in the outpost for a long time, in fact, at all. He dropped by recently when he received an invitation letter from Chelsea to handle major business for the army which in a way was part of the domestic affairs that was appointed to him. It has been recovered 40,000 soul stones between rank F and E from the most recent fight against the goblin riders, along with their equipment and their bodies the ones in good conditions can still be used to produce clothes this in specific in regards to the mounted animals. The goblin meat can be either sold along with the animals one or be used by the army. The equipment they wore, in turn, can also be used by the soldiers or given to us to handle the selling. After speaking clearly and calmly the prince nodded and she continued speaking. Furthermore I've researched that the total equipment is close to 25,000 armor and weapons, while they're not in a poor state meaning that they should be sold as material for refinement or melted and used for construction, what this also means is that there are close to 5,000 soul stones missing. The prince looked at Aurora who was smiling softly understanding that she had something to do with it. So before starting negotiating prices I'd like to know if I should or not overlook the missing soul stones. She stared at Aurora feeling that the answer would come from her as the prince initially while she spoke slightly confused. They have been sold for an initial cost to make the fields along with the seeds and materials necessary, so that the soldiers would make this a self-sufficient army related to food. On that note, the seeds are the type that grows even in the cold moon season. The price of 5,000 soul stones even would surely outvalue that. Were there any other expenses so far or was the money stored and saved? The creation of the entire outpost, from wood to axes, hammers, iron nails, tents, weapons, armors, wages, daily food expenses, and the list goes on as you may imagine. I understand, in that case. Seeing as this is already the line of defense for humanity, if everyone here falls and dies, we will come next. I figured I'd take a 40% tax of everything we sell, and, 
As she was about to continue Aurora spoke, The only thing you'll take after being raped by goblins is a mind break alongside the greed of today's deal to the afterlife, where you'll meet the goddess Arya who may or may not show you some pity. Aurora said these insane things completely expressionlessly scaring Chelsea who gulps and grabs her right rights with her left hand so that they don't notice her slight shake. You've grown scary a little general, you're truly different than your father, but yes, this merchant must be shown its place otherwise we'd have a hard time maintaining the wages and the morale of the men. This girl is truly inhuman seeing as the prince doesn't even look concerned it just shows that in some way she was raised by him or some of his men since. Young? Even with a torturous education would a kid really spout such things? Not even the children from the slums are that. Bold. She lets out a cough resetting her mindset and says, and as I was going to say, she glances at both and then continues, I'd cover the transportations of the goods as far as Lumen Capital through the secure route created by the two of you, both the ones we'll be selling to you, and the ones you may request like food, equipment, clothes for moon season due to the cold, whatever necessary, I stick to my words, you could easily do that with a 20% tax, I don't see why you would want to double the value other than greed but if you have enough justification then I'd like to hear it. However, if it's just to show off to the other guys of the association I'll chop your head today and send it to them as a gift. It'll surely surprise them more than a great profit. Aurora smiles innocently at her making her guts twirl making some discomfort as she imagined it, after making it sound like a happy conversation with her energetic fake tone. This girl is too severe does she have a mental illness of sorts? Is she purely insane? That's now how you handle a business. Chelsea started fearing for her life like Ricardo once did, but with her life on the line, she did her best to control herself. The transportation includes humans, in other words, if by chance the army needs to retreat we'd take no charges in helping moving materials to soldiers back to the capital, even if that meant losing the entire southern area to the goblins. Oh, Aurora claps once surprising both and then she says, that's a useless reason this line won't falter plus I want to expand the territory so I'll need money for future expeditions, in case you use that 20% extra to support them, I'll accept the offer, it won't falter? No offense but how can you be that sure? The saintess predicted that our kingdom would be destroyed, so I'm expecting something really dangerous to come for us, don't you get it? She said while raising her voice both worriedly and agitated. Look me in the eyes, Chelsea. Do you think I would be here in this position if I didn't know? I. But. Her legs started trembling lightly as she looked directly into her light blue eyes reminding her of ice. I'll tell you what. Accept my count to offer and you can use the extra 20% as investments and aid me whenever I set on an expedition. While it's not a bad offer I must make sure this will be benefiting for the future for my side even if I'm called greedy. In the end, it is a compliment for a merchant like me. When are you expecting to start the expeditions? I expect to engage in multiple fights with the first goblin king till the moon season where they should wait it out. After that in I'll reduce their numbers for the entire next year, and ultimately kill him by the next moon season which we'll have enough resources to not have the soldiers working during the cold. So you're gathering resources. I understand, in that case. I'll make it 50% tax for this first year and reduce it to 10% on the following one along with lending money if necessary so that you can do what you must. How's that? She asks seriously knowing that if she accepts the amount of money she'd get in the first year would be ridiculously high, enough to expand and even multiply it. A leap of faith, Aurora nods lightly, gets up from the chair and leaves the tent. Was that a yes? Chelsea asks confused unknowingly if she should celebrate or if she was fully rejected while staring at the prince. That was a yes Miss Chelsea, a leap of faith is a term used when believing in something outside the boundaries of reason. It must have been from spending time with the saintess. She's part of our army in case you weren't aware Miss. The prince explains while finishing it with a charming smile. Your Highness, that girl. Please be honest with me, was she educated since birth from you or perhaps the late king's advisors? Upon hearing such words the prince frowned and declared, 
There's nothing that we could possibly teach that girl, she's in a different intellect boundary than us. As he finished talking to her, the right hand and legs finally ceased shaking as she understood the atmosphere and the way of speaking of the girl that was till just now in front of her, is she not a human then? Perhaps a demon in disguise contracted by your highness or something? Upon hearing such words the prince started laughing and then placed his hand in front of his lips hiding without covering it, and then said, No miss, she is certainly a human, an extremely prodigious one that makes us believe that all humans should be more like her, and follow such an example. But your highness she looks way too young to have acquired both war and economical knowledge, and from the way she spoke who knows what else. It was one of the main points that I discussed with my colleagues, they agreed that it'd be fine if one was a genius at a very specific cart, such as war, and even then it wouldn't be to the point of mastering it as everything related to it causes a gigantic amount of pressure. For example, if I was in her place I'd be trembling in anxiety every day, and from having met her she doesn't so much as flinch or shiver, Aurora doesn't even look worried and has this unbeatable, confident Tori about her like the girl dreads about nothing, shouldn't a general fear enemies? Having such a feeling would allow us to be more cautious and make wiser moves. Isn't that one of the reasons we humans survived thus far? I don't mind disclosing information about her and war but is that what you've really came here for? The crown prince said in a cold tone as if he continued the lady would no longer have a way out for her from knowing too much. Your highness with all due respect, I understand my place as a merchant, and mean not to be rude. However, knowing who I'm working with that too is the way of doing business, so I beg of you please do tell me how that is possible. She made a serious expression and proceeded to bow in front of him. Upon gaining interest and some respect for the woman in front of him the prince started speaking with a faint smile. Not that long ago our little general like I enjoy calling her. She made two speeches which I obviously read before she reciting them by memory, the first was to cause awareness towards humanity and to help us gathering soldiers, but the second was to fill them with guilt, making the humans feel guilt. A surprised expression could be seen on Chelsea's face. Yes while it is a fact that due to the first speech we gathered more men it was only after the second one that the human side increased the most in military number. What does that mean exactly? He smiled faintly once more and then said, after calling them lazy and cowards a tremendous number of men joined my sister and my brother armies along with my own. Those who did not join for a just cause like the ones who were swayed by her first speech were manipulated into joining one of the other two. Despite we being in a throne dispute to that girl's eyes, the only thing those cold blue eyes most likely see, is the path to victory, that is the type of person whom you're dealing with, that's quite an elevated estimation of a child. Your Highness, he laughed lightly and then replied, I certainly do have my own doubts from time to time, especially while feeling anxious back in the capital handling domestic affairs as there are some people that could cause issues to the front lines, so at least being there as a watchdog of sorts. I can easily protect Aurora back, yes, there'll always be people who try to get benefits during times of war, myself as a fellow merchant am included, that is quite natural. To those words the prince smiled and added nothing to which she restarted the conversation as it was a rare opportunity for her to be speaking with someone from the royal family, and perhaps in the future have done it today could bring more fortune someday. Just to make sure, I'll take it that even the one who wields the title of tactician approved for her correct? Yes, my friend Lord Ryu the head of the blue family has become an advisor and is currently the leader of the army right wing. Of course that he'll follow Aurora orders, but if there's none he'll make his own decisions. I believe that's their agreement. What happened to teacher Mark, he's quite a big shot whenever a war arises. I see you are quite well informed. He's currently handling the teaching of the majors Aurora has chosen each to lead a thousand men making them sub-leaders of sorts. That's different than the way it used to be, my grandfather used to be a soldier and would tell me tales about war including formations, ranks, and things like that, she finished with a happy smile reminding herself of him. Surprised a child would be happy to hear such things. Well at the time I was pretty young and there wasn't much to hear about, so ended up learning what I could with him. 
it just happened, but even then it makes me realize that from hearing stories to actually wage it as Aurora does. She started laughing a little crazy as it felt hard to believe and then once she calmed down she continued. It truly appears hard to accept for you to have come here in place of Ricardo I figured you knew where you were placing yourself in no? He retorted with a perplexed expression. I came here on behalf of the association because the current leader firmly believed that a good deal could not be handled with the girl who scared him. Unable to hold it inside he laughed vulnerable to his heart content. I've actually met that man before but to be honest I didn't expect him to have become such a coward. Age must truly change people. If I may be bold, what changed Ricardo wasn't age but fear caused by the little girl who despite her size, carries quite the deadly weapon. It is to be expected if she was any less her authority wouldn't be firm among the soldiers. And that could cause a big problem, no point having soldiers that don't follow orders, and a general who isn't respected is also useless. In the end, she is a child. So it's even harder for some adults to respect her as such reason why I gave her the emblem to help her in the admiration area, even though after seeing how the men handle her with a slight fear in their eyes, it seems it was unnecessary. Isn't causing too much fear also a bad thing? Wouldn't they attempt to murder her or something? Like if she abused the power? Perhaps. But since she participated in the annual tournament the respect they have for her is even greater a lot of them were there watching it and rumors travel fast especially inside a deployed army where talking is the best form of passing time during their duties. Oh, what rank did she place for the men to regard her as worthy? Fourth. What? Hum? She's not only a genius but also strong physically and magically? That's impossible your highness. She shouted astonished by his words. Ah, worry not. Well this is a secret. But we used her twin sister in her place. That one is the real deal in magic, and rather fine with the sword, a twin. That's indeed a rarity. What's she called? The green-eyed one, Iris. Iris and Aurora. Is she smart like the general? Green eyes? Different eye colors? That's adorable. I guess her parents must have one of each. To be honest I don't know. We've never talked that much, but at the very least she's creative and deadly with the way she uses her rare ice element. As for the eyes. From what I know both parents have brown eyes, the mother is blonde and the father has brown hair. So it ended up as a random outcome. Oh my, that is certainly peculiar, wondering if there's anything in the library about eye colors being different. You can always check when you return to Lumen Capital. If you'd like you can even read my library. Such an honor. Am I really allowed to? Yes, consider the permission as you owe me a favor. R. Well that's fine. Favors usually mean we're bound to see each other another time. She makes a lovely expression smiling joyfully making the prince correspond with a gentle face. In that case, we shall drink tea at some time in my mansion. His expression changes to a cheeky one with a playful tone making Chelsea chuckle. Very well Prince Julius, I'll be looking forward to that invitation. And of course the books. Of course the books are included. He laughs amused with the conversation. A man comes inside the tent and coughs. The two happy faces turn to him and the prince gets up from the chair. It seems my escort has arrived. Have a safe trip back your highness. I'll keep Lady Aurora some company. I'd like to know her better. I'm sure she'll appreciate some company. Have a good day Miss Chelsea. The men leave and the woman leaves the tent to find Aurora. Year 5009 after the system day 40 of the sun season later in the afternoon outside of the outpost wall. You seem happy merchant Chelsea? Aurora says expressionlessly after noticing her smiling face. Just Chelsea is enough. We'll spend some time together every now and then, even if most economical affairs will be dealt between me and the prince, as you're already full of work in here. Speaking of which what are you doing here? Certainly the same as you. Aurora smiles lightly at her confusing her. Ah, I'm here to get to know you better. How would that be the same as you? Ah, but Chelsea, in that case, I'm here to get to know myself better as well. I understand, you're trying to bully me. She averts her gaze from the girl feeling upset inside. Not at all. I'm being sincere towards you. Then I don't understand what is it you're trying to say. Perhaps showing is the correct definition. Then what is it you'll be showing me? That I have yet to figure out myself, 
Aurora keeps looking at the area around her looking at something or someone confusing Chelsea. I wonder if His Highness didn't pick the wrong person for the job after all. I can't help but find her delusional. There's something approaching from the south I believe, Aurora said while looking at the guards on top of the wall. The different bells on top of the wall start ringing making the humans prepare themselves while leaving Chelsea in awe. Is that perhaps a green flag? Chelsea asks herself noticing it from afar while rotating her body southward. The Goblin Kingdom flag, it appears in the old records from the church, that were lent to me not too long ago, still have some things to read, but sadly don't have access to everything. Neither does the saintess who I'm using to procure information. Is that so? That's a rather small force to come towards the opponent base no? It's an envoy. It seems they want to talk about something. It is an unnatural thing to do which didn't appear in the war records of the past. Thus there has been a change in the leading figures. Why would we communicate with them? They're beasts. How do you even know that based on that information alone? Why not? Aurora grinned and then spoke. Isn't talking what you do best? Why do you do it? She replied to a question with a question avoiding replying on purpose to her last question. That and this. Never mind, Aurora. Hum? She takes a glance at the voice source that called out for her. Oh Momo, great you've arrived. This will be a good opportunity for you to test yourself out and even learn a couple of negotiation things. Come along and bring that brother of yours. Therefore, so let's correspond it with the same number out of respect. Chelsea started counting noticing that she had been included without permission. Giving up, sighing and tagging along with them slightly shaken as they were goblins. There's an old man and three goblins that look rather strong. I guess the king isn't amidst them then, he's supposed to wear a crown and look a lot bigger than those. The old goblin stabs the flag on the ground and pierces the staff next to it, to show he's not there to harm anyone extending both arms to the side while taking two steps away from it. Aurora continuously moved without stopping a single time, as none of her sides had weapons except Ming, who had a fishing rod on his back to which the goblins didn't seem to mind as they too used similar versions of it to hunt not to fight. Upon arrival, the old goblin spoke in their place acting as their leader, little blonde girl leader of humans, killer of the great shaman greater than myself, the hero Sophia slew the great shaman, a pink-haired woman, and yes. I'm the leader of this army we could say, the acting general of his highness army Prince Julius. After a long pause from the goblin thinking, he then spoke. I am Grasta the Wise, counselor of the ferocious goblin Queen Gruag from a faraway kingdom in the south, and currently the one leading the army on his highness name the almighty goblin King Vrag, strongest of his kingdom. A pleasure to meet you Grasta the Wise. My name is Aurora. Aside from my role, as the general I apologize, but I do not have a great title such as yourself, Aurora made an innocent childish, and kind expression bowing lightly towards him out of respect startling him. While well lowered she said, though if I were to consider one, it would without be the title pandemonium as the follower of the Babel witch, she raised solely her face expanding her dark aura condensing an incredible amount of mana worth 5000 causing everyone around her to shake from the magical pressure mixed with the killing intense skill. The shaman proceeded to cover himself in mana allowing him to resist the shaking grinning at her expanding his own mana making a light aura from his unique light element, and as it stretched towards Aurora to overwhelm it. The girl looked at him making an eerie expression with a devilish smile doubling the amount used overpowering the goblin light making him jump backward as her aura smashed the ground he was in, and then she retracted it dissipating both of the auras slowly. Monster! How dare you possess such powerful mana! You don't even have an aura like those around you! What are you, a demon? Grazda shouted not enjoying in the slightest the contest of elements they conducted. Before anyone could notice Aurora's expression, she passed both hands through the face and stared innocently and quietly at the old goblin who was making a fuss. See Prince, Aurora truly feels like a demon. What kind of human other than the most talented adults, the saintess, and the heroes would exude this much magical pressure? Chelsea thought to herself still not believing Aurora to be a human. Hum? What kind of aura do we humans have? I don't see any. 
the goblin feeling superior at least in aura knowledge started laughing looking down at us from the earlier contest, and then while pumping his hairy and muscle chest said, so you humans don't know the truth about your goddess, he started laughing hard and making his guards follow through, you sure know a lot, I guess that's where your wise title comes from. Aurora replied expressionlessly realizing that there were things she didn't know due to the lack of access to them. Of course, here of my knowledge for it is endless. Before the system the many races were born superior and killed the humans easily like ants, but then the goddess Aria felt as she predicted her loss in the long term that it wasn't a fair fight, so to avoid that, insisted on the creation of the system made by the four gods who govern this world and due to that your status should have disgrace and fame, both parameters give way to a unique aura, but only the one with the most amount is active, as such, I can feel that the man next to you is strong and he is a white aura from fame, we tortured plenty of humans in the past and held many tests to discover such differences, but you're an exception, I sense neither auras from you, and this sensing is an ability of the beast traces by the goddess Luna even though it doesn't always help us much, since we've found people with a lot of aura that were weak. Thank you for the amazing explanation Grata the Wise. Now that the introductions are done, and obviously I'm the only human capable of such talents on this side, she shouted while pointing the thumb at herself, feel blessed for I am one who leads, not one who fights due to having a very sickly body. Possibly the reason you feel no aura coming from me, it is true. I didn't receive reports which indicated such an ill aura participating in the earlier fight, but even if you do, the Goblin King, once he recovers, he will still have no trouble in the slightest finishing you off, he's level 134, certainly not sickly either. The old Goblin started laughing, attempting to provoke Aurora, recover -er. so the curse of the past hero hasn't faded off yet, meaning if I were to invade your kingdom now, it would be fairly easy she raised her voice provoking him in return. Don't look down on us goblins, he roared at her fiercely, if we were to rally all together with one million soldiers I'm sure you wouldn't escape alive, taking on the bait he starts making angry but reasonable remarks. So they do have a million of them. Thank you for clarifying all this information, she started laughing, and then said, why would I be careful about you guys? Most of that one million goblins are a lot smaller than us humans. She laughed pissing him off further this time purely out of amusement. You humans are minuscule compared to some of us you little wench. Just you wait a year and a half for the red moon, and we'll obliterate every single one of you. That's not how you beg for truces with someone else, Grata the wise. Aurora chuckled in his face making him furious. Begging? R. Fool. Do you think someone as wise as me would come to plea from anyone? From anyone perhaps not, but for your king it wouldn't be a bad act. In fact, if that wasn't the reason for coming this far then what was? He coughed going silent in thought. What do I say now? That was the real reason, but I didn't want to make it sound so obvious. I can always tell the king negotiations failed and we'll fight them defensively. I'm waiting. Please don't make me anticipate. I truly despise it. You'd be surprised as to how much I've already been doing it. At those words, the goblin laughed and said, you waiting for a long time, enough to amaze someone as old as me? That was a funny joke, I commend you for that. Perhaps you'll become the jester of that witch of yours. With a big genuine smile, Aurora replies excitedly, that would be rather amazing. To make her laugh every single day are. Perhaps after I'm done being a general but sadly you won't be there to see it. Realizing that his provocation failed the old goblin coughed and proceeded with the negotiations. The king after what happened as deemed you a filthy yet worthy opponent, as such, we'll advance our army to war in the day of the red moon and devastate the human lands, till then if you wish to sit and wait, you're welcome to if not since we're already at war, feel free to come after us, we'll be waiting. He grinned evilly making his face full of wrinkles looking even scarier. I might just take such an invitation. Aurora bowed lightly feeling honored, making the goblin take a few steps forward while laughing, and then lifting the flag together with the staff leaving. 
as he was turning around remembering a conversation he had with the Goblin Lord, he asked, Were you the one who made our mother the great goddess Luna angry? Also, the one who assassinated some goblins a year ago in the forest killing the son of the Goblin Lord, who was a big looking warrior level 20 followed by many. Doing her best to contain the shock she received from that information Aurora replies calmly, Yes, I made your goddess angry by making the statues bleed. And no, I didn't kill the goblin son. My name is Aurora after all don't forget it. As you'll be hearing and saying it a lot from this day onwards, she smiled confidently of her words. Hum, I understand I'll let him know. Unknowingly to Aurora the information given to Grata on this day, would completely cause unforeseen changes in the future. As he was once again turning around Aurora's voice reached his ears, who's stronger your queen or the goblin king? To which he replied without looking back, of course, that would be my queen the greatest warrior of the goblins capable of overwhelming Giganto. Giganto, is he a different king? He looked turning his face back to her once again and said with a very wicked smile, he's the biggest goblin five times taller than those wooden walls of yours, and we have a thousand of them who were born since the last war, he turned round and left laughing bluffing, due to that Aurora's brain went into her normal calculating mode. Goblins have giants within their kingdom? A mixed species perhaps? An evolution species that bred? A female giant that was raped by the king? Are they stalling for time to breed even more of those? I didn't see anything about them in the church records. This means trouble and the possible loss depending on how strong they are. It seems like this world is truly fun, she smiled excitedly unable to contain it inside of her on the pretext to wage war against them as killing turned out to be quite pleasant, one of the things Aurora enjoyed most in life. That was very interesting to think they would have such tall goblins, but that simply means we just have to adapt to it, and since he told us about it, makes such preparations a lot easier. Isn't that right teacher? Of course Momo. But that also means there are more types of goblins in that kingdom, meaning that the level of war I taught everyone will have to step up a notch. Upon hearing such words Momo frowned cutely while exasperating. As they walked back to the outpost Chelsea, who was frightened spoke. Are you truly sure we can wage war against such creatures Aurora? Haven't I already? There's a big chance that I destroyed their cavalry in one go. So if they don't have anything faster than that, then building cavalry in the following year and having it on both wings will be the first ordeal to win this war, consider that my first request Merchant Chelsea, and stop fearing everything, you only live once after all. The girl replied coldly while not even looking at the woman who gripped her fists taking the words to heart. Fine. Once I have the money I'll start delivering the horses, so you can prepare for Aurora interrupting her says, don't worry, I've already made Zylf mercenaries teach the men how to ride a horse, and of course, some of them already knew, we humans aren't that useless, we humans, Aurora said, well she truly is a level above most of us, but I guess she really is one, if anything this girl that calls her teacher would look more like a demon. So young with white hair and red eyes of demons, truly a cursed human, if I hadn't seen a drawing of a high demon before I'd be spooked with her appearance, the difference is that they would be rather tall, strong looking and also with a red skin. Chelsea thought while trying to not hold prejudice against the young one. Speaking of which, what were you doing outside the outpost? Don't tell me you predicted them coming today of all days Aurora. I couldn't possibly predict something like that. It's not like I have the saintess powers, and even her doesn't see the future like that. Aurora smiled kindly and then said with an innocent expression, I was simply watching a million goblins dying trying to break through those walls, but during the following days, I allowed a thousand giants too. The three of them gulped at the same time knowing that if there was anyone in the world, but Aurora who said such words, it would certainly be a lie, and the fact she did. It could only mean that the goblins would one day face carnage. By the way Ming I want you to deliver a message to my sister while I teach yours for the following weeks. As you command general, Ming bowed the head lightly out of respect as he became quite loyal upon Momo's request, 
and Aurora's war knowledge which turned out to be the real thing. Good, I'll write a letter inside my tent come. I'll be going off to the Lumen capital now Aurora, I have a lot of affairs to handle. All right Chelsea, it was nice meeting you, she turns her face to the woman and added, you should become the leader of that association and shape it better, Aurora then enters the tent without hearing her reply. The woman upon hearing such words, bowed down lightly towards the general back while gripping both hands, to think that talented girl would expect something from me, I certainly appreciate the chance you've given me to fully utilize our deal to become the wealthiest woman in the kingdom, and by the time we're done defeating those green mongrels, I'll certainly stand at the top of the merchant association, and make Ricardo respect me for my abilities, she laughed lightly in greed while walking towards the coachman further back in the outpost. Year 5009 After the system day 41 of the sun season goblin kingdom during the night when Grasta returned. As Grasta walked through hundreds of goblins, he found a peculiar one sitting next to a tree with its back laid on it, fully clad in black armor except the head with a big axe next to it. Upon arriving in front of him he said, that blondie isn't the one you seek. But she knew about the incident, so your son was most likely killed by her mother who is probably blonde too. Why would you believe a human? Old shaman grazed her. It could be lying to keep its life intact. That human doesn't need to lie for that goblin lord's ricks. The little girl was truly strong, blessed by the unique dark element, and you know how unlikely it is to have a rare ice one and a unique element mixed in. As soon as he heard those words the goblin stared at the shaman lifting the head who had been looking to his feet and staff till now. Was the girl truly that strong? He asked filled with curiosity as it could become a secondary target once he dealt with the culprit. Her darkness swallowed my light hole forcing me to back away, he griped the star fiercely. Are you magically weak Grazda? Zrix asks curiously as he didn't expect a shaman to lose a fight in mana. However, knowing he's not an offense type of class despite being able to fight and having a few skills for it, the expectations were high as the Lord remembered the old man shaman who died along with the goblin warlord, and that one mana pressure was terrific. I used to find myself a capable shaman in the arts of light, but after meeting her I don't think so anymore, allow me to show you the brilliance that girl Aurora devoured. The old man hit the staff on the floor and spent all the mana inside of him converting it to light, illuminating the entire area around grabbing every goblin attention including Zrix, who was feeling the pressure from the aura. It is strong, you are not weak Grazda, Zrix said while feeling the pressure of the aura and the warmth of the light in front of him. That Aurora girl possibly the daughter of the one who killed your son has at least double this mana, 10,000 which is insane for someone who is as young as her to have, he expired all his air relaxing the mind making the light vanish as if it never appeared allowing the darkness to once again embrace the surroundings. So her mother is an ice mage likely talented, it seems I have to get even stronger, Zrix got up while picking the axe and went into the darkness of the forest for prey to fight towards the Orc Kingdom. You have till the day the curse of your liege gets released to handle the business you have with that human called Iris. Yes, I'll train for a long time, and then I'll come for her to avenge my son. With this matter sorted out, it is time to report to the Goblin King Vreg about everything I saw, and tell him to spread the word related to finding the menace of the goddess Luna the cheeky pesky yet talented in mana human girl called Aurora, once the other goblin kingdoms hear about it, I'm sure they'll be more likely to join forces with my queen, perhaps I'll save this information for my queen ears alone, some time passes and he finds himself in the presence of Vreg and a few others who all look extremely powerful including Gigantos, a few sitting on the ground while Gigantos is seen sitting against a stone pillar and Varag on his stone throne. Upon noticing his presence Vreg says, What news do you have bright goblin from my sister? As soon as he heard the way the king called he laughed finding it rather amusing and clever. Well I suppose you meant both bright of brilliance and bright of smartness seeing as I have a bit of both. The goblin king started laughing realizing his own joke with the explanation of Grazda making the others around join in. So how did the negotiations with whoever their leader is worked out? They were rather interesting if I may say so. A great king, 
What do you mean? He asks rather curious about his report. I believe they will keep bugging us, but have no interest in going all in, so we can expect small fights against them which we can use to reduce their numbers. As for their leader, he wasn't there, apparently this Prince Julius Human, left the command of the entire army to a blonde little girl called Aurora, who has these very cold and menacing much light blue eyes. A small girl? You mean like a very young little goblin? Yes King Vrag. She's barely ten red moons, but it was abnormally smart, so I believe the brain is quite good. Maybe she's part of those heroes from the filthy goddess Arya. The rag, he shouted angrily at him despite being below in ranks, for insulting the superior being as it could bring a bad omen, being showered by the glares of the elites around him. Fine I get it, but if it wasn't for her keeping summoning those things, the humans would have long lost. The longer we take to conquer them the stronger the other kingdoms around the rest of the world will grow in size and strength. You're certainly not wrong on that King Vrag, for now. I'll do what I can to increase our defenses, and fend the attacks off as we wait for the curse to finally disappear. Good, you can use anyone you see fit and order them around. It'll be a battle against time for our sure victory to pay off as the hero who cursed me is dead. He smiled in an evil way satisfied for having lived so long, enough to deliver revenge even if a passive one. I'll do my best against that human child Aurora, though I very much doubt we'd lose against her in the end, including marching our entire race against her would surely grant us a victory. Giganto wants to eat humans, tiny bodies good darting, he started laughing loudly while slapping lightly the big green belly. If Giganto participates in the war along with the other nine, you will surely be able to eat your fill and beyond that. Upon hearing those words, Giganto started drooling a lot, causing a dripping sound to happen beneath his head towards the ground. Goblin King, and Shaman Grazda. I've been thinking about how the humans are using this young human girl to wage war against us, aren't they just taking us lightly? provoking us with an incompetent kid who doesn't know a thing about war? What do you suggest Goblin Warlord? Gablina, the king questions one of his guards appreciating the view. The army they have now compared to the 100 years ago how is it like? Back then they had 800,000 human heads along with a very annoying hero, the king says then spits on the ground for complimenting the enemy who cursed him. The number they have now shouldn't compare to back then, plus they no longer have those tall stone walls surrounding their capital which will make things a lot easier to assault them in a full war scale as they're in the open fields. So you're thinking of waging an all-out war before the king curse release Gablina? The old shaman asked curiously in a neutral tone. Yes, I feel like they wouldn't be expecting such a surprise attack and unlike them, we naturally have the night vision skill so surely we would have a greater advantage than them. The king started laughing madly and then once the laughter stopped he spoke. What do you think cold goblin? That does not sound like a bad plan all in all, however, if we were to fail how would we recover from such an attack? Well since you also find it good then, that'll be up to you to make sure we don't fail. The king started laughing making the shaman nervous. You better not blame me if it doesn't work. In fact, I should think on how to make it work, and how to escape if it doesn't, but first, the right thing to do is, I don't think that's a good tactic King Vrag, I'd advise sticking to defense instead to avoid losing our army to the enemy forces while you recover, he sighs softly feeling upset deep inside at the randomness of this idea was, hey, we're not weak and surely not cowards either. Gay Blina shouted while getting up making her big pair of boobs being held with a small piece of clothing bounce rather aggressively making the king feel lustful and speaking loudly without taking his eyes from the female chest. Yes, that's right, we can surely do it. Ark, with a dissatisfied expression, the shaman bowed giving up and left to plan everything the way the king commanded as he had to ultimately follow orders, whatever they might be. If this kingdom perishes due to a big pair of boobs I'll be truly disappointed, not like I can't understand the reasoning behind it, and despite everything, a surprise attack is a very bold and aggressive tactic that could easily grant us a quick victory, but even then it's far too risky. Upon taking a glance at the night sky reminding himself of the darkness of the girl's aura, he thought further to himself, 
I wonder how to surprise that little girl who acted rather confident. Perhaps such confidence will be her downfall. Year 5009 After the system day 60 of the sun season during the morning in the tent of Aurora, with a cute smile, the teacher said, Now Momo if they dive in the middle of our army what's the correct tactic to go for? The young girl enjoying learning replies, We must pincer them from both sides to cage the army leaving only their rear open so they can escape turning their backs to us becoming easier targets. Aurora patted her hair as praise, good girl you're becoming better fast, soon you'll turn into the best general of humanity, but it is fine if our own retreats slightly so they're forced to go even deeper, don't forget it, since it could increase the survival rate of more men, she smiled proudly at such a compliment and then said, I'd love to learn how to counter a surprise attack next teacher Aurora. How come? She asks rather curious from the sudden request. My skill is whispering to me that we may receive one in the far future. A big smile appeared on Aurora's expression as she realized that teaching her and making use of this girl had just now paid off. Did your skill also tell you the numbers of the enemies? No. It's generally only what may or may not happen, and it is to exist an evil intention towards me, so in this case, since I'm part of the army. I was able to receive information that I wouldn't otherwise, but even then I don't know when it'll happen and the intention might change as it is not a prophetic type of skill like the Saintess one. In other words, that meeting with the Goblin Shaman was a distraction and a bluff. They made us think they didn't want to fight, but in reality, to prepare such a surprise attack against this many men they would need their entire army to come forth. But that would be too noisy so they wouldn't be able to wear armor to become light. An evil grin surged into Aurora's expression causing Momo to panic slightly. If I were to attack you with a million armorless goblins during the night how would you fight back student Momo? Relaxing from her question, as the killing intent wasn't directed at her, she started thinking with all the knowledge received and taught by the teacher so far, and after a while, she comes up with a plan. If it was me. I would prepare a few traps alerting us of their approach, maybe some wires connected to some bells could be loud enough, which would give time for the troops to gather at the wall, for one or two, perhaps three volleys of arrows, since they'd come in a big wave altogether most likely, then finally we'd defend the top of the walls and wait for the gate to breach, which might not take that long depending on their strength. Sounds like a fun plan Momo worthy of losing a great part of the army but nonetheless would work to some extent possibly granting us a victory, she chuckled happily knowing that Momo was learning fast but still had a long way to go as she wasn't being creative enough. How would you do it, General Aurora? Momo asks with a smile and a curious expression wanting to further deepen her knowledge in the art of war, they are ultimately beasts, so that's what we'll use against them, by making one more gate tricking them to wanting to open all of them so they're able to pour in more troops in one go, and on our side, inside the outpost, we'll make a gigantic trap, I'll then stand in the middle of them covering both gates with my element making them fall for it. You mean like a deep and large pitfall similar to the one used against the goblin raiders? Yes, just this time around in a trickier way as they won't be able to see anything till it's too late and with the excitement of having opened the gate they'll most likely fall into their deaths or even be pushed by their own allies since if they don't move the archers and mages on top of the wall will bring them to their deaths. What if they go around the outpost walls as they are not extended endlessly? That would put them between our army wings and the other two armies, that's easily the worst case scenario for them. If they try it'll most likely be a front assault during the night while we are all mostly asleep and tired. I guess that even without the whispering of my skill, you already anticipated such an attack to some extent. Haven't you general? Was it that obvious? Aurora smiled kindly to her and got up grabbing a white paper from a different table returning shortly close to Momo, then she started drawing in it. Those lines I guess they're the wall? Yes, the wall has a few holes at the top where we'll pour down poison, paralyzing, and oil among other liquids and then use fire mages to ignite them so they explode, and spread it through the air reaching more enemies, something I took inspiration from my little sister Iris, that will surely delay their approach to the gate, 
I'm surprised the humans from back then only used big stones and arrows when the enemies attempted to climb their walls. Well, I'm here to take the humans to a higher height of war be it attacking or defending. Upon hearing that Momo nodded lightly in accordance. If it's true they have giants, how will we be handling them? If they have a thousand of them we won't. We'll shoot arrows and magic and then retreat to the capital walls, in those it will be an easier fight, if it's less than a hundred of them. The men will focus all their power to bring them down, and when they fall we'll be sure to win, as the healers will be able to support the soldiers against the normal goblins. Even if we get outnumbered they won't have room to use that advantage inside the walls, especially since they might not even get past the gates. Wouldn't a giant use himself to become a bridge perhaps? He could also make a big hole on the wall. Don't worry. These two holes we'll spend the entire moon season making them even a giant will have trouble coming out of it unharmed, and if the hole is made we'll have to kill the giant and repair it with earth and nature mages. That does sound deep, if a giant were to fall it would possibly fill the entire hole on his own. At least 15 meters, since the river isn't that far away there's a chance water runs below it, in which case, if we end up finding water in those two holes, We'll gather thunder mages and poison types to enhance the trap. Poison mixed with water I understand, but why the thunder element? Water is a good conductor to thunder, like how wood is a good material for fire to propagate in, it would make their bodies go numb. If that's how it works then it could be even better than pitfalls. Staring at Momo while thinking about her talent and potential she could achieve in some years under her teaching. This girl will surely pose a threat to me in the future if she grows too much, but that also means she'll become my greatest asset, as long as humans are on my side, everything will stay fine. Don't you agree teacher? Momo asks with a kind and curious expression since Aurora had been quiet for a while now thinking. Yes, of course, watching the goblins drowning sounds fun too. But sadly they would use the floating bodies as stepstones so a pitfall is overall a better idea. Oh, I understand then in that case we'll have to dig those holes wide and deep. If something happens where I'll be forced to wage war against this kid, she will have to die or be brainwashed by Iris. Before Momo outgrows me thanks to her photographic memory which is equivalent to mine, but most importantly that whisper of her that allows escaping danger, and of course my own teachings. They smile happily at one another as they keep on planning their defense for the rest of the day, eventually joining it with the rest of the leaders. Year 5009 After the system day 61 of the sun season during the morning in the Tun village. Ming who had been watching without interrupting like the last time he was in front of this master swordsman, had all the hairs of his body in awe as what unfolded in front of him was simply talent. To think there would be an old man like him around, just what level is he? How can he take all of Aris's attacks easily like they don't matter? It legit looks like she's trying to kill him, wait no, I believe that may truly be a thing. Come on weakling is this all you got? At this pace instead of three years it'll be more. Not that I mind, but you might. Having to spend more time with this old, drunk, and beggar stinking man, he said while having fun then laughed dodging all the strikes effortlessly. I'm. Doing. My. Best. My. Body. Can't. Keep. Up. I said having a hard time breathing as we've been at this for a few hours every day for what feels like an eternity. All right dressed a bit, you also seem to have a visitor even though you might have to once again talk with him from the floor, I'll be back in a bit. I let myself fall on the floor feeling the warmth of the wood while dripping the sweat on it staining it. It's been a long time Master Iris, I hope you've been well. I gaze towards the voice meeting the sunlight coming from the source, making my eyes stay half open. Ming was it? I ask unable to see him and not remembering any voice like his, as I didn't talk with him before. Yes, Momo older brother, descendant of the legendary fisherman, and keeper of the Black Key. What brings you here? Is your sister okay? Did my sister take good care of her? Yes, everything went as you mentioned, even though I didn't expect her to have that much talent. The soldiers all admire the general, almost like she was born for war. Hum. Perhaps she did. I'm not sure myself as I never got to unveil her mind much less her past. 
didn't the two of you live together since birth as the twins you two are? He asked conflicted while feeling her words to be confusing. Yes, don't worry, you're correct, I say while feeling really tired. All right, I have a letter from Aurora, he takes it out of a hole inside a hidden pocket under the coat. I take a deep breath then use my leftover energies to sit crossing the legs in front of me while grabbing the letter from the extended arm Ming. I proceed to rip the blue seal on it and takes the paper out reading it slowly. Hello my little witch, I hope you're becoming stronger, I've been reducing their numbers fairly well as time goes by. I'm estimating them to do a surprise attack very soon which will be the initial grand blow on their losses, I'll be saving the soul power I can sneak from the corpses and send it to your way once you need it as extending the area we can travel inside the mirror world has no benefits so far since we're both busy. From the information I gathered from the church and recently from a wise goblin, it appears that the party experience is received in an area-oriented space, so if we're close by to someone of at least rank 1 and above being killed we'll get some experience, the older the soul the less we get, if someone dies naturally we don't get any, it's truly incredible just how much the church experimented with humans but I don't have access to a lot of things, one of them being the fact that due to having a lot of fame and disgrace implies that the beast races can sense how much we have, it also appears that it is a thing they do not own, so with that different races have systems of their own, in other words, you who have that big amount will surely reward you, in fact, the last piece of information I found in the records from the church was quite shocking. Thanks to the goddess actions in implementing the system she had to pay a toll, to be fair it was an unexpected one. The penalty received for the human race to be part of the new fund system was to have their levels capped requiring fame and disgraceful amount to be able to break through them. In other words, it is recorded that the highest human reached was level 80 of rank 4 class to go higher the class would require to be level 5, and each one only increases it by 20. I do not know how much you'll need, so once you're done with training with Ray in 3 or more years, get back to farming titles be they fame or disgrace. Both will help to unlock more of them. Leveling up with the help of the other witches should be possible afterward once you awaken, so getting a strong base is a must. I'll delay the war enough to exhaust the goblins and the possible extras the three other kingdoms may send allowing the humans to become stronger, otherwise, when we fight an even stronger race we won't last, currently to the south, there are four goblin, one orc, and one kobold kingdom. I miss you little sister Iris, may we meet soon, in a few years. Also don't forget adorable witch, once she finished her first ordeal to research for you all the class skills, make sure you think about what you'd like to do first, live a happy life while leaving the gruesome side to me, also the goblin king is level 134 and is not the strongest goblin, there are even giant goblins, not sure how tall since I haven't seen one yet. Tears filled with happiness joined the salty ones on the floor. Why would I do my best to become stronger if not to help you silly Aurora? Though I will make a potion shop after the training is over since my parents wanted me to. I can even run it with the adorable witch. It could be fun, and a good chance to make money while leveling up my alchemy skill. Aurora becoming a noble lady didn't really make me or our parents richer. In fact, it was just a title for her to be able to become a general as that was the minimum standard upon the law of the Lumen Kingdom. Parents have been working their entire lives, so I'd like to give them a break from it. With my dark alchemy I might become rich, especially with the new law where the disgraceful classes are allowed to live anywhere they want. The fanatics aren't as dangerous, and everyone now looks at the goddess area with better eyes. Pretty weird how she allowed that in the first place unless the goddess had some restrictions like the toll she paid for giving a bit more fairness to the human race. In fact, why is there a division of fame and disgrace? Couldn't it be called points or something and accumulate with doing good and bad things? Too bad there is some information that isn't appraisable, especially when it belongs to a god unless it is a physical thing like the magic in those ruins. Ming, tell her I might take longer than expected with my training, my talent for it is good but I'm not exceptional like Sylvia, and my age is also a problem, my body can't keep up, and I can't magically grow up faster either. So perhaps an extra two years, 
Once I'm done I'll open a potion shop, once I'm rich enough, I'll go back to adventuring and get my rank to the max. Those two will be my goals once the training is over. And send a hug to Aurora and Momo for me will you? Of course Master Iris, Ray entered while he heard the way Ming addressed me and started laughing saying, you're still too young to be a master swordsman my dear student, but at this pace, it's a matter of time. I'll make sure of it before this body gives up on me, and won't allow you to run away till I engrave everything I know. Thank you for taking good care of her sword master Ray, I'll be taking my leave now. See you soon Ming. I smile kindly at him. Have a safe trip kid, he said with a grin about to sip on some alcohol as today's daily dose of training was over. Mink closes the door to the dojo softly and leaves. Don't worry about it teacher A. While it is true it will take time. I'll make sure you don't die on me before I get to master everything you teach me. Even if I have to turn you into a monster to do so. A skeleton me would be funny wouldn't it? We laugh together imagining the idea which makes me remind of how I almost died to one before. Hey, Ray. I look at him as he takes a sip carefully grabbing his attention. What's up blondie? Need another haircut? No, leave my hair alone before my mother finds out. She would be depressed seeing it like this. It's a good thing my parents didn't come to the annual tournament. Is that why you used a wig last time you visited her? He started laughing taking another sip. Yes, I miss my hair even if it grows strangely fast it will still take quite a while. The wonders of having a good stamina. It also aids the body in many ways, not just health. Really now? I haven't paid much attention to the different parameters as I have a good quantity on all of them. But despite their amount, I can't use them to their extent due to body limitations, except perhaps wisdom. A wise child is still a child little Iris, at best you can use your mana since you have a lot of wisdom. Monsters who have a lot of stamina but low wisdom can't use it. I'm able to reduce my health for wisdom how come they can't? Because wisdom isn't only the max capacity of mana, it is the knowledge of mana too. The ability to use a certain amount comes from its value as well as other things like rationalizing with the intelligence you have. But even if you have high wisdom and intelligence, the numbers aren't real or even significant. It is limited by the race we own. Even though humans are pretty smart to be able to make such good alcohol, he takes a sip laughing carefully grabbing the bottle. Would there be any race worth changing to I wonder? Once I'm done with my regret I'll want to live in peace. But if you have a long term wish that you can't achieve as a human then perhaps look into the different races this world has, and choose any that lasts a bit more in what comes to age. If there's any, I expected the teacher to mind me changing from the human race to something else. Well, your aura is abnormal either you change it on your own or something else will. My aura? You can perceive something like that? I'm able to perceive mana or elemental aura, but since I'm not using either. Yes, that's correct. I'm not entirely human either. How do you think I've gotten so strong and old? Even though I can feel my death approaching and my body dying every day. If you're not a human then what are you? A human just not 100% one. Eating soul stones was the only way I found back then to raise my level cap and get enough fame too. I understand. When the time comes Iris, I'm sure you know what to do. I understand teacher. I lower my head in respect towards him while hiding the sadness I feel as he takes yet another sip, I will give you the best burial I can along with your swords as promised for teaching me everything. Good girl, feeling a little tipsy while using it to hide the pain of his old body, numbing it. He lays down and falls asleep resting. Year 5009 After the system day 62 of the sun season southeast outpost inside the tent of the generals. Shit, we're getting further and further behind Aurora's achievements. If this keeps on, my brother will become the king. Can't you two think of better strategies? We were even able to raise the number of our army. In part thanks to that slave of Julius. Prince Marty voiced rather upset as the situation for them had been rather bad killing goblins and orcs every so often, but never in a great quantity, always outnumbering them awarding the humans with easy wins. Not to forget that the soldiers we got aren't educated enough to do anything worthwhile, 
they are disobedient and don't respect the order we input, it has been a pain in the ass since they all think they're some special shits. The head of the Red Rose family Francis declared rather frustrated. They would do a lot better if actual enemies dared to put their lives in danger. We've been wasting resources and it doesn't come at a cheap price, I hate to admit it, but we must have followed the information General Aurora shared with us, the head of the Black Rose family declared regretting it deeply. It's all due to the do-it who is too young to even be a whore, even less to be in the post where she's at. How the hell is Aurora able to lead such a huge army on her own? Marty slammed the table angrily making some papers fly randomly. Mostly to the ground. She has the backing of Ryu, the old man Mark, along with Zylf and Alfred. Perhaps one of them is instructing her with the necessary knowledge to do so. It wouldn't make sense otherwise seeing as she's so young, Charles said after analyzing some of the information they had on them. From our spies reports the tactics they used don't belong to any book not even Ryu innovation ways, those traps, luring and tricking the enemies as if they're walking in the palms of her hand, could only be done by a tactician. Her style is absolutely irregular and yet extremely effective, an old king advisor Bernard mentioned with having some war experience. What do you suggest newcomer? Marty asked with a menacing tone as he would do anything to best his siblings. Well. We still have time to do what the girl asked us to do while learning with her waiting for a chance to outdo her. I believe that's the reason your sister Liliana accepted to teamwork with them. The old man Bernard said calmly, used to dealing with the old king who had quite an attitude when he was younger. In a way son and father were pretty much the shape of each other. Perhaps younger version of the late ruler. Fuck. He slammed the table again with more strength causing the ink to fall dying a bit of the table and the ground in black. Another option would be to wage war against the orcs, but I don't advise that, if anything finding a way to make use of them against the four goblin kingdoms, would in a long term be more beneficial, and after defeating them, we could backstab them getting both territories, Charles said calmly while scratching the curly black beard underneath the chin. That could align with the latest letter and request from Aurora, Marty places a letter on the table in a place without ink to not dirty it, whereas Charles proceeds to take a look along with Bernard. After both taking a while to read the information given by Aurora they start sweating almost at the same time. A thousand goblin giants, level 114 goblin king, a goblin lord was born. Just what in the hell is this insane report? Apparently a goblin envoy dropped by Julius outpost to discuss terms. It seems their loss made them respect Aurora as a worthy opponent I suppose, Marty said in a cold tone rather disgusted by the name, and even more so every time it was referred. She also tortured goblins and dogged information from them. There's four kingdoms and at least this one at the center. In the middle of the rest is the likely piece of terrain that could facilitate human expansion since it would stretch our supply line and give us a territorial advantage, but it could easily be destroyed by the other five if they so decided. In other words, she wants an alliance with those who are not goblins to avoid that. To achieve that we'll have to play quite the dirty task. Bernard added feeling rather interested in the girl. I'll leave this blame to the head of the Green Rose family as their family can sneak on some orcs without being seen. Afterward I'll ask some assassins to do the rest. Understood Prince Marty. As for the supplies. How should we go about them? Just do whatever the girl suggested and tell the men to spend every time on it. So we're able to catch up to them. Understood. Also if I may suggest a way to tackle the disobedience of the soldiers, I'd start delivering punishments to them like your father once did. Ten whips should do the trick, and make a fellow soldier do it to one another, that way they'll see each other as rivals and will enforce order among each other, as everyone will be wary. That does sound interesting, all right let's attempt it for now, I'll make a squad of soldiers to enforce the law around, and if they attempt to abuse the power they'll receive double the punishment, as you command prince. Say, newcomer, what would you suggest related to that Aurora girl? There's certainly a way to outdo her in some way no? That would depend on the freedom your highness allows this one to think. Well, in that case, I'll give you infinite freedom under my royal name. 
The old man smiles lightly and starts whispering some ideas to him. Year 5009 After the system day 64 of the sun season southeast outpost inside the tent of the princess, it has been quite an auspicious debut towards this thing they call war. You're certainly doing a great job at it, Princess Liliana. Oh my thank you, Angelica, it has been quite fun with all the people seeking my hand, both men and women alike. It seems to be part of the royalty really do make peasants and nobles alike stupid. And starts laughing hearing their conversation and then says, even if they get to marry the princess according to the law only one with royal blood can rule, so they would be nothing more nothing less than an adornment to the princess. The prince smiles and then says, well it cannot be helped, but like my further used to say if people want to be used, we shall utilize them fully, by the way princess. We're starting to capture a lot of goblins and kobolds. What should we feed them with before using that special plan? Wasting food on beasts? Let them eat each other, she laughed wickedly slightly startling the other two. As you command princess, I would really like to have a reunion with my brothers and their generals. Do send everyone a message, we can all meet in the middle outpost, and have a long conversation about everyone's achievements since we'll have to report them to the queen by signing it with every sibling royal seal. Ange handle that, and deliver the letters to both places, if anyone bothers you kill them. All right mother, the daughter replies in a bored tone then remembering something amusing she adds. Guess I'll go pay a visit to Alicia, there was a very interesting light during our duel. I'm rather curious about what trick that was, wasn't that the light of a hero being chosen? Princess Liliana who was watching questioned curiously. She was wielding the sword of the first hero, however, there were others, and way stronger men and women than her. But only she received it. Yet I don't know why. That does make sense. You two had some rivalry since young. And she ended up beating you after so long. I will take that one as a draw mother. We ended up both fainting, and I recovered faster while receiving fewer injuries apparently. The princess feeling left out of the discussion decided to add a note, if both weapons were equal I believe Ange would have won. After all, Alicia was using the hero blue sword, it is incomparable to any other. Upon hearing such words Ange said, I truly wouldn't mind having a hammer like that. To her wish, the princess entered a state of trance almost like receiving a new piece for her puzzle. A little while goes by and the princess upon waking up says, Perhaps you might find a weapon of that grade as the sword isn't the only one the goddess Arya summoned. Now go deliver my message, I've added your request to my skill in time you might be lucky. With a smile, she left walking away joyfully hoping to receive something worthy of her smashing talent. Really can't help but envy that skill Princess Liliana, you could become quite a tactician if you tried. Angelica said while placing her elbow on the table then the head on top of the hand with a tired expression. If I didn't end up in a trance which would delay all my orders during a war it would be perfect, but sadly all good things come with consequences, a lot of them even. The headaches again? Yes, not to forget how my personality gets a little twisted, freaking cursed skill. Liliana gets up and heads towards the exit. Alice caught you to the wagon. Thank you Lady Angelica as always, never know when a silly person may attempt to jump on the poor me, that's true, they chuckle together, and then she continues speaking, I'm assuming you haven't given up on obtaining Aurora correct? With a vicious look she faces Angelica scaring her a bit, but of course, she's the key for my ascension, I will have her no matter the cost, one way or another, perhaps you could plan something with Xylf. The man with enough money or products will do anything. Products. She makes an innocent confused expression. Boys, girls, teens, adults, toys, sex ones, even beasts and the monsters from what I've heard from someone that knows his exquisite and exotic tastes. Disgusting, but do contact him discreetly if he's useful then we'll compensate with money. Children are off the equation. Ark just thinking about it, makes me want to throw up. Apologies princess, I'll refrain from commenting on such themes in the future, I'll ask a capable person to deliver him a message. Thank you. Let's go, I need fresh air, and some cold water or even ice for these headaches that just became worse. Understood, I'll attend to your needs. 
They walk outside together preparing for the future. Year 5009 After the system day 70 of the sun season south outpost, somewhere closer to the sky than usual. A wooden watchtower separated from the wall with a long ladder to climb to the top of it. And yet above its cube-looking roof there laid a blonde girl worrying everyone who noticed her from down below. The few who saw the general, casually yet concernedly thought she might slip and fall, hurting herself or even dying. But none dared to move there as it didn't have much space to do so. With her irradiating hair, the golden tones proclaimed themselves brightly as all together, made up a second but tiny sun. Her face looked complicated, with a mixture of boredom and awkwardness, possibly with a hint of a pained look and a gist of sorrow. And yet her glacial blue eyes gazed upon the clouds, white they were, gracefully presenting her stillness and occasional fluffed shaped animals towards the girl's own imagination, yet in a dread contrast her thoughts rumbled, the number of enemies is increasing, the troops slowly disappearing. Am I doing a good job? Without expecting an answer, but receiving one nonetheless, a voice spoke to her, as it had many times before, whenever insanity bewildered inside her mind at its peak. This became more common as she opened more and more seals within her memories, cursing herself further. After all, one could never be careful enough when exploring the past of someone who isn't themselves, as they never know what could be in wait. It has always been like that. Why worried about it now Aurora, she sighed, genuinely as her emotions were rightful, and devoid of masks as the young one was currently alone, struggling within herself, fighting the consequences, I'm tired of the countless murdering. Her eyes started glittering being filled with emotion, but to that, the one who shared her soul revolted. You are a liar. You love killing. Conflicted from such a reply, she swayed her head to the sides, having borne not so long ago feeling unjust, towards the life and task it was forced upon such tiny shoulders, having endured longevity as cruel as it had ever been inside the demented and cursed dimension, no, I truly don't, I despise it, why are you doing this again, all over again even, I'm truly exhausted having to scramble through a sea of sealed memories to revive them, just so they get closed again when I'm done using them, they don't even belong to me, a tear slipped from her right eye, rolling all the way down towards the chin, passing close to the thin pink lips. Have you lost your mind? We do what must be done to take the next step. In a way to keep her happiness safe, you freaking idiot. She tilted in confusion as the memories were great, and a big price for the plan the girl had fabricated recently. Her. Who was that again? She breathed heavily, almost having a panic attack. Did you forget about Iris the girl who saved us from that hell? The one place where you were born? Upon hearing that name in her mind, the mouth reacted by producing crazy laughter having thousands of memories scrolling through, creating a chain reaction through the entire body. An aggressive shaking one, very much like an epileptic attack. After a little while, once motionlessness came to be, the voice arrived towards her once more. Are you done acting crazy now Aurora? A clear frustrated expression was now dyed on the girl's face as she complained with her other self, performing, pretending even, you declare that yet I'm no actor. If all I did was truly acting, then more than 60,000 beings of this world would still be alive. Tears kept on pouring as she resented herself from taking such actions, having sinned, and killed a plenty. A mass instigator, in the path to becoming Artana's princess of genocide. They were a necessary sacrifice. You know that better than anyone. After all, it's not the first time this soul stains itself with death. As true as the words came to be, their familiarity ringed closer to some of the memories she unlocked previously, that now her own knowledge kept as a side price. Covenant, as it had been in times, the one asleep, her true self, kept on struggling to awaken, meticulously in wait, pouring one line among another and another, developing a web so complex and wide that both of them were surely to fall for. The destruction, the blood, ah, how easily they died, I can't help it any longer. She chuckled, madly, lustfully, dementedly and saddened, a strange recipe of chaotic emotions, creaking every piece of her damned heart and cursed soul. Well, Aurora, the normal you, 
was considered insane by others, perhaps even now the same would be, if your task wasn't being their general. The laughter stopped, and the hint of resentment was now completely gone, back to the void of her brain, along with all the memories inside the Pandora box that shouldn't be opened carelessly, as some could very well have a greater weight than normally known. Yet you called me crazy when I was feeling sorrowful for my sins. Don't you find that to be rather contradicting, since that is the common sense of these pesky humans? To that the voice refuted, speaking of hidden times, of a past and forgotten realm. This is not that other world, sins aren't judged by a god. If anything, they are praised by such an entity, rewarding you with the best thing possible your hands could possibly grasp the thing we sought when the one we must not refer to was decaying from age. The strange personality chuckled, giving some breath for Aurora to continue. Approved by the god of chaos and the evil one was it? What a fuss. Though having the tome of the pandemonium is indeed a variable that didn't happen in the past lives. Although I no longer can't devour the people's power, by consuming them in my true form. When we ate that goblin woman, Whatever we acquired went somewhere else. Confused, she was, till the voice rebuked an odd statement, as her knowledge of this world was currently divided by two entities. Didn't it go within you, inside me the grim oer? Her mouth opened, but words didn't come out, having reached a realization deep into herself. Wait. You're right. Perhaps nothing is lost in that regard, but since we are in a different world, my true form power might still be working in a peculiar way. With a more approving approach the voice added, now we're talking Aurora. Depending on the skills you will get from the class, whatever you eat might enhance them, so you should devour everything. It chuckled maniacally causing echoes to spread within the girl's mind, to both, the words and the laughter, her hands trembled along with the horrifying experiences of the past. I'm scared. Won't the gods realize it? They may want to seal me again for the third time, or even destroy me, very much like a black hole that could destroy a heavenly being realm. Sealing it, was one of the most viable options. There's nothing you can do about them once more. You are weak unlike before, and even when power flowed through your body you still failed, miserably. Shut up, she yelled at herself angrily rolling her body slightly, looking down on the faraway ground sneaking to the few soldiers below from the roof while the stomach remained facing downwards. You shut up, you fake, weak and soft version of the Almighty One. Stop being a baby, gods or not that's not something you ever had the chance or power to fight, since you came to be, and yet you wish to devour them? Just how complacent and devoid of realism can you be? A new world, a new life? Aren't you having a deja vu? Nothing ever changes, you stupid and spoiled brat. You are Aurora, the death bringer. The path you walk will either bring destruction to this world or salvation to those around like Iris. I believe you know which is the best option to go. No, not like I care about her, but I know you love that new little sister of yours. The words pierced the girl's heart, like many times before, at times to save Aurora at others to lure her into doom, but alas. Great powers were often double-edged, and to this girl, such had been the case more times than she possibly wished for. Ah, right, there is that priceless little girl, a variable that didn't exist before either in the equation, the one who saved me from being engulfed by the darkness inside the mirror. She inhaled deeply feeling remorse and pain from her everlasting days. Yes, exactly, you shouldn't betray your savior. Her cheek turned allowing it to rest on the hardwood on the top of the cabin. I guess I do owe her this life don't I? She grasped one hand onto the other, resting her cheek on the left arm which was softer. That should be obvious. How come you're struggling so much today? The girl muttered painfully, giving the creeps to anyone who heard. Memories. Thoughts. Living hell. Repetition. Endless suffering. She exhaled her pain away leaving it up to the winds to take it somewhere else but here, where it was not needed. I can seal your memories if you wish since you had to unlock so many of them for this war. Ignoring his advice, she recollected something more recent. Hum, it sure was interesting how that red book trembled unaware of the entire truth interrupting her. The second entity directed her some words. No one needs to know your past, 
Say the word and I will forever seal it. Reminded of the times she spent with her newly formed sister, having a gigantic balance upon her mind that was wavering between her two selves. What if Iris asks me about it? And so the voice kept on persuading Aurora to do what it wanted. If your sister truly wanted to know she would have asked already, and yet Aurora kept finding excuses to delay such redeeming figures. Perhaps she was respecting my decision of not saying anything, not to forget, I ended up in this mess thanks to all the sealing you did to me. A TSH sound could be heard, similar to a click of a tongue along with a now louder and angrier tone. You know it was necessary. Even then, would you truly want her to know about all of it? Everything you did, the entirety of sins which made you, who you truly are. Would you even show her your true form? Without giving a chance to Aurora reply, it continued relentlessly, you could have but instead, you choose to mimic her appearance to hide it, to deny yourself, to punish yourself, to grant a new false hope where there's nothing but a black pit of loneliness carved deep inside your heart, not that you have one anymore, dementedly it laughed, in a chaotic tone, unlike what any human could possibly produce. I and once more she was interrupted by it. You are scared about it. I understand, who wouldn't write, but hear me out. I can bring you peace of mind, make everything easy again, just like back then. Similar to a drug, wiping everything unnecessary blank, bringing you temporary tranquility. It chuckled evilly, and pitifully. That truly doesn't sound so bad, it was a good trick to endure 10,000 trial of the mirror sealing the monotony of every day stuck in such a place, allowing the girl to live each day as a new one, free of worries, insane and lonely, but with some liberty of the plagued accumulation of confusion and suffering. It's a matter of ordering me to do it Aurora, after all, I'm only a minor part of our owner. Upon the new established contract between two minor parts of her soul, the grim I could not go beyond his own will. At the very least two-thirds of her existence were necessary to arrive a decision. Reason why it kept on tempting her. Do you think being robbed of everything I've done and experienced, is the best way to go about this new chance that Iris gave us? Therefore, I shall refuse it, and bear the suffering for a hundred years more till my little sister dies. Her inner yells were met with a very long sigh, and a bit of static at the end. Humans truly are fragile Aurora. They don't live long, probably not even a hundred years. You should treasure her and break the soul bound, so we're not forced to go for a fourth world. It was quite tiresome to make the higher beings unaware of the properties of our soul, that stupid goddess. Reminiscing about the memories of her past life, she added some words clearly. Yes, those humans truly were powerless back then during my peak. And even now, it feels like nothing truly changed aside from her existing for my sake, and me going back to powerlessness, having given up on persuading Aurora, it spoke in a different perspective, perhaps the light of hope you have been looking for all this time, for no more and no less than 20,209 years, is that which Iris, she smiled upon such words, it wasn't a happy one, no, in fact, happiness hadn't appeared on her face through the entire conversation. Pity was the sole emotion reflected from her, a truly pathetic and unfortunate expression, hopefully, what a joke I must be to the gods, a funny clown truly, maybe that goblin was right about you becoming the witch jester. They chuckled together, causing their laughter to synchronize outside their mind, the clowns from back then were truly fun. Ruthlessly he reminded Aurora, fun to see from the sideline but certainly not hilarious to the point of having joy spreading from their words and acts, she sighed, knowing very well that certain scenes weren't pretty, indeed, they didn't know how to help others laugh, only how to make them cry, beg, and despair, that in itself is an art, the famous quiet performance, we are not artistic enough to think of such boundaries, though, the voice chuckled at Aurora's words, finding quite the amusement in them, you are right, but it depends on the plane, if the perspective is not about assassinating, if it ends up being related to war instead, then we are perfect. I am unequaled, she thought with a big conviction, one greater than any thus far, but alas, that was not true, to the current one, and the girl knew. Of course Aurora, 
the one and only peerless general. It laughed madly in her mind, teasing her and making Aurora close her mouth with both hands. As in reality, if someone saw the girl, they'd think she was just laughing loudly for no apparent reason. Once the glee stopped, she regained temporary sanity, placing both hands on the wood underneath the body, getting up, convicted of the most hack that Aurora was yet to realize. Enough playing around. I will not allow the gods to defeat our soul a third time with their schemes, and I'll find a way for Aris to not die, even if it costs this life. Sounds like the real you won't be resting anymore. It began crying, regretting saying such phrasing. Correct, we shall do what must be done, awakening her from the slumber and allow the named one, the real general who holds the memories of the first two worlds to take it from here. The tearing went on affecting her real expression, not just an inner one, causing her eyes to turn red and tears to fall, and with an amiable tone the other voice spoke out of pity, but this time not towards the girl, it talked of the predestined despair that would fall into the world of Artana, if she truly did what mustn't be done. I can almost feel sad for our enemies, to think they would convince you to give up, awakening her from the slumber that I created to stop that ancient madness. Aurora gripped her hands tightly, trembling, but knowing she would fail otherwise as her talent and knowledge weren't enough. Awakened the memories of the second world, Grimoire. It yelled madly, in terror and fear reverberating her mind, causing her palms to meet her ears, and then when it stopped, it questioned with a thin voice, a glass breaking one, like a mouse squeak, are you really truly sure? We will definitely lose and die to her kid. I believe in Iris if it's my little sister, then. She hoped with all her cells, for the little sibling to manage their owner, unable to go against the contract as every order required two parts of her existence to proceed, and the one asleep was at Aurora's side in this theme. As you command peace of the named one, I'll release all that I can, the ones from the first world before your sister world are impossible. The seal is too strong. Doesn't matter, once she awakens, the seal most likely won't last. Tears kept falling through her beautiful blue clear eyes, knowing everything was coming to an end. With a shivering voice it declared, regretfully but sympathizing with this created vessel. Well, it has been a pleasure to have kept you company this far, even though you will perish with me. Here goes and farewell part of my master. May we meet again my dear Grimo I named E. A cluster of memories filled her non-existent brain, interrupting her from any thoughts. Had she been human, Aurora would have instantly become completely demented from all of its horrors. Ah, Aurora fell on both knees, leaning forward with the head, allowing bits of golden hair pass through her vision, as it was currently a bit short barely reaching the shoulders. She let out a yawn, and very nonchalantly, her two hands rubbed the eyes like one do when waking up, it seems nothing lasts forever in my dreams, how pleasant they were, having slept for so long, those two sure did a great job at keeping my slumber lasting, but too bad, they couldn't possibly resist me, first world memories, seal release, once more the brain was filled with memories, she clicked her tongue and complained, scorning at them, memories only go as far as when I was one year old, all the way back to that shitty place, this seal isn't like the Grimo Iyer one, it is quite intricate and complex, I can't open it, seems to be related to my origin, well, no matter, she clapped her hands thrice, now I must greet the world, may they welcome the named one, may everyone revere and fear the one who makes the gods tremble in fear and depravity, the single being that makes them resort to millions of sacrifices for a filthy seal, and so the madness began, a burst of crazy laughter followed through, while she raised her head and then looked around to this new world feeling born anew, like a metamorphosed lava, leaving its cocoon for the first time, expanding its wings, and legs to the sides, I will never forget either of you and thank you both for keeping me sane and alive through all those years. I shall humbly reward you both with the three wishes you requested. She clapped once in their honor. I will win any war against anyone in this world, be they human, green, or celestial. Her hands hit each other once more. I shall preserve the sanity as you requested Grimoire, 
the one you two provided me with so much effort. With a third and last clap, she added the words her vessel most wanted to hear. Lastly, I shall protect your sister Iris till the day she dies. However long that may be, these trio of promises, shall be the price to awaken. Notice, the contract has been accepted by all the parts of your soul, you now completely own its authority. With all the memories and personalities completely merged, she spat on the hands three times, rubbing them afterward while gripping them tightly. Now then, time to destroy the Green's kingdom, and then bring the gods down from their thrones, Grimo I summoning. Notice, a Grimo I can't use a Grimo I. Ah. So this is the way the gods found to seal one of my powers, treacherous and inconceivable. She tilted her head along with the rest of the body to the side, looking sinister and creepy at her own self. How about the three innate abilities that are with me since my birth? The named one started searching deep within her soul. Seems like one of them is gone. Was it the work of gods to think they'd steal me of one of my birthrights? Devourer remains even if it's working differently. Status was it? She took a look at the screen information coming to a quick solution. Two of three are with me even if one is unidentified, the power to remain uncontainable, impossible to forever be locked inside a seal. Eventually breaking it, the sage did make a nasty way to almost bring an end to me by putting a malefic curse inside of that dimension which would eat me if I tried to escape. Truly disgusting. Filthy, yet wise human. Her lips took a maleficent shape, as her teeth rubbed into each other, causing an annoying sound for any who might hear. My powers have weakened tremendously, once I had enough mana to face a god, and now am an ant. Disrespectful, and despicable to dishonor me in this way. Her gaze quickly turned east, vastly looking for a specific location, feeling with every inch of her body a specific person. Iris was it? The price of the contract. The unidentified power my body is missing. She smiled innocently, once again hiding her emotions within a mask. Well, no matter, she's part of the oath. I'll allow her to keep it, she'll be the trophy for becoming part of my family. Yes, a present. Quite the intricate and special gift indeed. It wasn't long before she remembered something important. How about her? Did she come into this world with me and Iris? Realizing that her soul could not feel or reach a certain presence or entity she began chanting melancholically. I summon thee, oh, another side of me, the shadow of my body, the controller of darkness. She who was born from the darkest depths of hell, shunned upon the highest light of heaven. The being who covers the night sky and fills the land with blood and depravity. I seek to find you. To this, I plea my condemnation and spread my arms to welcome you. Now come and rejoice within my warmth, for my world is empty without you. My fellow devourer, devoted to our daring name, I cast upon thou, tier 10 invocation ritual system, chanting tiered magic is banned in this world, as such, the request has been blocked and erased. Consider it a warning, from the madness within herself for once again the world going against her wishes, she started yelling angrily. You dare warn me, me? Just you wait system and the gods of this world. Pray that I don't regain my old powers. For this time around you will not last. Her fist raised towards the sky, clenching it hardly. The girl then descended inside the watchtower wooden cabin. The named one, then punched the bell angrily making it ring, alerting the soldiers of enemies that are coming. At least, that's what it would normally be used for. That felt good, an immortal body sure is worthy of me. Now to make these lazy mongrels panic. Laugh slipped out of her lips, along with her body towards a hole in the center that led to some stairs. The soldiers noticed her coming down and started gathering. General Aurora, did you see some goblins up there? I've alerted the squadron leaders and the majors. The soldiers are preparing. Sweat could be noted, dripping through his forehead, along with nervousness and anxiety. No greens were coming. Major Marco, we're the ones going for them. Upon hearing that the man gulped some saliva down feeling a strange pressure along with an unfamiliar tone. The man not understanding the difference adjusted his silver helmet and voice loudly out of respect, as she looked serious and fierce, terribly so. Are we going to all out war, ma'am? She grinned, and quickly refuted his reply, responding sincerely and clearly. Of course not. We're going to mess with them. 
apply the formations I've been teaching all of you, and then retreat behind these walls, especially if they attempt to overwhelm us with numbers. She looked around, and upon finishing, realizing the people in question weren't in sight, added calmly and happily, I just came back after all, can't let all the fun end in a single throw of dice. Ah, right. He made a confused and awkward expression while waiting for orders, as Marco couldn't possibly process the current her. Uh, tell Lord Zylf to keep training the men with the cavalry, I won't be using them for this, as for the rest tell them to gather in front of the gate. Understood. His head nodded as he spoke. I'll go inform him and the squadron leaders right away. A different voice suddenly approached her ears. Aurora. The girl looked at the source of the voice to her right side, finding Major Rondo. I heard enemies are approaching. How many? He asked while gasping for some air from all the running. You'll know in a few hours after we mess with them. An unfamiliar grin passed faintly from her lips not going unnoticed by the man in front. This Major who spent the most time compared to all the others of the same rank learning with Aurora. With caution, he promptly advised, realizing they weren't under attack. There are easier ways to prepare the army than pulling the rope to ring the bell general, to that her body curved behind a bit, almost looking like she stared down on him. I didn't pull any rope. I punched the bell. She smirked briefly. Now come. We have some preparations to do while the men get ready. She turned round and started walking, then paused for a moment, looking back to him. And by all means, it makes good practice. The more we ring the bell the faster they'll be prepared for future times. Aurora resumed her march nonchalantly, leaving the man to his thoughts. Punched? He followed her, looking at both her hands not finding redness in it or what could look like some injuries. I guess she was kidding. This girl joking does sound unlikely, but... He shook his head a few times in an attempt to refresh his thoughts. Well, no matter. We're finally going to do something other than sitting around preparing. He smiled confidently filled with excitement for what was about to come, being able to see Aurora commanding the army. For the men under her, it usually felt like an inspiration for the likes of the majors who aspire to be as great as her one day and from here onwards, even more so. Two hours later, after the preparation and organization of every squad, on top of a horse outside the outpost walls, Aurora spoke loud enough so everyone could hear. Today we bring the most profound and best offering to the gods. Her voice resonated through the entire army with wind magic by a few mages next to her. I've had a dream of a million battles. The men shouted while stomping their feet on the ground, of a million victories, never once drawing much less losing. The men feeling the hype and enthusiasm in the girl's voice, resonated by clanking their weapons in the armors causing a loud sound that propagated through the entire army. Yes, I dreamt of gods drinking inside expensive chalices bathed of diamonds and gold, and what were they gulping down you ask? The men went silent waiting for a reply as curiosity entered their hearts. Raising both her arms pointing to the sky Aurora yells, that, gentlemen, is all the blood will pour from our enemies today. The soldiers shouted gaining a sense of morality and fury making them feel stronger. Shortly after Aurora started marching for a few hours on top of a brown horse with the entire army composed of three wings, aside from the cavalry under Zylf command and the reserves, leaving towards the north entrance of the Goblin Kingdom. The Majors also could be seen riding one, this was one of the ideas she taught them to deliver the orders in an easier way. This would enable the Majors to see clearly the state of the battlefield and be mobile depending on the situation. As soon as the army who made the earth shake and the dust rays on their way, arrived at a careful location, far and safe enough allowing the goblins to take notice of them. The green creatures started pouring out behind trees and large rocks that were used as shields as they used mana to screech calling for others. They used nature as attempts of walls, and trees as watchtowers mimicking past human generals. As the swarm increased composed of black and green looking goblins from afar, they started pouring towards the human center as they were wearing dark armor and weapons of all kinds, from small to large and even tall goblins, but no giants commanded by the goblin shaman as the number of humans weren't as much as he thought it would be. Let us start, Aurora raised the flag and shouted, Moon Formation. 
As the flag went up two mages behind her amplified her voice and scattered it towards both sides which chained with the voices of the mages who repeated it, and then everyone started moving. The front line composed of 100,000 melee fighters from axe, hammer, sword, spear users all made a curved line no different than a moon, making the center the furthest spot the enemies had to walk into. Meanwhile, Leaving the heavily armored soldiers as a second line composed of 200,000 as Alfred had expanded them under the orders of Aurora, since she deemed them very useful to hold the enemies down with their big silver shields and short iron spears like a gigantic green and black lance, the goblins ran while making loud noises and what sounded like heroic shouts as they entered the 100 meters distance. The flag wielded by Aurora situated in the middle of the four lines that consisted of the current army formation, started waving to the sides signaling one of the commands. The fourth line which resulted in the archers, the ones wielding longbows, started charging the skills that allowed them to aim for very long shots, sending flying no less than 35,000 shining arrows to what brought the start of long despair towards some of the goblins. Upon seeing the attack, the goblins kept running like the beasts they were, without fear as their morale was boosted by the number superiority while raising their weapons and closing their helmets avoiding fatal hits. The creatures unlike in the past wars, shone with an aura of elements around their armors, making the arrows less effective. But those that didn't have as much mana or good equipment, received mercilessly fatal wounds, ending up falling on the ground. What followed afterward was the usage of light magic for the goblins that stumbled, except for those whose arrows hit them in critical spots, bringing them a swift and painful death, leaving the ground wet with the promised wine for the gods. Some of them were overrun by their own kin, as in the end, they were beasts who stopped for nothing once they started moving, an unstoppable force that almost took the human kingdom for themselves in the past. At the reach of 70 meters, the magic squad being the third line, made a gigantic fireball shooting it in a similar way to the arrows, whereas the goblin mages halted upon its size for a while, joining forces to create a defensive rectangle made of water consuming a great of their mana to do so, but being able to defend their kin 30 meters later, upon trained countless times by Aurora, who instructed the magic squadron leaders. A large-scale water spell was induced on the ground between both sides, turning it rather muddy to which Aurora started waving the flag to the sides once more, and the number of arrows doubled to a total of 70,000, from those who wielded short bows, who could only shoot so far to those who had their initial shot recharged placing yet another big quantity of mana in their longbows completely depleting it from their bodies. Mercilessly like the first volley of arrows, a lot of casualties befell on the goblin side who still had 40 meters of distance to close to finally crush the opposition. The goblins who weren't caught by terrain tricks on the ground, split into two sides going around the mud pool, which resulted in a forced approach to the flanks of the moon formation that they didn't realize instantly. Once they moved an extra 10 meters, all kinds of skills started raining down on them from small builders, fireballs, icicles, thunders, vines from underground rooting them, explosions, and others. All of it contributed to many goblins using defensive skills magical and physical, still making the green ones receive a considerable amount of casualties across their forces, which were now split into two wings that continued running towards the humans losing a bit of momentum. With the number approaching becoming half of Aurora's army about 300,000 goblins, the girl waved the flag front and back, making a group of 200 human musicians beat some big drums signaling the formation to close turning from a waning crescent to a U-shaped, resulting in an active type of siege by the troops. With the feeling of closeness from both of the flanks, the goblins were forced to thin into a long stick formation once again forcing a lot of them to run through the mud, debris, chaos of the battlefield, and corruption of the terrain that didn't have a good shape from all the projectiles and spells that had been shot. With few meters left all the melee soldiers threw an elemental wave, which gave them time to hide behind the heavily armored soldiers. These attacks forced the first groups of goblins to be mercilessly cut, except those who dodged or parried it spending their own elements prowess which weren't many, 
as the Goblin Lord had only been able to teach them for a short time. With the change on the lineup, the soldiers were buffed and supported by the classes whose elements were water, earth, nature, and light, granting defensive and health buffs of all types. Some of the goblins noticing a line composed of tough-looking and shining humans looked behind, finding plenty of injured and dead friends. This made the green ones gain the courage and rage necessary to not halt, going against the humans in a furious response. The heavily armored soldiers having done nothing yet started hitting the weapons on the shield, causing a sound propagating through the entire line, pressuring the incoming goblins, and then they lighted the weapons and shields clashing against their foes. From the goblin side, they had their own group of mages and archers who arrived later, not only due to being forced to stop the gigantic fireball but also because of the difference in statuses since they too had black sets of armor, and also due to the lower strength, stamina, and agility, there was a small gap between the rear and the front. This allowed the lance formation to have a hole in the middle, which Aurora didn't fail to notice, as it had been one of her schemes. The girl started waving the three-meter-length white flag with a blue sword emblem, aiming upward once more, this time in a cross motion which resulted in the third phase of the general plan to start that made the hero and the sage go into motion, who were both hiding at the right extreme of the formation along with the saintess and a group of mages. They were behind some guards disguised as normal soldiers wearing sets of blue armor. Without further ado, the saintess who was blessed since birth with an abnormal amount of mana worth 20,000, injected it on Romeo and split it with an earth mage. This resulted in an absurd gigantic wall amplified by the sage skill, having a size of 100 meter length and 12 meters tall, completely splitting the goblin force. Noticing how successful the surprise had been, Aurora lowered the flag forward, and the drums started beating fiercely, while her voice in a loud and cold tone, was directed towards a great part of the battlefield through wind magic saying, slaughter those green worms. The formation started closing while the human shouts propagated everywhere causing pressure to the goblins while becoming a big circle, surrounding the green creatures completely. The goblin mages and archers stood behind the walls, confused between trying to destroy it or running to the sides going around it, both ways would take a long time to succeed. Having underestimated Aurora's army size, their leader blew a longhorn calling the ones who remained on the goblin kingdom side, back, in other words, the rear, leaving the 300,000 to die while killing as many humans as they could. Bloodshed befell mostly on the goblin side still leaving a decent number of casualties on the human side, as the enemies were physically superior by a bit, nonetheless bringing the greatest war achievement in the entirety of the human story system. A goddess has cheered a toast in your honor. Having noticed how everything went as smoothly as planned by their general, the many great leaders of the different rose heads could no longer stand on her way in prestige, as such, a peculiar one was extremely angry being left out, forced to watch from afar. I was supposed to be the next head of the generals of the king army, how dare you completely steal my spotlight you little bitch. I will fucking find a way to break and then kill you Aurora. Zyle thought completely furious while having a vein pop out close to the left eyebrow, as the skin turned red from the shaking of his body while clenching the fists on the reins while on top of a horse. The man next to him, the mercenary leader noticing how enraged he was declared, I can prepare a couple of disposable young men or slaves to vent out the anger my lord. With a furious expression, he faced the man and glared at him nodding lightly. The teeth of the man too were clenched in rage, unable to open the mouth from the humiliation this caused him unknowingly to Aurora as her plan simply didn't require cavalry. If it failed, she had planned to turn it into a strategical retreat. A few hours passed and the humans took what they could with them as spoils of war. The goblin meat, for example, was a worthwhile ingredient despite the taste, and the equipment they have too, not to forget the soul stones, however. Due to the high number close to 300,000, a lot of corpses were left behind. Aurora, without wanting them to touch the bodies too much as she had other plans, ordered the retreat since a complete victory was far from happening, and overstaying could lead to danger. She stood still while the men cheered for her while heading back to the camp. 
Amazing job general I've fallen for you all over again. Raphael the spear user who was covered in blood said while passing by with the rest of his squadron to what Aurora's gaze shifted towards him evaluating him from top to bottom. I doubt any woman would like to share a bed with you unless at the bare minimum you take a bath Raphael, you're looking rather filthy, a happy smile appeared on his face to what he said, if I'd take one would I have your company later tonight? Her gaze shifted to the front away from him while saying, if you don't die before the humans conquer the world. I might take on that offer, even though it won't mean I love you back. A charming smile surfaced on his expression to what he said while starting to move, then you better start waging more wars like this one to speed things up. If only the enemies would fall for such plans every time, it surely would be easier. Raphael started laughing while leaving, getting mixed in the soldiers crowd as both knew the green ones wouldn't fall for the same trick twice. A while passes and the first line in the center starts passing through Aurora, every single man looking up to her as she's mounted on a horse, while they're completely bathed on blood for having had the hardest troll on the battlefield stopping around her with two to five meters of distance, and then within the group, a man and a girl also bathed in blood approach their horse. Great job today General, Alfred calmly says bowing lightly filled with respect. Having doubted the girl before, making this an act of apologizing to her and himself. The men who wore white sets of armor let out a roar in honor of their leader's courtesy and compliment, which was extremely rare for him to do, even to Alicia his own daughter. That was quite chaotic. War truly is dangerous, but I was able to gain some levels thanks to it. Do you have news of your sister? Aurora shifted her gaze from Alfred to Alicia and replied with a calm tone. Thank you, Lord Alfred. Ignoring Alicia momentarily she starts looking at the tired faces of the men and shouts. I'm also thankful for every single one of you who stood your ground today, since if Lord Alfred's line fails, humanity falls. You all are the guardians that keeps our race alive. All of you are our greatest line of defense. Feeling prideful inside the men gave ten hurrahs beating the shields with their weapons as they went causing the morale to grow deep inside. Go rest all of you, it is the minimum you deserve from your efforts today, without waiting for Alfred's command which surprised him. The men resumed the march allowing the man to come to the realization of Aurora being above him, to what he didn't mind as the achievements of today were more than what he ever achieved through his life in war. Let's go, daughter, as soon as they started moving with a low tone Aurora said, sister is still going to train with Ray for a few more years. Then she's thinking on opening a shop to sell potions and the like, she sends a hug with a big smile. Alicia kept moving grabbing Alfred's hand tight, leaving with him who ended up looking at the daughter's joyful face faintly smiling. Soon after, the Saintess along with Romeo and Sophie approached her, little sister we are back, did you see what we did? It was fantastic right? Aren't you proud of us? Aurora placed her hand in an old fashioned way in front of her mouth closing it slightly with the back of the hand towards her lips chuckling gracefully startling them, and then with a mature own, she replied tenderly, yes, I'm very proud of you guys, if that didn't work we would all be dead, I can't even find the right words to express how amazing that wall you guys created is, if that was done against me, I don't know how I would have resolved it, truly brilliant, thank you, sage, hero and of course Saintess. Being showered with such praise as she was generally a very cold and serious person, the couple held their tears while the Saintess placed her hands on top of their heads saying softly. Let us go, we should rest in case they launch a counterattack. To what they nod lightly leaving with happy faces. As the entire human army vanished and the goblin one retreated, the girl unmounted her horse and walked slowly to the middle of the corpses both human and goblin ones as it was impossible to carry all of them back. Now then let's see how the gods of this world will react to my power and what I'll gain from it, true form. Notice, 1000 mana has been consumed, this form will last for 2 minutes, as it is level 2. Very well. Now it's time to devour everything, as she walked forward a dark eerie aura spread everywhere, consuming the corpses of both humans and goblins alike. 
and once her skill would end she would repeat this process multiple times eventually absorbing every single one of them. She could expand her dark aura wide enough with the current gigantic mana amount, even though it became shorter each time a thousand mana would be consumed by the true form skill. Thanks to this repetition, the skill would level up every time it was used lasting longer in exchange. Notice, your soul power has reached 100 million. Notice, pandemonium knowledge has maxed the percent related to the goblin and human races. Doesn't really tell me what devouring them did, but at the very least I won't have to bother with these two races anymore. I'll have to see what I can do with all the soul power, but since my body suffered no changes, it'll most likely be for Iris use. I'm sure, she'll become an excellent partner when the time comes. Right, that would be rude, a lovely sister, the sole existence worthy of standing in the same stage as me. A very charmful and lovely smile appeared on her expression, making her look like a very kind grandmother. Close to an hour, later Aurora in a normal form identical to Iris could be seen alone on top of the horse looking at the tall wall Romeo had helped create. Then out of nowhere, heard a loud bang, then two, then three and at the fourth time a tenth of it crumbled down, causing a big cloud of dust to envelope the hole it left. Similar bangs started echoing around the rest of the wall, and by the time it was over, she could see gigantic goblins coming out from those holes tattering the wall down mercilessly. It seems like the old goblin wasn't lying, had they used them earlier, I wouldn't have been able to encircle their front force long enough. Having the surrounding force be attacked from two sides like they were, a happy smile surfaced on her face while becoming happy from the sight and the future challenge, she'd face. But thanks to this information, countermeasures would be a matter of time. Upon noticing two big hands grabbing the top of the left over wall, she watched it fill which allowed Aurora to see Gigantos the leader and tallest of the giant goblins. That one is a little despairing. Fully equipped in black armor he placed one of the hands on the forehead that had no helmet to cover the eyes from the sun. Then looking forward with the shadow from the big hand, his lips moved as he noticed a human on top of a horse emanating a terrific eerie dark aura. Behind Gigantos a group of very strong goblins started lining up from afar, the shaman, goblina, four of the elites, and the goblin king himself all of them talking while looking at the battlefield. Aurora unmounted the horse and then faced towards their direction bowing deeply to them, then mounted once more, and pulled the reins after observing them a bit more. She rode back to the outpost allowing her blonde hair to be spotted from afar, making the shaman point at her and possibly understand who the person was and why the human had bowed. Moments earlier at the end of the fight before Aurora received a system message. In a completely black room, a woman was watching Aurora while clapping happily at all the innovations she had brought together from flag waving to drum beating, and this amazing formation called the moon. Yes, yes. Wave that flag. Ah, ah. That's right. Ah. Show them how it's done. Laughter, while mixed with pleasure resounded in unison for the most intricate banquet after hearing Aurora's speech which made the goddess Rose cheeks quite red. Haven't had this much fun in so long, ah this is the best? This little sentient weapon truly was worth making, I can't get enough, ah. Yes. Right there. The moon formation? It should be called the dark moon, laughter resounded fiercely in the room. Come on, almost there, close it, close it. Oh a gigantic wool? Marvelous tactic. Just who is this girl? Her middle finger started ramming a bit deeper inside. Murder them all. Bring them the pain and humiliation of losing as a superior race. Show those goblins how it's done. Ah my goodness. Those words. Slaughter those green worms. That's even worse than me. They made me so very filled with fluids. Laughter and pleasure contrasted ever so nicely to the point of bringing the goddess incredible joy along with splashing sounds from the now two fingers working in a combination delivering a swirl of hotness and delight. Go human. Go goblin. Fight. Murder. R. 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 That was. Quite enjoyable. She picks a dark chalice and lifts it in the air and then a black void from above it appears dropping a green sticky liquid, and also crimson drops, almost like a shot from those who died. 
show me how much you'll ruin this world weapon Aurora. While dripping from down there, wetting the floor below the throne she's seated on. A sip is taken from the chalice, and then a sticky and wet red tongue passes through the lips happily. Oh look at those big goblins, they truly look strong, that shitty goddess Luna sure prepared quite the powerful toys. Mad laughter echoed the dark room while the many lamps turning on. Now retreat before they kill you Aurora, your death isn't to be seen just yet, you must fill this goddess of chaos with more amusement, more more more. Just thinking about it. Ah, my stick has gotten quite hard. Time to find something else to watch now, with a twist of fingers the screen changed to something else. Oh. It seems the god of evil Harthus is on the move, provoking the demons to conquer the north towards the west. More excitement and chaos to come. Year 5009 After the system day 85 of the sun season at Lumen Kingdom capital. Inside a fancy expensive dining hall large enough to host 50 humans there was a long wooden table with two layers of wooden one made of glass between them. Forty wooden chairs surrounded it sculpted beautifully having a sword carved on their backs aiming upward. Above the table one could see four big chandeliers going across the entire hall, since electricity wasn't a thing. They used slow-burning candles that could last for hours, very rarely lighting up more than necessary as the glass shards would amplify their light. Around the table and the chairs where the queen was seated along with one of the king advisors, lots of shelves holding all kinds of things from glass cups, plates, cutlery and tea sets could be found for the maids use. This hall was often used to talk after a long party or to end the night with some calm tea, sometimes a more interesting type of fruit liquor to subdue the drinkers to an enjoyable and relaxing mood, finding themselves in the need of sleeping. Despite the long table extending in the center through the hall, along with the chairs, there was plenty of space to walk around freely, and if necessary a room next to it which could serve for dancing. Queen Lily, it seems everything is going towards your older son Prince Julius's successorship. Despite the fake will you made to give a chance for Marty to rise to the throne, the late King Advisor Baptiste said while bowing deeply. What do you mean by that? Pretty sure that between the two, Marty has the best generals, Charles and Francis are with him, no? Well, my queen, you see, your son Julius, he is using a peasant with nine years old. A little girl truly as a general. That one he ascended to the nobility not that long ago which we thought wouldn't be a problem, however, she has recently slain 300,000 goblins in the most recent war, losing about 20,000 humans due to her irregular tactics on the battlefield, so on that alone, she's already worth receiving the tactician title bestowed in the past to Lord Ryu. In fact, General Aurora, as everyone calls her has proved to be so peerless that a new title must be awarded to her, otherwise, the masses won't be happy, not to forget that her fame has grown wide enough to reach the entire kingdom, perhaps even more than compared to the first hero, and since the saintess blessed her and the goddess Aria acknowledged the girl, I'm afraid that even the religion is starting to be influenced by her existence, the fanatics are starting to call her the daughter of the goddess. Not to forget she's even using the black robes, that criminal organization formed of cursed classes who were once exiled from the kingdom are now fighting alongside the white robes. Baptiste explained thoroughly delicately and as eloquently as possible revealing everything he knew so that the queen could think on the next step while feeling anxious and worried. The queen upon digesting everything he said, dropped the drink she was holding in shock spilling it on the table, and stood silent for a while making the maids around clean everything with old brown and black cloths, drenching them turning into a different color a little redder and vivid looking. She started hitting the finger on the table making a clicking sound with the nail on the glass searching for a solution, and then after some minutes an idea surged, a very simple one at that which caused her to smile. There, there is still a way out of this. If we make the king advisors personally gather the reports of each army then, we'll be able to choose the outcome. That's certainly possible but that would require some of the king advisors who support the other siblings to die your highness, he declared while frowning and feeling the heavy weight of his words, afraid that they could turn real, and that he would be ordered to execute them. That's the simplest part, 
pay Isabella for an assassination mission, you'll only need money, and we have plenty. This way we can allow this Aurora girl to live while increasing our kingdom territories, reducing our enemies. And she can even be used by Marty in the future once he's declared king. That's truly smart my queen, I'll make the arrangements and notify the different successors while also seeing who needs to be disposed of, I'll have everything achieved before the moon season. Good. You may go, made a new drink. Yes, your highness, at once. Baptiste left while his hands trembled as he would need to kill some dear friends and family of his unless they joined Marty's side. As he closed the door the Queen said, but seriously how does a young girl like that appears out of nowhere and starts changing everything as she sees fit? Who the fuck does that brat thinks she is? She regained some air then took a sip of the red wine, continuing her rumbling. Maid go bring me some paper and ink, so I can discuss some things with my son. Of course your highness. The poor maid rushed to a different room to gather the requested materials. To think there would still exist a low-class human like that peasant hero from the past. Human's potential truly does never cease to surprise me, but I need to procure more information about this matter. Otherwise, I don't know if she's worth keeping alive. Since the brat might not listen to my dear Marty, the queen takes a sip from the new drink and then sighs. This son of mine what would he do without my support? Here it is. Your Highness, she replies expressionless for the third time like a doll that is already dead. Well then, what should I write to convince him to use the girl? Year 5009 after the system day 90 of the sun season at Aurora Outpost. Good morning Aurora. She looks at the source of the voice. Prince Julius didn't expect you to come here today. Honestly me neither. But I've received an invitation and also a letter from the Queen, so I'll have to take you back to the capital for a certain ceremony. What? Don't they know I'm necessary here? What if they assault is while I'm not here? As much as I agree and am discontented, it's not something we can refuse. Even the Prince can't? She tilts her head confused as to what could be so important that would require both of them. It'll be a good surprise for you. Also I've been sending your payment to your father for all the work you have been doing, you sure you don't need anything? I'm fine your highness, as long, as my family is doing good that's all it matters to me, you've grown up kinda lately, soon you'll be ten years old, truly young, you and that girl Momo and Lady Alicia, it's quite the trio we have in this army, and all are outstanding in different things, how are the rest of the summon doing? From what I know they were only expected to join the war when the Goblin King invaded, however, with the changes and you taking care of blocking the way, it has become quite different than what the Saintess foresaw, seeing as she hasn't been having any weird ill-fated dreams, we can assume that you're successfully changing such destiny. I've actually never thought of it like that, since if it was predestined for us to fall, then wouldn't that mean that no matter what we did, we would ultimately lose? Unless you have someone like the Saintess who possesses the skill that is said was used by Arya herself, which enabled her to foresee the future so far, that a system creation was necessary, but if you ask me, she did a bad job at leading us to victory, in a way, even though this is blasphemy, I feel like she could learn a few things with you, that's truly a godly compliment to your grace, the prince started laughing at the unintentional pun she made, you've sure changed? You can even make funny jokes now. Maybe I'll retire and become a jester. The prince laughed some more and then added, Please don't. You're doing an amazing job as it is. Losing you would surely hurt the army, from the morale to the great tactics and ideas you have. If that ever happens you should put Momo in the command. She'll surely surpass me one day. You think the girl is that good? Yes. She has everything necessary to become truly peerless one day. If you say it with that much confidence I can only believe it, and accept your advice, which I am truly grateful for. If someday there's anything you want, do let me know, perhaps a shop license. My sister wants to open one in the future. She's interested in alchemy. You two really do have a lot of interesting things going on, but I'll send her further a permit signed by me so she'll be able to open one anywhere she wants. Thank you, Prince Julius, she'll be delighted. Now then, he looked at the entrance of the tent and shouted startling Aurora, maids. Ten maids entered the tent while the prince left, 
After winking at her, together with them came two men dressed in black and grey with expensive clothes, who started taking measures of her body. With a confused expression, she said, What's all this, didn't his royal highness tell you? One of the tailors asked while measuring her. Not really no, don't worry Lady Aurora, you'll be sure to have a great time at the ceremony. Just be still it won't take long, and stretch your arm my way. Year 5009 After the system day 88 of the sun season outside the outpost in the north section, I wish Iris could be here riding these cute horses with us. Don't you agree Momo, Lady Aurora? Yes, Lady Alicia that would certainly be fun, she could even see the vast fields everyone working hard on. Aurora looks around her seeing how much everything and everyone progressed since she became a general. At this pace it might become a city of its own, seeing as every day more peasants come for teacher Aurora, looking for a job either in the army as a soldier or as a farmer, aside from other professions depending on what they know how to do, Momo declared paying special attention to everyone that goes in and out of the territory, as she's busy helping with the selection. Most peasants don't have particularly defining classes, so they're as useful as they can be, Aurora mentioned particularly unbothered expecting a few of them to have rare or even unique classes towards crafting. Maybe the summoned from Aria, you could procure information regarding them. Since they're forced to place their hand when they arrive, maybe you leave and want to recruit them for the future engagements we'll have to do against the goblins. That's actually a useful piece of advice Lady Alicia. Aurora smiled gratefully since despite her brightness she doesn't have time to think about everything. Don't worry teacher, I'll make sure to keep finding information about Iris and the different human outposts. Perhaps my skill will prove to make good use of it. Also why did you stay behind after that war? I had a feeling I would see something interesting if I stayed there. With curious faces, the girls asked in unison. And did you? They look at each other awkwardly as they acted the same way causing Momo to blush and Alicia to smile naturally, actually I did. I got to confirm the existence of the giant goblins as tall as the walls of that day, truly incredible and frightening too. The girls gulped at the same time but this time not leaving their gazes from Aurora who looked seriously at them both. I saw a tall goblin wearing crown possibly the king, next to the one wielding a staff. The one I and Momo met when they sent an envoy, and then some very strong looking creatures along with the giants. If they had a million then at the very least they're down by around 350,000 goblins from all the things teacher achieved, possibly a bit more from the help of the other two armies, Momo said and then pulled the reins which the other two copied riding side by side with Aurora in the middle. You sure have interesting ideas Lady Aurora? It makes me wonder just how you even think of such things without having a special skill of sorts that could help you in some way. Imagination and creativity don't require a skill. Neither does exercising the brain Lady Alicia, Aurora replied with a mocking tone ending up teasing her, and Momo chuckling lightly unable to hold her laughter. Bew! You two are evil! Alicia hits the horse toss with the back of her boot while pouting making it move. Seeing that the other two smiled happily and followed her. A while later, they arrive at a small lake surrounded by grass and a few trees, and two boulders where they dismount and allow the horses to drink water while they rest. That's the horse you took with Ava the girl who reached the max level. She's become quite famous ever since the incident there have even been recruit attempts from the other two armies whom she refused despite better wage, Momo said after sitting on the grass while stretching her back and arms upward. Yes this is the one, a light brown horse who was close by to the massacre done by Ava. It's a very smart horse so I took a liking to it. I named him Brownie. The horse does in a feeling prideful startling both girls. To what Aurora adds. See I told you he's pretty smart, she pats the doors softly while complimenting him. It really does look like it. It even received more compliments from you than I have, Alicia said while feeling frustrated as Aurora always bullies her for some reason without understanding why. This reminds me of something, did you successfully assimilate yourself fully with the first hero soul fragment? Yes, but my body can't keep up with the movements from her memories. They were truly outstanding, 
so I still have a long way to go. Sounds like our generation will truly cause a change in this world, and together with the thirty summoned humans, perhaps even get the humans a peaceful world under the goddess Arya. I don't believe it'll be that easy Momo, but we'll do our best to see it happen, right Aurora? Both girls look at her who's playing with the horse ignoring them. On a low tone, Alicia says, being a noble lady is very tough, especially one such as myself. But I can't possibly imagine the burden it's going through her. Perhaps the one you share Momo. Well, I do a lot less than Aurora, since I'm working of the base foundation she created. I couldn't possibly discipline everyone the way she did, the speeches written by those delicate small and tired fingers, and or course, thinking on all the tactics I was taught, without all of that, with my skill and memory alone. I would have long lost. But since there's already a base and time to learn, I'll be able to shine at some point providing the support she needs, to take her leading a level beyond. Aurora smiled faintly hearing her words, without the girls being aware of it as they were looking into one another. To what Alicia added, if only I had some years more I would be able to reach a better stage becoming able to lead the first line, instead of having my father and the shield line forced to defend every time it's necessary. Take your time growing, Iris is also taking hers. Eventually everything will change one way or another, and all the races will get to know the humans, and how evil they can be. Aurora said with a calm tone showing an unusual state of mind related to such topic. Sometimes it feels like you changed a bit Aurora ever since the day you punched the bell, there's been a funny rumor of it. How the bell has a print of your fist on its surface, Momo said comparing Aurora behavior to all the images she has of her from before that day. Did you really punch one of those bells? They're really tough, Alicia says with a surprised expression making Aurora lightly chuckle placing a hand in front of her mouth hiding the laughter, and then with a cool eloquent tone, Aurora speaks. That day felt like I woke up from a very long dream. An everlasting one lasting more than eternity itself. Alicia chuckled and said, that really does sound long, so does that mean that your class awakened or something like that? Not exactly. That has yet to happen. Aren't you like half as strong as the saintess in what comes to mana? Just how much stronger are you planning on becoming? Momo said feeling left out as both of them were extremely capable. Feeling the sadness in her tone Aurora's horse approached and started rubbing his face to hers consoling the girl who felt surprised, ending up patting the muscles softly and a big of the other cheek that was free, and then Momo added, Thank you Brownie you're a good horse, the words made him neigh happily. With a friendly tone, Aurora declared, don't worry my silly student, out of the three of us, you're bound to be the one getting the most achievements, and also have the biggest role in the future to come. Though there's a chance I won't be there to see it, so make sure you protect Momo, Alicia, noticing how strange Aurora's words were, and also the fact she didn't request that with the use of formality. Alicia took it as a warning, and from that day onwards she would keep an eye on the general student. Also, I will disclose some confidential information that is only shared between me and my master Iris. Master? Alicia asks curiously but also confused about the way her friend was addressed. Are you really telling her? She's a hero Aurora, Momo said with a cold tone unbefitting the entire personality she had shown till now. Tell me what? An unease and fearful feelings joined together with the other two inside her heart, preparing herself to draw the blue sword if necessary. The truth is that Iris class isn't a wizard like she told you before, she's a witch, and not just any type, a unique type called Babel Witch, granted to her by the evil god and the god of chaos. She's the reason the black robes support us, apparently she's called the one, the human who will bring them to the promised land, which was deprived of them as they were constantly exiled by the white robes, in other words, the church. Upon hearing those words her body relaxed as the new law had already been approved by the Queen and the royal siblings regarding the disgrace class. Since it was already in effect there was no longer anything to worry about. It's not like Iris chose to become the leader or part or whatever of the criminal organization right? Fairly speaking, the law makes them innocent now. 
unless there's an issue about her class that you didn't tell me, since I've never heard about a Babel class, not to forget that includes the first hero knowledge which is extremely vast. To be honest, I was hoping that by telling you about it, you would be able to teach us something, but it seems like that wasn't the case, and it is like you said, you and Momo know about her true class which makes her a special person to some extent, however, the information I gathered from the white and black robes, don't have anything related to the Babel part itself. Then how do they know Aris is the one? Alicia asked while gripping the hands into each other feeling worried for her friend. Apparently they have an artifact that guides them to her, no matter where she is, and it only works for her when the one is mentioned. Shit, that's truly fucked up, having all the weird black robes chasing over her especially since they were once criminals, even if it's not for the disgrace class, they still managed to do a lot of other crimes. I agree, even if I'm cursed myself, at least, I never harmed anyone before. Upon hearing that Alicia grabbed Momo's hands who were shaking from the conversation, as she was scared for Aris too, and in a way all her life due to the way the body looked like. It seems like I'll have to gather information a little deeper, also Alicia. Iris told me that your class and hers are nemeses, so if the day comes where one of you has to live, I'll make sure that my sister is the one who prevails. Feeling the shock and the pressure from Aurora's words, Alicia says, she's my friend, I won't allow anything to control me, and force me to think otherwise. Not to forget I overcame the soul fragment gaining a couple of useful things. Upon hearing the words next to her Momo tightened the grip of Alicia's hands while smiling softly happily. Very well. The next two places I'll have to look at is the Royal Family Library and the secret archives of the Pope, both places that I can't possibly reach yet. Wouldn't the Prince allow you? Alicia asks surprised as in her eye they seem quite close. His own library is fine, but the one I would like to see is the late King's one that only the heir has the permission to enter. It should have a lot of interesting secrets and knowledge. Aurora's A's shone making Alicia burst in laughter. Sometimes I forget that you're a child like us Aurora, even with the memories of the first hero I was able to keep my personality mostly intact, except when it comes to swordsmanship, I get to have something like an assistance showing me the next step. Well, yes, I'm currently younger than you Alicia, so that's a given. A suspicious break. Alicia says in a joking tone making Aurora smile and Momo chuckle. Speaking of which, it is time to get going, still have some more dresses to try, even though I found a very interesting one. Upon hearing that Momo and Alicia's eyes sparkled with curiosity. Year 5009 after the system day 15 of the moon season at Lumen Kingdom Castle throne room. On a throne made of gold, the queen could be found seated in a long red dress with stripes of black. Around her, the butlers and maids were serving drinks in glass cups to the guests, close to 100 nobles could be seen chattering with one another, and from time to time they would go close the walls and the windows, where long tables with luxurious food could be found. The nobles of today were the most important ones in the kingdom, being the owners of practically the entirety of the territories of Lumen. From the entrance to the throne a blue long carpet stretching all the way to the throne could be found the one where Aurora would have to walk and stop close by to the first stair, as there were three of them, that distanced the throne area from the rest of the floor in height and space. For the windows that were closed, one could find blue curtains with sword figures mimicking the human's flag pointing upward. After all, in the entirety of the castle this was the most important place, the one and only where the most influential ceremonies would generally happen. A butler approached the seated one on the throne and with a low tone while bowing spoke. My queen all guests have arrived, including the blonde victim of tonight who is waiting outside with Prince Julius. Call her in, the queen said loudly for everyone to hear, making all the voices extinguish themselves. The great doors then started opening by the royal guards as the butler gave the signal by waving his hand. From the entrance a man in a blue fancy attire could be seen next to a girl wearing a long dark blue dress that didn't match her age, making her look stunning and mature. You may approach, Queen Lily spoke and Aurora and Julius walked together stopping close to a meter of the first staircase stone step, afterward the Queen raised from the throne, 
and everyone around bowed their heads. The queen looked around briefly and then said, it was a very complicated choice bringing you here today General Aurora as your army refers to you, an honorary noble such as yourself, a child of men. The room where you stand is not a place for the common to be, the only exception ever made was conveyed to the peasant's hero, who dignified herself battle after battle destroying the enemies of humanity, very much like you've been, and by all means, at a greater pace than she had. The woman takes some moments to regain her breath. I too was present the day my children made their speeches and surprised I was, when a child so young, so small, and so frail looking, stood in my eldest place when the moment came as I heard the most unique speech ever. I could not believe my ears, I was later told that it had been written by the blonde girl herself. It truly made my heart pound heavier, and now ladies and gentlemen, nobles of a thousand families of Lumen, raise your heads and look at the lady of that day. Everyone focused their gazes at Aurora while she and the prince remained bowing, and for a while, the queen took some time to regain her breath while preparing the next section of her speech. It is both with a burden and with a relief that I've summoned you, honorary noble, general, and lady Aurora, to the throne room where the entirety of the royal family has passed through to concede the conflictual title upon your name. The queen stretched her arms to the sides and said, I had to go as far as to research the entire story of the human kingdom, whereas it is saved all the great and almighty titles ever bestowed to fellow humans, and even those that have never been used before. She makes a praying posture without bending or kneeling, only using her arms and hands while explaining. It came to my ears that you're not only a great general, but also that you were able to show our ancient religion under the watch of that man over there, the Pope. The resolution that was necessary to enforce the rightful solution towards one of the most arduous conflicts of our race. Turning the entirety of the black robes to be part of the Prince Julius banner. Thanks to that, the criminality rate inside the capital has come close to non-existent. The noblemen did not remove their eyes from Aurora as they no longer couldn't, some sweating and others surprised about the queen words. Easily the most beautiful compliment that a royal member ever gave to a peasant, if that wasn't glorious enough to grant you a title like a pacifist one from the records, that was but the tip of the iceberg, from the shadows, you've also been taking a great blow at the economy of our kingdom with the help of my eldest son and the merchant association. Increasing the importance, numbers, and of course strength of the human army with a significant record of a million soldiers, and close to 50,000 horses who are on their way for a cheaper price than usual. Thanks to good connections, in other words, gentlemen, one tenth of the human race now stands on those tiny shoulders. Zylf, upon hearing the last part, clenched his fist as there was no mention of him being the leader of the cavalry which Princess Liliana and General Angelica took notice of, both laughing inwards and having a fake pity for him. These numbers are at the very least prodigious, since the charisma necessary to achieve this and having the full respect of the men around you as a child, it truly waits on this queen's shoulders, as a title for such feats really does require something tremendous. Yet the main reason you were brought here today, was due to the last great fight you led against the goblins, losing a big number of 30,000 soldiers, which by no means is a low amount. But what exceeds such losses was to slay 300,000 goblins in exchange, 300,000s. Some of the men around let out a whistle or a sound of surprise, having a dumbfounded expression on their faces. So as you can see gentlemen, this is the result of the idealism of my eldest son Julius, whom as a mother I am greatly proud of, as the humanist that he is, allowing a young peasant like this one to rise. She stares at him while speaking making him raise his head with a smile. You honor me with such words, Queen Lily. I'm truly grateful for them my dear mother, with a slight nod she then stares at Aurora from bottom to top evaluating the choice of clothes and then continues, child, from this day onwards you will become the future general of the future king, as you are blessed by the goddess Aria and our most beautiful saintess. Upon hearing those words serenity and the Pope bow deeply faced towards the Queen. This way you shall be allowed to lead the army to your heart content, and I'll be able to show humanity that my choice in believing in you is the wisest.
From this day onwards you are forever entitled as the Divine General. A butler approaches the Queen with a black box, and from within the Queen removes a single golden ring with a blue gem in a sword shape on it, and takes two steps downwards calling to her. You may rise Divine General, and you must wear this ring till the day you die. May your life bring humanity the hope we seek from ancient times, that my dear, shall be the divine mission, you have been entrusted with. Aurora raises her right hand delicately and the queen places the ring on her thumb while smiling, as the other fingers are too short, since in the end, she's still a child and the ring doesn't have the same ability the rose ones do. Thank you for this honor, your grace, Aurora flawlessly bows while lifting her dress. Impressive. So young and so talented, surely Marty could learn a couple of things with this girl. She glares at him despite loving that child the most. Aurora noticing the gaze, the familiar emotion, and the person it was directed to she smiles softly and then voices out the sweet poison. I'll do my best so that the next successor, be he one of the princes or even the princess to not have to worry about war, granting he or her eternal comfortable life on the throne. That's the minimum I'll do for the blessing the queen has given me today. She stares directly into Lily's eyes seeing how satisfied of an expression the queen makes from such words. The queen then looks above her and says, may the celebration begin, at the end of the party I'll want a private conversation with you three. Without the need to specify who they are, the children lightly bowed at her, and everyone began drinking chatting, and eating. Go stretch that neck a bit Aurora. You stood an awfully long time bowing, and feel free to meet the other nobles. All right, Prince Julius. I'll be around, she smiles kindly and they separate from each other. She truly had quite the information network, one truly can't be too careful with Isabella Lackeys. It really was a long speech, wish she could have made a simpler one my neck was totally killing me, even though it truly wasn't. Aurora smiles due to silly thoughts. After all that talking it would be natural to be filled with people wanting to talk with me. But with this ring, it closed any possible wait to have any sort of negotiations. It was a bold move that I didn't expect a human to make. It's not often I meet a very smart human. Since I'm here might as well try the food, and tell about it to Aris when I can to have her feel jealous. A fine punishment for making me do all this work for her. It sounds like a great atonement indeed, Aurora could be seen smiling in a cute weight towards some desserts. Once she got close to a white cake with strawberries on top she thought. I wonder how delicious sister would say this is, if she got to try this cake, maybe would try to eat all of it, ending up with a stomach ache. You seem to be having fun Aurora despite being alone, a feminine voice approached from her right side together with the sound of something touching a fellow plate. No honorifics. I'm not lower than a rose head at this point. Aurora looks to the side and discovers the face of a beautiful mature woman worthy enough to be drawn in a painting. Greeting Princess Liliana. I believe this is the first time talking face to face. The princess takes a bite of a piece of the lemon cake blushing while savoring it. This is truly good, easily my favorite cake. Aurora who doesn't get startled easily becomes surprised as she imagined a similar expression and words coming out of Iris. You seem to be having fun yourself princess. Aurora smiled childishly to what the woman replies. It is on rare times like these where I get to relax and don't think about anything. Take another slice and meet me at that other room in the middle. I'll tell the guards I invited you. She walks off after grabbing another slice of the lemon cake. Sure, Aurora replies with a big smile, now to discover if this woman can be of any use. Year 5009 after the system day 17 of the moon season a steer village by the fountain. As Aurora walked through the streets of the village she notices a peculiar target whom she sneaks behind and speaks loud and clear. It's been a long time Elias. Upon hearing such words the girl turns around startled, meeting her guild adventure rival, and friend. Arara, what happened to your hair? The guard next to Aurora hearing that says in a harsh tone. It's Lady Aurora or Divine General. Elise feeling further surprised as this was a remote village. Thus the information would take a while to arrive. She did her best to bow while feeling nervous, and then seeing the girl behavior. Aurora places the hand on the right shoulder in front softly and says, it's alright. 
This one is a friend Sir Kriag, the royal guard nodded lightly upon such words relaxing his face. So how you been little Elise? Aurora smiles very kindly surprising her, as she used to be a lot more expressionlessly. I've been well, been helping your parents and grandpa while taking fewer quests from the guild, and... Am I allowed to give you a hug, or is that too much for a peasant to do? To those words, Aurora chuckles and says, I'm sure Sir Kriag can close the eyes briefly. Upon such words the muscled man turns around and Elise takes two small steps drowning in the girl's arms hugging her tight. I've been missing you too, a lot. We didn't even get to party together anymore, and Iris is busy at Tun Village dropping by very rarely. Sadly, we are both stuck with a lot of things. I'm currently the general of the army of His Royal Highness, Prince Julius as you probably know from my parents, and have been recently graced with a title by Her Royal Highness Queen Lily, so from this day onwards, I'll be known as Divine General, and will most likely be permanently at war whenever the successorship dispute ends, serving directly the successor, as for our friend Iris, I believe she's interested in opening a shop after her training is finished so she should have more free time than me when the time comes, you'll just have to be a little more patient. That sounds like a very arduous task. Will you be okay Aurora? Elise asks her with this innocent and cute looking expression with a hint of worry and unease. That makes her look painfully adorable. Someone has to do it, and since I have the talent to wage war, might as well use it for the benefit of the crown and the human race. Well said Lady Aurora. The guard turns round feeling prideful of her words. Aurora places the back of the hand hiding the lips letting out a chuckle, and then says, Thank you, Sir Kriag. Elise finds her behavior strange but doesn't mention it. Instead, she says, I suppose this will be a brief visit. Perhaps you're going to meet your parents next? How long haven't you seen them? Yes, I really don't have much time left. I even had to bring this amazing dress with me to make a little bit more time. It has been too long to remember. Since you're talented enough, I suppose that in itself is pretty freedom binder. Indeed, even now the Goblin King could be preparing to do an assault on my troops, though I'm not too worried. I left someone equally skilled in charge, they would surely have a bad time against her, but not as much as me. Aurora smiles with an eerie expression reminding Elise of the girl true colors that she had met before. Yup, now I understand Arara better. It took a long time, but I got there, that expression you wear rarely, must have been born within you so that your enemies could learn fear, after all the quests I've done, the beasts and the monsters I encounter never show fear for us, humans, they see us from above you know, you may be right Elise, we're probably the most limited race of them all in what comes to natural statuses, however, we are smart and we've learned how to be cowards, how to resist the strong and their claws, and now I'll make the humans learn how to fight and beat the strong, fairly speaking. I've recently slaughtered 300,000 goblins, so I'm already on a good path. The expression on Elise's face became extremely overwhelmed, as her mouth opened wide, while she became silent and amazed at the gigantic amount of creatures that died, and then without waiting for a reply Aurora added, Where are my parents? I'm running a bit low on time. The girl pointed to the left towards the potion shop where they work, and Aurora started moving that way while saying, keep growing stronger Elise, so one day in the near future we'll go back to quest together. To what the girl who heard it nodded lightly, silently and happily having just spoken casually with a famous figure of the human kingdom, perhaps the most influential figure. I'll surpass you soon enough Arara. Just you wait. As Aurora walked some meters towards the potion shop, one of the village guards noticed her from the hair color, and then looking at the long expensive dress approaches, he ran placing himself a bit further ahead than them. Aren't you Rosalind's daughter? What in the hell happened to you? How the fuck? He looked at her from top to bottom evaluating how expensive that attire was, and the perfect manner of how it fits. Silence peasant. In front of you lays the hope of humanity. The Divine General Aurora, belonging to the Honorable Army of His Royal Highness Prince Julius Lumen, the oldest sibling. Sir Kriag took a long sword from the scabbard and aimed it at the man while shouting, making everyone around gather creating a long circle of people. What's up with those cold blue eyes? Weren't they green? 
What in the hell happened to Rosalind's daughter, to Aris who froze my hand back then? He then spoke while kneeling on the ground, I apologize I believe I mistook her from someone I knew named Iris, your general looks very alike, but the eyes are truly different, please forgive me, I meant no harm. The man supplicated feeling no real remorse. Aren't you? Aurora places her finger below the cheek touching it lightly while thinking about who this person might be, to what she then says, after faking to have forgotten him. Aren't you Tyson the man who used to flirt and gross my mother Rosalyn out all the time? Cold sweat passed through the back of the man as he felt confused, nervous, and fearful, not understanding who this girl was, but she had nailed his identity in the worst possible way, also upon such words Sir Kriag took a few steps forward stepping between him and her, aiming the sword at the man just in case Aurora decides on a death penalty, as she has the authority to do so. My name is Tyson, and I didn't know Rosalind had a second daughter, from the D different A's, twins I guess. I've always loved your mother, and I've never done anything wrong to her, if flirting is a crime then I am a culprit, but so would be a lot of other men, who have tried it too, after all. She's very beautiful, he said while containing the tears inside of him, firmly believing that he was rightful like any fellow men, with a menacing and cold tone. Aurora speaks, is that so? Well, no matter. Get out of my way. I don't want to waste the little time I have on the likes of you. Tyson got up and ran leaving the ground a little wet, and then Sir Kriag sheathed the sword seeing as whatever the conflict had been it was now over. Is your mother so beautiful that he would actually attempt to prey on her? Aurora looks at him with the same cold eyes she was staring at Tyson making the man regret the question of what the girl coldly said. Yes, very much so. Come. She resumed the pacing and the crowd around made way for her to pass through. Some meters later Aurora notices a line of people waiting for their turn to enter the shop, to which she ignores and passes in front while holding her dress a little high to avoid dripping. As the people started complaining Sir Kriag punched the entrance wall causing a bang shutting them up, allowing the humans to notice the royal crest in his armor making them bow their heads. In fact, he could have just yelled, but used the wall to alleviate himself from the earlier pressure from the young lady. As soon as Aurora entered the shop closing it behind her, she stares around from left to right finding a balcony where cash and a potion were on it. Vicent who was startled talking to a customer, next of them she saw a wooden door, and further to the side shelves with different colored potions and a window which illuminated them, making it look like they shine by themselves. Without saying anything she lifts her dress once again walks, entering the wooden door which Vincent opened his mouth to shout but then refrained from doing so noticing the color of the hair resuming the sail. Upon entering she perceives something leaving it open and takes a few more steps forward. On the other side, she found two familiar faces who looked in awe at her. The mother not being able to hold it in spoke firstly gaining the initiative in the conversation. You look so beautiful Aurora. She then walked to her daughter while spreading her arms to the sides tearing up as she had not seen her since she was taken away to become a general. The father placed the potion he was enhancing softly on the old and dirty looking table, and approached both hugging them. It has been a long while my little general. How did the ceremony go? We received a letter from the prince about it, but sadly no invitation. I suspect that it was due to the place where the ceremony occurred. Really? Where did they take you, dear? She looks at mother who questioned her and says, the throne room. They made a little party there, it was an incredibly large room, from the queen words only Rizia the peasant hero was the other only lowborn that attended such a stage in a ceremonial way, and also where she received that title. Does that mean you received a title too? Yes, father, from this day onwards. I'm above any of the heads from the eight rose families in what comes to war alone, and outside I only respond to the king or queen, but since we're in the middle of a royal dispute, I still have some freedom. Therefore, today's a short visit, as I missed you both and wanted to see you before things get gruesome with the goblins, did you do something to them? What did they entitle you with? Did they force more lands or similar to you? Ah, sorry father, I'm now entitled as divine general. Upon the grace of Queen Lily, as for lands and the like, I will get a piece from every territory I conquer here onwards, 
which can be sold for money if you don't want to handle the lands. I'm really not interested in a feudal lifestyle, but depending on the amount of the lands you receive that may not be so bad, what do you think Rosalyn? Well, we're trying to have more children, so it would be a good way to not have to work all the time, and actually have a good future for our kids when they grow. Seems like you'll have to embrace the noble lifestyle father, Aurora mentions while teasing Luke then starts laughing making Rosalyn smile. Fine, fine if I must then so be it. But for that, you would still need to conquer those lands. Have you progressed in the territory or in any way? I recently slaughtered 300,000 goblins, so I could have held a new line, but I don't want a direct confrontation with them. My war style is irregular after all, which means I'll only strike when I know I'll win, and right now is not the precise moment to do it. Was that gigantic amount the reason why you were called? Mother shouts as further remains with a dumbfounded expression still processing the number. One of them. Perhaps the main motivation for the ceremony. Nonetheless, the Queen was extremely well informed, meaning there truly are spies on the three armies possibly from the Pink Rose family. Probably to ascertain everyone achievements and whose humans do the job better. Meaning that one of them has been keeping their eyes on you. How do you even know there's a spy? Because one of the spies is in this room hiding. But I don't know the reason why. Is the queen trying to prove that if I don't act the way I want she'll kill them? No, she already enslaved me with that title. And this spy entered the room after I did, meaning that it's not my parents but me, to keep their eyes on me. This could indeed be troublesome. Should I take the spy out? If I fake that I'm using magic only to show a new skill to them. I could lower the assassin guard and trap this strange presence. I know because I've been trying to improve the kingdom in a lot of ways, and all of them were somehow unveiled and told to her grace, in other words, there must be someone very talented always chasing me, or at least, when I go to important events, or talk with potential supporters. Just as the queen thought this Aurora girl is incredible, to think we were a step ahead of her, but in reality, she already knew about us. Time to step out for a bit, and recover my breath, the hidden human starts walking to the exit. If you ever need a break feel free to return home daughter. You know we're always here for anything you need. Thank you father, and mother hears a little something, she removes a folded paper from a side pocket hidden in the dress. This is, she looks at it confused while grabbing the paper, a recipe for a strawberry cake I ate in the throne room. It looked like something you could make next time I come home, to reward your one and only daughter, at least, till a new one is born. Aurora says a little louder while winking with the left eye as the presence feels close on the right side. Rosalyn understanding her intentions says, very well, if possible when you come for your birthday, I'll do it, a big one even. Thank you mother, you two are the best, but I must go now, send my regards to Mars and Joan. I didn't see them around, and also Leonor. Sure we will. They hug her one more time after they spoke in unison. Feeling the presence a bit further behind waiting for her, she whispers, Don't get in contact with you know who, till I know for sure it's safe, and I'm sorry for not being able to do more, nonetheless I'll do my best to win this war. With a similar tone, Luke says, Don't worry dear. We have powerful guards stationed at home from Prince Julius, so focus on what you have to do, and don't worry about how you look in the mirror, there's certainly a sword master around willing to teach you. Aurora smiled at the father clever words and said, I'm thankful, but still think that magic is what suits me the best. I'm going now, I expect a baby in a year or two, so work hard my dear parents. Upon hearing those last words they blush ending up looking at one another feeling further embarrassed, making the daughter smile and leave. I bet Iris would be super happy to have a younger sibling. I suppose I wouldn't mind an extra family member either, perhaps some atonement for supporting the corruption in her mind, even though my past self deemed it necessary. Artana is a troublesome plane, but for now. Still need to make this world a bit more livable first by exterminating the goblins, kind of expected the goddess Luna to become our enemy after that many deaths, if she hasn't it means she still has a couple of aces up her sleeve, unless she didn't notice it yet which would be weird.
Though maybe the gods can't see more than one perspective at a time, some laws to limit them perhaps, well time will tell. Let's see how far I can go against this world gods with my own abilities first meanwhile my fated partner becomes stronger. Year 5009 After the system day 4 of the flowering season at Tun village inside Ray House next to the dojo, a day after they arrived from the annual tournament. Sitting at a table with Iris, Ray speaks in a cold and serious tone. I'm proud of you, didn't expect a fourth place on the first try, though it feels like you haven't been completely honest with me, since the amount of mana you used during the entire tournament was abnormally high, and during our training sessions it would end a lot earlier, so have you been lying to me? With a nervous expression I reply, I haven't lied to you, my maximum mana is the one I showed, but I suppose there's a way for it to recover faster which I got to learn about it during the tournament, swear that's the truth. A way, as far as I know. There are only four ways, rest, meditate, mana potions, and mana recovery passive skill, which way was it? Did you cheat the tournament with mana potions? Even if you did I don't really care. But if your mana is greater than what you're supposed to have then instead of three years perhaps more. It could shorten by a lot. It is the fifth way. But sadly it's the only thing I'm not allowed to talk about. Since it's something that belongs to my sister Aurora. An item that helps with mana recovery. Yes, that's truly something worth being a secret. But does it mean that you can use it during our training? So you get to learn faster? Sadly I can only use it when sister around me. Oh, a rare skill. No. A unique skill shared by twins, meaning she's able to help you recover mana, or perhaps she simply injected some of it before every round. Then at the end both of you were mana exhausted, so you didn't have enough to beat Isabella, daughter. I smile kindly at him making him nod in agreement. I would love to tell you about whatever the other side of the mirror is, but I promised Aurora I wouldn't tell anyone about it. Please forgive me, Ray. In exchange I'll do my best to master everything you teach me no matter how long it takes. In that case, never mind what I said earlier, let's resume our training. So far I've been making you learn death dance which you executed nicely. But that was just the first step which involves rotating your body striking the enemy from his blind spot, that technique only works if you can pin the weapon with one of the hands before you execute the skill. Yes, it was thanks to Raphael's weapon being a long spear that I was allowed to try it. And even then he had time to dodge a fatal blow which he ended up healing. Correct, however, with just that step in your case it won't be enough as you have an element different than mine, when I use death dance. My sword injects thunder into the enemy weapon which is then conducted to the opponent's hand, eventually paralyzing them momentarily, allowing me to deliver a death blow, but it depends on the quantity since it can have different effects. Teacher element sounds amazing for a swordsman, every time you hit someone with a sword you can do that, I said with a happy expression as I'm enjoying reviewing the fights. Exactly, even though it took me a while to figure it out when I was younger. And of course, it was not necessarily a good thing, as by some reason it also conducted to my body. Eventually I maxed the resistance to it, something you should do too with yours. But in the future, for now, I want you to understand the basic concepts. Since you're done eating let's go to the dojo. Nothing like talking and demonstrating, especially for a dumb kid like you that learns faster that way. Hey, I'm not dumb. I've been doing my best learning all your theories, they're just hard concepts, or the teacher is just bad at explaining them. I avert my eyes from his and then runs at me, in order to, smack me as I bad mouthed him which I run for my life all the way to the dojo. Moments later we arrive inside it, and then he stops chasing me, giving me one of the hundred wooden swords he bought, which I take with a smile. Pesky student perverted teacher blondie oldie. As we stop trading insults our training swords start clashing, aim for my right waist. As I hear the teacher words my sword thrust in that direction, and then he death dances rotating his body aiming for my hip as I did to Raphael which I jump to the left side and block it. That's horrible, was that the best counter attack you could think of Blondie? You truly need to improve your fighting sense. It was a lot easier when I had the voices of the other witches telling me what to do. Um? 
Hey teacher what if we reverse it and you show me how it's supposed to be done, I'll learn faster that way. Ray light blows at a speed I can't dodge taking the hit on my right leg causing me pain, foo. If you don't develop a fighting sense and how to predict your opponents, then in real combat you'll be killed mercilessly, you must think with the little time you have left with your survival on the line as I keep telling you to do. You talentless brat. I grit my teeth knowing his right and take a normal stance spreading my legs a bit further from each other, while hitting his training sword which results in it being hit back. As we trade a few blows I start sensing a weak spot where he told me to hit earlier, and instinctively I allow my body to thrust, giving space for him to death dance at me, which I realize that he shows me the back of the body as he turns to deliver a hidden blow that goes in front of his waist. What if I? I try to kick him but end up slipping as I didn't retract my sword losing balance, tripping to the floor ending up sitting on the butt sitting, and see the slash pass above my head cleanly. Why are you on the floor, you stupid student? He shouts angrily while noticing my focused expression to what I reply. I think I figured something, but then when I tried to kick your exposed back, I lost my balance and also slipped. Seems like you're starting to use that bean brain of yours. He hits my head lightly with the training sword. Up. Again. He takes two steps back while I stand up and then we resume the blow exchange. Ideally is to fight without saying skill names, just allow your body to feel as you use them. You can even cancel their motion. For example, thrust in the same spot. As I hear the words I allow my sword to go deep missing while focusing on Ray body to what I see a one fourth turn and then a reversed attack comes out of it with a sword attack from the left side which I block in front of me, like this you fake a death dance, which works if you use it a couple of times making your opponent react to it, and then you surprise him. The most important thing about swordsmanship and it applies to any other weapon, is to allow your body and sword to be free of this system and in exchange, you'll get an infinite amount of skills whose names you won't need to memorize since your body will naturally know their every move. Thank you for the lesson. I then let out a smile filled with excitement while extremely grateful for the knowledge from his words. I stance myself once more and shout, one more. Pulling out a smile from Ray who resumes the striking. This body better last long enough to fully teach this kid. One with a will that doesn't break no matter how powerless and weak-minded I try to make her be with plenty of insults, certainly will persevere long enough to catch up to me one day, especially since her natural talent is for magic, with the creativity and imagination she's showed me before if used the same way for swordsmanship and later merging both. I want to see it. Once more I thrust into the weak spot slightly grazing Ray clothes as this time I noticed it earlier and my body allowed me to react faster to it, and then the death dance started, this time I pull my arm backward matching his first step, and then turn my body slightly to the right and attempt to kick at the butt, feeling like I just hit a wall of stone, but still allowing me to break his balance, following it with a strike to the head to repay for the time I was hit, which Ray ducks without looking behind, and then turns to me and fast strikes my head like using a mere wooden stick, with the most casual expression he starts laughing at me. Despite how much I want to see it, it'll still take a long while, that. That's not fair how did you dodge without looking at it? It's called sense, something that is developed through high intelligence status, it allows you to feel the things around you approaching, especially killing intent which is the most aggressive of them all. Is it something everyone can learn? I question curiously as it would be something super amazing to have. Can be. But doesn't mean everyone will get it. Requires a keen sense that is only acquired through a lot of fights to the death. At least, that's how it worked for me. Sense. I mutter about it curiously. I suppose it's like a sixth sense in a way. An abnormal one that feels the enemy intention. Not too different from the skill killing intent detector. What else can you sense with it teacher? My beloved swords. I can sense them from far away. Possibly due to spending my entire life with them, even sleeping with them. Just how obsessed with swords is he? Anyways enough chattering. Let's resume the practice. 
we strike our wooden swords against each other and spend the rest of the day practicing. Year 5009 After the system day 5 of the flowering season at Ray Dojo. Aren't we practicing more of the death dance? No, today we return to the basics you love so much. Eventually when you become better, learning a better version of death dance will be a lot faster. Fine, what am I going to learn? Let's see. I've made you run double what your mother did since you begun training. Right, I nod slightly having suffered from it. I taught you how to do a back dash, a vanish step, and death dance, so you could escape if anything ever happened while I wasn't around, or you find some overwhelming strong opponent in the tournament, even though you ended up unable to move, and you could have been killed if Isabella daughter wanted to. I hide my face in embarrassment for losing in such a one-sided way. What matters is that you're alive, as long as you never die, becoming stronger is a matter of time. He looks at me with a very serious expression reminding me of the few times my parents would get angry at me. I understand, didn't expect to be hit with paralysis, something I'll have to become resistant to. In fact, is it possible to become immune to everything? Wouldn't it be great if that was possible? Laughter echoed the dojo, to which he then voices out, if your enemy has a level 1 skill that poisons you, and you have a max level resistance, the poison will still affect you, but the damage and length will certainly lessen. In other words, having high levels will surely help. But teacher, I've read in Tales of Adani about a beast being immune to paralysis. It's just like I explained the resistance was a lot higher than the hero skill. Either that or the beast had a superior skill towards that status ailment. Status ailment? What's that? Basically what we've been discussing. Any skill that inflicts you with a negative effect. You're a witch. You should have a skill named blind. That is one of them and a very effective one during fights. I'm surprised teacher knows about witch skills. Let's just say I saved one in the past called Safira, but I haven't seen her ever since, not like she wanted to learn the path of the sword, so I didn't really waste time with her. Doesn't quite sound like it, but I'll leave it as it is. She does have a beautiful name. I smile while picking an interest in it. Well, the name comes from a blue gem that is very expensive. Oh, I actually haven't seen much about materials, money, and things. I've been busy with other stuff like farming fishing, and adventuring even. Fair enough, anyway we're deviating from the main subject. With your legs well trained, I watch him lower himself and grope my leg muscles making it ticklish to which I do my best to hold the laughter. He then says, I think they're good enough for the next stage of running. Eh? More running? When am I going to practice with the sword? Don't complain blondie I've already taught you a bit more than your mother did, but your body is too young, the base is lacking. Without it, it'll eventually break down wasting all my effort. I let out a sigh upon hearing such words. Even though I said that it doesn't mean it'll be a normal type of running. Huh? Isn't running, running? Come along, he goes outside the dojo and I follow through. First you cover your feet with mana, then your legs and don't allow it to go any higher than that. Status warn me only when my mana is running low. Notice, order confirmed. I do as he says which is easy as I've practiced mana controlling with further plenty of times. Good. If only you had that talent for swordsmanship you'd be peerless, but you don't so bases it is. Now you'll have to learn how to walk while focusing an intense amount of mana on the legs without letting go of it. A smile surges in his expression. I'll turn you into a magical swordsmanship user. As soon as I take the first step the mana vanishes inside my body surprising me, but I could hold it easily on a weapon with mana coating. What's the difference? The sword isn't alive, but you are, and mana is too. A form of energy, master it and you'll be able to take a step further towards surpassing me. As I haven't mastered the skill mana condensing which needs a second layer of mana below the outer one, he then starts laughing while heading to the house. Fine. Just you wait. I'll get this mastered in no time. I shout loudly ending up alone. Then I take a deep breath and start pouring mana in my legs. Once I have enough a step forward is then taken making all the mana disappear. I don't understand why does it disperse. Maybe the amount I'm using is too much? I attempt to take another step forward with less mana, once I do. Most of it disperses into the ground making me lose it. Alright. 
a little bit remained around 10 out of 50. I guess I'll have to control a soft tour in the beginning, and then once I master this amount, I'll try with a higher one. I smile happily and excitedly at this new training which is proving to be rather fun and challenging. To think it would be easier to mana coat objects than our own body. I suppose that since the weapons are made with soul stones that they become more susceptible to receive energy, and they're also kind of not alive. This time around, I charge about 10 mana in each leg making a clear blue out layer around them and start walking very, very slowly. Seems like 10 mana is as far as my talent with this method goes. I wonder though what's this supposed to do? Noticing a tree not too far away, I walk closer to it and upon reaching it I punch it with a normal outer layer of 10 mana causing the buck to go slightly inwards. Then I punch one more time without relying on any layer causing a less powerful reaction in it. Mana layer increased the damage to the bark. But what if I spend more mana? I guess it would just cause a wider hole in the tree, and the teacher mentioned a second layer. I'll need to master this outer one first. Through repetitive walking attempts, I exhaust my mana falling on the ground full of sweat. I'm starting to take a grasp with walking while feeling the mana running outside my body. 20 mana is the max I can control for now. Next to me, I hear the sound of a door closing and notice Ray who looks at me. Are you mana exhausted? Yes, totally out of it. I smile while laid down looking up to him who seems happy. Good once you recover it go back to practicing it. In a year you should be able to handle at least half of it. It took me a lot longer, but with your talent. For magic, I believe that much will be enough. Ray starts laughing while leaving towards the usual pub where he spends afternoons drinking. 65 days later in the 70th of the flowering season at night I hear a voice that wakes me up. Notice, skills have been received from Aurora, recommended to go inside the mirror. I wonder what happened. Mirror, I get up and go through it appearing on the other side soon after. As soon as I enter that plane an oppressive cold aura made of my own element surrounds my body. Notice, status synchronization updated. Notice. Status is evolving to a unique tier. Notice, due to the adorable witch existence two extra skills from the goddess have been received. Divine sealing. Divine connection. Notice, the properties of the Babel class are cursing the blessed skills. Notice, mana being depleted at fast growths. Adorable witch assistance required. Yes slash no. Yes. Help me adorable. Of course, master. Leave it to me. I start to feel a considerate large mana amount from the ritual that has lasted since the day she awakened filling me and then a mechanical different voice resounds in my mind. Notice, profane connecting has been successfully transformed. Notice, I have successfully evolved into a unique tier. I'll be reconfiguring the screen from here onwards while helping with the blessed skills. A voice, who are you? My body remains expressionless as I currently am stuck with the pressure of mana. Notice, your skill has taken over a connection with the system of this world. As such that is who I am. I didn't even know this place had such an existence. Well do your best. I'm counting on you. Notice, leave it to me almighty Babel witch. Why would you call me almighty? Aren't you a greater existence than me? Notice, this is your soul world thus you're above me. My own world. Notice, soul manifestation has successfully converted, you will now be able to create things with it. However, it requires a large amount of soul which you do not currently own. Notice, a profane connection has been established with all the eight witches completing the Enneagram, however, not currently usable, requires awakening. I understand, I'll wait till sister finds me some, and I'll do my best to awaken soon. But being able to transform my world it will sounds very enjoyable. I could make a great place for my family and friends. Notice, profane ceiling has been altered successfully. With such a strong ceiling power, not even my sister would dare meddle with me. Not like Aurora would anyway. But someone as strong as her could be sealed away if necessary. Notice, endless growth, cap, and awakening have transformed successfully retaining their names but becoming solely yours. As soon as the voice finishes the aura around me subdues and I regain full control of my body, and then I walk around while feeling my mana recharging quite fast. 
the power of love was it, adorable which sure has cute ideas. In front of me, I discern a blue-haired girl in the middle of the circle that seems to be abnormally focused on something not noticing me. Adorable. I shout at her and she stares back at me halting what she was doing, Master Iris. As usual, she gets up and glumps me making us both fall on the snow while being embraced in her arms. Like I promised I'm back. I smile happily while gently patting her hair. It seems like everything was successful, to think must I interrupt her and say, just Tyrus is enough we're family, and you need a name, I thought very hard on one since I met you. In fact, a name for all of you, and yours shall be Anastasia, and title. Well there's only one title that could fit someone like you. The adorable witch, status, Anastasia. The adorable witch, class. Which master, Iris Health, 1,171,170, one mana, 3,700-3,700, parameters, the master ones, titles, the master ones, skills, the master ones, conditions to awaken, receive a flower from the master, tears instantly ran down her eyes followed by loud crying as she was overjoyed and couldn't help herself but cry, there there. Everything's alright Anastasia, it seems I'm a step closer to awakening the other seven witches, though I still have a long way to go still. After a while, the blue-haired girl after regaining her composure says, Are you having fun learning swordsmanship? Yes, teacher A is overpowered. I'm currently trying to improve in the control of mana with my body, so I came to this world to replenish it. Mas are, I mean. A flustered expression appeared on her face as she did her best to call me by my name, Iarisu. What I want to say is, that I've been unlocking some skills for you, and I've released the last witch's seal as a result. Their seal? What do you mean with that? Before I met you I was the ritual mastery. Once you learned that skill, the seal that was locking me was released, as such. I've been doing similar for the leftover ones, which in total counting with me, make eight. Interesting. That means the max of sisters I'll have are eight, well it does match the Enneagram, so you kind of already knew it. I smile happily and then push her away softly so we can both sit on the snow. Once we do we resume the conversation. Let us have a look, status. Notice, status currently disabled, it'll take a while till I finish configuring it please be patient Babel Witch. Understood, just Tyrus for you two is enough. You've been with me since the beginning, after all one way or another at least. Notice. Understood Iris. I currently can't see that information, so what skills did you unlock for me? Even though you're still far from awakening, I've used internal information to bypass a few of your future skills therefore I've unlocked two Babel skills, they'll be available to you once the class level goes a bit higher. Well if I can't use them might as well wait for when I get to see them. Yes. That's without a doubt one option. Meanwhile, you train with that sword master, I'll be starting to unlock the skills of your class so that you don't need to spend skill points. She places her hands on both cheeks checking how hot they are. That does sound like a plan, I currently have a lot to think about with all the changes that happened today as well as the training I must undergo, it'll take quite a while till I'm able to put everything to good use I suspect. The new skills that the eight witches alongside your disgraceful cursed soul are especially dangerous and shouldn't be used lightly, can bring big consequences to this world, what should I do related to them? I think Marcia. Her face becomes super red with all the mistakes making her look down to the snow. Iris should first grow up a bit more so that one day you have a strong magical and intellectual base. In other words, growing up will help. Teacher Ray did say something similar, how my base was lacking and that overdoing it could end up into losing everything. I looked to her blue eyes noticing they're darker than Aurora ones and then at the snow where she's starting at. I grab some of the snow with both hands and place a bit of each in her cheeks to help her cool down from all the embarrassment Anastasia must be feeling to the point of almost looking like she'll have a fever. Ear Iris hands on M my cheeks, ah. She lets out a small shout and faints on the snow. I burst laughing loudly at the situation with all my heart and then let myself fall behind on top of the fluffy ground. Ah, it truly has been quite the trip to this day. 
I'll do my best to grow as powerful as I can to obtain my wish, to be truly happy, as soon as I finish saying that a bunch of different tones resounds in my mind, the eight of us will do our best to make your wish come true, I smile happily and then get up, I'll be returning now and keep on training, I'll drop by every now and then to pay you a visit and replenish mana, take care of them meanwhile Anastasia. The girl goes to a sitting position and then changes to one kneeling where she places the left knee forward, the left arm on top of it facing her right hip, and lowers her head, I'll be waiting, Iris, I smile cutely at her and then leave towards the mirror, upon reaching it a similar yet different mechanical voice resounds in my mind, notice, status has been configured successfully and to avoid the mess from before, I've resumed everything and split it into some parts thus from now on. Think about what you wish to see and it'll appear, due to the unique tier it's also cost free. That's insane, great work status, thank you for all the support you've been providing me, notice, with pleasure Iris, let's see. Skill points, skill points, too. Oh, I understand, yes this will certainly make things a lot easier, show me the skill list in total. Babel Witchcraft Skill Tree. Actives. Destiny Cards. Once per day can use a random card out of a 22 deck that will bring a catastrophe into the world for a limited time or till a condition is met, grave consequences. Dark alchemy, crafting potions with limited effects and that only last for so long, starts at 10%, 0, 5% per level. Mana shield, 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level. Drain HP, absorbs 1 horsepower per minute from enemies around healing itself, plus 1 per level. Decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle, or the area itself, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Curses. It requires casting time, the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Delirium, makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Mute, makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Blind, makes it so that the vision for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Deafen, makes it so that the hearing for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Taste, makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Smell, makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level, paralysis, paralyzes a random part of the body, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level, fear, induces fear towards the target, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level, confusion, causes confusion towards the target, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level, rituals, require spending mana to create a magical circle, needs tremendous amounts of mana, can accumulate every day, memory loss, makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level, sleep, makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep, 0.25% chance of success, 0.25% per level. Snow falling, due to ice element snow will fall. Everywhere that snows will be RS mana territory, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Cursing objects, a random curse will be applied in an object, 0, 25% chance of success. 0, 25% per level. Taint, it'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magical barrier, 
defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier, detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Babel arts, grimoire possession, links oneself with the grimoire to use pandemonium skills, may affect personality while in use. Grimoire announcing, unlinks oneself with the grimoire, pandemonium skill, unlearned. Pandemonium skill, unlearned, pandemonium skill, unlearned. Passives, Babel mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%. Per level, may affect personality. Grimoire mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1%. Per level, may affect personality. Witchcraft, increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1%. Per level may affect personality. Curses mastery. Increases curse chance to activate by 0.25% per level. May affect personality. Rituals mastery. Increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25% per level. May affect personality. Dark alchemy mastery. Increases alchemy chance by 0.2% per level. May affect personality. Magic control. Increases specified proficiency by 0.25% per level. Magic attack. Increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic defense. Increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic knowledge. Increases intelligence by 1 per level. Charm. Increases charm by 1. Attracts generally the opposite gender. 1 per level. MP absorption. If damaged by an enemy magical skill heal MP by 0.25% of its total mana cost, 0.25% per level. Fire mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Water mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Earth mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Air mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Nature mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Poison mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Acid mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Ice mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Explosion mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Lightning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Spirit mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Summoning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Light mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Dark mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Time mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Space mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. I want to acquire magic attack and magic defense passives. Notice. Skills successfully learned. Status updated. I suppose the normal voice lines from before still match. That's cute and familiar. Notice. Only in this world can I keep speaking freely, since in the other world the system is something else and I lack privileges, it can't be helped, which means you're partly my skill and something else entirely, maybe someone that belongs to this world alone. Notice, a system of sorts, well that is fine, as long as you're on our side, you're more than welcome to be part of this world. I take a step further entering the mirror appearing outside the dojo near a tree where I was before. I can't cope with the magic and mirror side as I'm right now, so I'll just keep on training with Ray and surpass him. After that, I feel like awakening will be a lot closer to happen. Speaking of which, is teacher class an awakened one perhaps? After charging some more mana I allow myself to take a step forward, slowly but surely, after multiple times while doing my best each time till I run out of mana and end up feeling double the fatigue from before. I might be able to recover mana, but my body can't keep up with it. I really do have a long way till I have a strong enough base. No point in rushing either could cause permanent damage that the healing of this world wouldn't solve.
the destruction of the mana veins we have inside ourselves or even get mana sick from having more mana than my maximum capacity which in the mirror world is easy to achieve if I'm not careful. First weeks were lessons by Ray teaching me about many ways where we humans could die other than age, even though most of them were either natural diseases or some caused by insects, beasts, and monsters. Survival of the fittest is what teacher calls this world. He fought a lot of enemies, but most of the time was obsessed improving swordsmanship, to the point of sleeping and never letting go of the two swords. I was even surprised he lent them to me for the tournament. I wonder if this was the training Sylvia also went through, my teacher doesn't talk much about that woman, since the day she abandoned the training for marriage, it was a shame as the talent was the real thing, and it had been a great investment. Having never met anyone else equal, what Ray referred as one in a million talent which in this world it would easily mean one human per generation. With teacher elderly age with the small possibility of him dying, I'm the last chance of succeeding all his work and reaching the place where he wanted to be, I don't know if I'm as talented as Alicia who became a hero sort of recently, and has probably been sleeping and living with swords, but I'll do my best, be it either in the path of the sword or on the path of magic, if I can, I'll master both and surpass both the sword master Ray and the elemental master Ryan owner of the magic institute. Together they make up the two great prodigies of our century, both excelling their own paths, and the one I wish to walk lies beyond surpassing both, once I'm done with teacher A, I'll open a shop to help parents with money, being noble by name, doesn't mean we have the financial resources we'd like, and it seems mother despite her age is still trying to get at least one more sibling which I can't wait to meet, so the more money the merrier, after that if I'm successful, I'll either go adventuring or ask for lessons at the Magic Institute, with the recommendation letter. It should be fairly easy to get it. Hey Blondie, what are you still doing on the ground, trying to catch a cold and die from sickness? Upon hearing these words I get up from there and face Ray, who looks rather wasted, been drinking again. Sometimes you just do what you got to do. And in my case is drinking merrily. He starts laughing while taking tipsy steps almost falling, and despite that Ray doesn't use the swords as a walking stick. In fact, often would his face fall on the floor getting himself hurt than dirtying the swords. I really don't get your love for those two weapons. They are. He does a hiccup and then says, special beings, all of them, if you can listen to them, and another one, there's nothing you won't be able to cut. Are you perhaps admitting that you can talk with them? teacher, I made a puzzled expression trying to understand what he means. I wish I could. To learn their story. And the truth of my demise. He falls beating his face on the ground. Ark. Here we go again, I carry him inside to the bed on the first floor of his small house. I then pull the linens up after placing the swords carefully next to him as he has nightmares if they're too far. Believe it or not. Like this, you should be fine. Have a good rest teacher. Teacher often while drunk talks about his demise, more specifically the reason why he became a fallen noble, but sadly, I haven't got the chance to know the truth. I feel like Ray doesn't know it either. What could have possibly happened that would make him go so low that he'd lose such an important rank? I stare at him quietly with curiosity. Year 5009 after the system day 72 of the flowering season at the entrance of the dojo two people could be seen seated. So Iris you're saying that there's someone who considers himself to be the strongest assassin in the world? Yes Master Ray, he's been tasked to keep me safe even though I'm with you, so I don't really feel in danger. That Isabella woman is pretty delicate with her inaudible steps? I wonder just how good is this man you're talking about? I smile happily at that and then respond, can't be helped teacher, there's always someone stronger out there as the world is quite vast, the reason why I want to be the strongest one, at least motivation and a firm goal you don't lack, he starts laughing while looking at the sky above us, I have a request teacher eh, I look at him with a serious expression which he takes notice gazing lower at me, what is it blondie, once I surpass you, you must promise to quit drinking, and tell me how you became a fallen noble, I say as seriously as possible to what he replies rather calmly, sure, that's a good reward, even though I expected you to ask for my swords, 
I guess you're nicer than I thought. I start laughing and after a while, I take a quick look around me eventually gazing at my teacher. I could never steal your precious swords from you, plus I want to master one-handed swordsmanship, I need one of my hands always free. You do? For what? He asks curiously staring at my open hand. Since my left arm is slightly stronger than my right one, I lose the sword with it, and a magical weapon on my right one is the style I believe that could fit me the best. Hum, I suppose in the future, I could buy you a short staff to increase your magical attack. It also helps with conducting your mana easier. A staff. Maybe I could use it to smack people's heads the way you did on mine the other day with the sword. As soon as I finish we stare at each other bursting with laughter. Ah. You're really a foolish girl Iris. I might indeed be a fool, but at the very least, everything I do is with my happiness in sight. That's the reason you wish to become stronger? To be happy? Yes, protecting my happiness and for that, I'll certainly need an overwhelming power. How about you teacher, why did you wish to become stronger? Back then my noble family fell off the rose top 8 due to the loss of a great investment where my parents were tricked by the head of the grey house, as such, instead of buying random things, they decided to fully support me with everything they could, ultimately giving me a strong base which I started refining. But of course, even then I wasn't strong enough and the world made sure to show it to me, as such, things that I'll tell you in the future happened, and my family fell off the charts. I understand, to think someone tricked his parents, but looking at how old he is the parents must already be dead, in other words, the current head is that person's successor, so not my place to meddle. I get up and charge my legs with mana, I can now hold 40 of it as I walk, and upon doing so, Seems like you've been improving slightly faster than I expected you to do. Keep it up Iris, walking is the first real step babies take after crawling. It sure is like that. As I spend my mana slowly with each step Ray tells me something rather interesting. That sister of yours is rather eccentric. The speech she made recently, I received a copy of it. And I couldn't help but wanting to fight some goblins after reading it. My sister's speech. Hadn't that been a long time ago before the annual tournament even? Apparently she made a new soul one to the great masses instantly spurring a lot of humans' inner emotions. Dare to know about it? Of course, but read it for me, as I'm currently having a tough time handling mana. He began laughing and then started reading it for me. They say destruction only comes at the hand of the powerful. Thus the strong can't help but extend their hands and break those around themselves. Do not forget that through the entire story of this world, it is mentioned that the weakest can't help but cower in fear, for when those who are born superior decide to tear us apart, and steal from us everything we have, we end up with nothing but the darkness of death and the poverty of our souls. We've faced every possible defeat before the system was implemented, as the different races were born unequally, but even then ours was since birth inadequate and utterly weaker compared to those around us, he senses my mana going out of control sometimes while reading it. That was quite something teacher eh? I say rather excited and surprised by the words used. It was the beginning but it was an amazing start that would instantly make us humans feel extremely weak, which in a way is not absolutely right, since not all of us are this powerless. It was a manipulative speech right from the beginning to pull the dark side of humans out. I then defended my sister's speech. That would be true if there existed a human capable of defeating every other being on their own, but from what teacher A told me, that was not the case, he started laughing remembering some peculiar opponents. Well perhaps she's not absolutely wrong, he notices a happy smile appearing on my expression as soon as his words end, still that sister of yours is pretty charismatic, aside from already being a good leader. Perhaps even good enough to rule the kingdom. Aurora the Queen. That would be quite strange as she's not really into nobility. Dislikes them even. Yet she's become one. Isn't that rather contradicting Blondie? That was the only way she could become the general of the army due to social class strife. So it can't be helped. The truth is not that one my dumb student. He chuckles confusing me. What do you mean by that? The great existence Rizia. A peasant who never stopped being one, in other words, Aurora chose to ascend to nobility, 
my mana goes out of control and then I retracted stopping the training as I can no longer focus. You have a long way to go, Iris, if it was in the middle of a fight and someone told you something like this, you would no longer be able to control your mana resulting in your death, that's not part of the bases I taught you. Apologies teacher, but why the hell did she become a noble if that wasn't necessary? I shout rather angrily startling my teacher who didn't expect these emotions to make an example for further peasants, showing that they too can ascend in the future to come, marking this a new era to fight the social classes gap, and possibly invoking the desires of such peasants to join her army, allowing the Prince Julius to become the ruler. My emotions instantly go back to normal and I resume my training. I understand she's aiming for some sort of equality towards all humans, once I start controlling my mana once more I hear something unpleasant. You could perceive it like that. Yes, that girl is very odd, you should be wary of her. With a subtle coldness spreading from my gaze I take a few steps facing my teacher and then my lips move. She's my sister, I won't tolerate disrespect towards my family. It seems like my taunting worked. A cold emotion is what you need to control that Tora easier, you just took four steps barely losing any mana, he laughs while pointing at my legs, plus it was just a prank, I don't really care about a child, the only kid that is of my concern is you, my successor, also you're a weakling if I'd like I could bad mouth your entire family and friends, and you wouldn't be able to lay even a finger on me, you are trash, now go back training so at least in the future you might have a chance to talk with me in such a tone, he laughs the entire conversation throwing it away to which I let it be since his words are rightful and I can't do anything about it. With a low tone I reply coldly, just you wait, I'll master this in no time and show you who the weak one is. Yes, exactly, that's the spirit, don't forget that emotion while you train this it'll help you a lot in the future. Finding the person trigger is easily the hardest thing, but to think hers would be such a simple one, with this, as long as she cannot be happy, she'll go a lot faster. Ironically it's the opposite of her wish, a coincidence perhaps? No that can't be so, this world works in a unique way, in other words, her true nature, a second one, ice element which is essentially cold, that could be the case. Both siblings seem to be rather interesting. Year 5009 After the system day 76 of the flowering season Inside the dojo a girl training could be found. Make sure you always take a step forward when you wave the sword down. It'll not only increase your range but also allow your body to create more strength. Make sure you put your back into it and keep using both hands. Your arms need to grow equally strong. Teacher sure picked quite the heavy wooden sword. He bought a lot of different ones, some lighter, shorter, larger, and he's making me wave all of them for a while now. It looks to me that your body reacts the best to a sword held by two hands, which is a shame since you don't want such swordsmanship. Sadly, to be able to excel in both I'd need to be able to retain my right hand free, but I can still learn how to wield a short sword with both hands even if I end up using only one. The path I thought for you is harder than Sylvia's one since she focused on swords like I did, as such, I've been making you a physical and magical training, if you use the mana you've been training for the past days in your leg when you take a step forward, in fact, try it and see for yourself the difference, a path only for myself, that sounds rather interesting, but will it allow me to surpass both teacher and your student, yes, of course. If you manage to learn both that is, it will also require a longer time, but then you'll at least have a great base which you'll be able to improve on your own through fighting and training. I'll take on your challenge then. I charge 100 mana on my left leg while raising the sword above my head with the tip directed backward and take a step forward while allowing it to slash in front of me. Once the feet fall I feel incredibly stable with my mana serving as a foothold and the sword curves without any issue. My teacher then starts clapping lightly and then says, Now imagine if you use mana coating on your hands and weapon while doing that. In the weapon I understand. But what would the hands change? Well look at your own. Upon his words I stare at them noticing their sort of red slightly swollen. Would an outer layer of mana enable them to conserve the skin properly? Of course, but it would also allow the sword to not slip, 
and even if an enemy parried it, would allow you to become able to grab it tighter without hurting yourself in the process as long as the mana lasted of course. Let's see what I can do about that. I pour mana on my hands, left leg, and then restart the stance. Once I resume it everything flows with great control losing a bit of the energy I used to cover everything. Is there any point in not just using all this mana for a spell to defeat the opponent rather easier? Upon my words, Ray's eyebrow went up and then he grabbed a wooden sword. Magic and weapons exist equally. What you can do with one thing, can't do with the other, and using mana to coat yourself, if you have good control you don't waste it but by turning it into an element or a skill, you lose the entirety of the value, as such, it can be said that this hard path allows the user to have their mana last a lot longer, especially since we recover it quite slow, he covered his hands and legs, with mana different than mine as I notice something strange in his and he does the same stance and the motion I did, and as soon as the sword finishes the trajectory he stops it firmly, and a snap sound resounds the dojo, ah, what was that? I made the sword slide through wind splitting it in two momentarily, and the space behind it that was left behind the motion was probably the sound of it, at my max speed I can even create a wind wave without relying on the wind element, not entirely sure about the theory behind it, but I believe it is the wind propagating and accelerating at such a speed that sound comes from it, that's simply incredible, I go in awe with the demonstration finding myself incredibly motivated to pursue his teachings, it doesn't quite matter how many statuses we have Aris if we can't grasp and use them properly, this world status shows our potential and maximum amount of it with numbers, for example, having 1000 strength, but doesn't mean he can use that much without proper training, same for everything else, from what you told me, you spent most of your points if not all, in wisdom, in other words, you should now be able to sense the lack of control you have when applying it directly to your body, in other words, I shouldn't just focus on what status numbers show me, but instead train myself to excel at the different parameters it has, and try to surpass them, well I don't think surpassing them is possible since they are the current max, in your case with the titles you got, might be already more than what your body can handle, you'd need quite the blessings from the gods to reach such a stage, he started laughing loudly while imagining it, I have a few, but I don't know if any would help with that, as soon as I tell him that he stops laughing and looks seriously at me with some doubts running inside his mind, what do you mean by that Iris, now to review the names, status cursed skills cursed, unidentified skill, mirror level 17, soul manifestation, endless growth, endless cap, endless awakening, profane sealing, profane connection, from what I can see in the personal data type of skill, I have endless growth, endless cap, and endless awakening, the wooden sword falls off his hand while he makes a dumbfounded expression, this girl, she can grow endlessly, is this the reason why everything I teach her is learned faster than when I self-learned and self-discovered? Not really sure what the other two would do but they should contribute to her in some way. In fact, how did she get three different blessings? Well doesn't matter too much, as long as she can succeed me that's everything I care for. Don't be lazy blondie, keep training because you still have an 80 year gap to close till you can reach me, he starts laughing provoking me. I'll close such a distance in no time, I shout angrily while resuming the training with a determined expression focusing on my body and mana, which allows Ray's smile to go past unaware. Get stronger fast kiddo, the enemies of humanity won't wait for you to get stronger, I might have to pay a visit to the front lines soon, a dangerous scarring could be seen on his old wasted face, the killing pressure doesn't really make it easier to focus teacher. Upon hearing my complaint he leaves the dojo without saying anything, leaving me to my own training, seems like Ray was upset with something, was it something I said or did, probably one of his old memories striking again, I channel mana through my body and start taking a few steps while maintaining a cold composure after warming my body a bit I start waving my sword the way he taught me, after 30 mana slashes, a familiar voice resounds in my mind, notice, the skill sword posture has been acquired, system, the title swordsmanship has been received, system, 
the title sword series has been received. Surprised I only received the title now after training for so long. Perhaps for having three skills with sword name in it, would certainly make some sense. I've run out of mana, but I don't feel too tired yet. Guess I'll keep on waving the sword. I can at the very least keep improving my posture with the sword even if I don't use mana. Not sure what the skill will give me, but by the name some sort of control or stability which will certainly be of help. After a few hours of carefully waving the sword without spending any mana, I take a few steps to the side and allow myself to lay on the wooden floor of the dojo to rest as the spot I was is sweaty. Soon after Ray walks in and stares down at me, too tired to walk again? I should be able to but the floor feels good. Once my words entered his ears he chuckled, then stared at my body parts noticing something, you should let your hands rest and place them on cold water or something similar, it'll help with the swelling, I'll be away for a few days, don't stop training though seeing as you're already doing it on your own, I suppose you won't be lazy. I stare at him surprised, didn't know you took notice of it, as to be expected of my teacher, he chuckles at such words and makes a serious expression. Don't be slothful, it would only delay the time for you to learn new things. Yes yes, I understand, I promise to do my best, and I'm keeping my word. I smile proudly at myself and my exhausting efforts. Good, I'll be back later, he turns his back on me and leaves without saying anything else. Take your time teacher, and be careful. In preference avoid drinking any alcohol you find on your way. I shout happily while waving my hand as he goes. Quite the serious expression he had in him, I wonder what's bothering him. Outside the dojo, Ray's swords start tingling in his hip, almost like asking for something out of the owner. Realizing this he moves towards the back of the house further north from it. Yes, yes, take it easy. I can feel it too, a curious gaze of someone strong placing himself on a drawing stance after reaching a far enough distance from the house and the dojo a low old voice is then heard, unique skill sense, a blue mana aura expands around and ends up allowing Ray to notice a presence, seems like the kid wasn't lying, to think there truly was someone rather talented spying on us, or rather protecting her, it seems my instincts have grown rather dull, a dark hooded man appears in front of Ray staring at him silently, I see, he really does have a good pressure to him, but nothing that I can't slice in half if necessary. The swords start shaking making the old man excited, so you're the Omar kid, why are you following my student around? I was tasked to keep her alive no matter what, fallen noble Ray, I believe our interests align in that sense, he focuses on Ray swords who look are acting weird for mere weapons, reminding him of when the red book teeth shook a bad omen is it, I suppose this ain't a man I'm meant to fight either, first that girl Aurora and now this old man, this world truly is filled with talented humans, a faint smile crossed his face which remained hidden beneath the shadow of the black hood, with a cold tone Ray imposed on Omar, as much as what you say is true, I would still be rather happier if I didn't have a pair of eyes permanently looking at us, plus I'm more than enough to keep that girl safe, that doesn't compete for you to decide, I will end my mission when I'm ordered to do so, the man clicks the tongue then vanishes into stealth, running away, a wee, unique skill 7 sword arts, 4th move, the thunder, upon unsheathing the sword a bolt of lightning projected from the sword falls where Omar had just been before going into stealth, after waiting a bit for some sort of response, Ray sheaths it back again after spitting on the floor, the guy is quite fast at running away and hiding, this is why I don't like assassins, freaking cheap assholes, Omar who had escaped barely in time having the rope sleeve on the right arm burnt to charcoal looked at the old man from afar, what a scary human, it seems like the one has found quite the teacher, he smiled happily keeping himself in silence to not hint his location at Ray. Upon returning close to the dojo as he didn't want anything to do with Ray, Omar ended up realizing that the girl was once again missing, this would happen from time to time which would let him dumbfounded every time, but due to the existence of the old man, entering the dojo was without a doubt off limits, as setting foot in a training area constantly used by a master, 
wouldn't allow his life to be spared even with stealth, the tiniest creak the wooden floor or wall could do, the motion of the door or window opening, and of course the unique skill sense which allowed to find prey, were all deadly signs to stay away. These disappearances by the one should be the reason why it took a while to find her with the item. Is she perhaps able to make her body vanish? Even as a stealth user I know for sure that's not the case, at least not 100%. While this skill can in ways be found cheap, it has plenty of weaknesses. Whatever she uses, feels to be on another level, almost like a higher plane of existence. Wait a minute, the prophecy says the one will lead us into a new world. Does she have something like that? No. That would be impossible, no human would have a realm of their own. At best they could own a dimensional space due to the item bag, and that doesn't allow living species to be inside unless they're already dead. That place she's meant to take us is already being paved by the war, soon we'll control the territories of the goblins and get a place for our allies to live in. It'll be a bit hard to protect Iris if I keep losing track of the child this way. A few moments earlier when Iris noticed Trey leaving. I take the chance to get up and enter the mirror, once on the other side I bury my hands in the snow. Ah! This feels truly pleasant, can almost feel my hands recovering from the swollen and calluses, I make an aroused expression at the pleasure this sensation proportionate my mind getting my cheeks slightly blushed. Their space around me looks really small with all these void walls enclosing the space due to my soul being small, status soul. Soul, 1754, should be around a kilometer per thousand soul quantity, at least from what I can tell. It's hard to calculate by eye alone. I lay on the ground burying my face in the fluff of the snow cooling down from all my thoughts. Just from doing this alone every time I come around. My cold and ice resistance skills tend to increase some levels, even if they're getting kind of slower nowadays, and my shorts and short sleeve shirts not being good for cold. It's very strange how there are only piles of snow everywhere. I'd expect some trees or even stones. But there's truly nothing else. Iris, Anastasia. I take my face off the snow looking at her with a red face from the cold. What do you think you're doing? You'll catch a cold like that? She shouts at me while forcing me to dress her black robe with a white enneagram star on the back. Not that long ago I bought ten of them for myself. The eight witches, an aurora to wear. It was their idea to make us all feel part of something. Even though we're already part of this circle. I look at it, and then above it. A white enneagram star with a circle around it on top of the snow. Or rather, the drawings it doesn't have any other white fluff. That emptiness is what composes the symbol. A light blue aura extends all around glued itself to the void walls, the bigger my soul the more this aura expands, with the continuous mana being provided by Anastasia, speaking of which, I push some of the snow off my body and get up, then my eyes gaze upon her, any notice of the other witches? Without intending to I end up voicing myself with a tone of authority, and due to that the adorable witch bows lightly with a serious expression in front of me replying in a calm tone, I've only spoken to them about random subjects, as they all anticipate your great awakening, Babel Witch, Master Iris, she stares at me unfazed, is Iris okay? Master feels a little conflicted today, feeling a bit flustered from my own tone and words, I walk towards the circle sitting on the spot that was decided to be mine, the one furthest to the left, and then I signal with a kind smile for Anastasia to sit next to me which she quickly does, plus once she's close by we hold hands. If I'm not mistaken, it was something like cursed skill profane connection? I question myself in doubt and then a screen appears in front of me, profane connection level 2. Connect to the witches, connect to the system, connect to the witches please. Suddenly I feel my mind connecting to the soul stones round me on top of each perfectly spot around the entire circle. The tones start resounding in my mind and then it becomes clear finding a balance on its own. Hello? Can you all hear me? Familiar tones start resounding on my mind such as demonic, evil, charming, sleepy, and adorable ones, Master Iris. It's been so long. I hope you girls have been doing well. I apologize for taking so long to awaken, but it seems it'll take a lot more, currently mastering swordsmanship and magic. 
it'll still take a while to master both. An energetic tone then resumes in my mind, no matter how long it takes we'll wait. Do your best master Iris at a speed of 2000% the normal. We're here to support you. I giggle, that does sound full of energy alright. The different tones fill the connection with laughter. System. The title connection has been received. System. The title connected series has been received. The system voice resonates on our call causing all sorts of static noise which causes an evil tone to complain. Tell the system to go kindly fuck himself, damn it. I start laughing loudly and then gaze upon the soul stone that belongs to such a being imagining the way my body would act, and somehow actually perceiving the image and taking it as reality. I can see you, system. The title demented has been received. Due to the title name, I realize it was only an illusion and the image disappears almost like it was never there in the first place. That was quite unusual. I cackle in a saddened tone. A warm tone then resonates on my mind through the connection. Cheer up Iris, you are you no matter what happens to your mind, we'll always be there to keep you safe. Am I going crazy? I ask with some curiosity and a touch of sorrow letting my voice echo through the white plain. An innocent tone almost as cute as the adorable one starts a little explanation. In a way, you are kind of in the middle of nowhere, under a snowstorm, filled with nothing but white, in a world overwhelming for the body you currently possess, and the worst is probably that you're talking to no one. I start cackling madly and then when I get a hold of my sanity back I remind myself of something, wasn't my brainwash resistance maxed, then how is this world or whatever affecting my mental health, perhaps the cursed class, or the use of the cursed skill, not to forget you're speaking with fellow cursed existences, you might have not noticed dear Iris, but you've stopped being yourself ever since the day you choose the witch class among many possibilities, hmm, what do you mean? There was only that class. I shout losing the sense of reality and fabrication feeling that a piece of me has shattered through this conversation alone. No, no, not at all Master Iris, was it not you who chose that class before all others? No one but you, solely you, exclusively you, ultimately you, you tied your path the moment you gave up on searching for other options, and this is the price, we are the price. Your sister class is the price, everything is a consequence of your acts, a graceful sound of a giggle from an innocent tone echoes in my mind, ah, my body and voice react on their own by laughing wickedly and shaking slightly, and then without the voices expecting it, yes, that was the path I choose, and I don't regret it, it may have not been the best decision, however, it was the one who gave my sister Aurora something she desired from the bottom of her heart, and it also allowed me to have a bigger family, you girls, as such, I welcome all the curses this life may inflict upon all of me, and I'll beat every single one of them, clapping sounds echoed through my mind together with crying and laughter, year 5009 after the system day 81 of the flowering season in Tun village, sometimes taking a break feels quite nice, like going to the marketplace and buy groceries to cook with, Today is one of such amazing ones, even though I can't shake the gaze I receive all the time which makes the world beyond the mirror the most comfortable place to be. Hello mom, good morning, I'd like to buy two red fishes please. Oh, how educated, I wish my children could be like you, a cursed human down to the core? I giggle softly and stare deep into her eyes, I'm certain your children will grow fantastically, just keep pouring some of that motherly love. It's the perfect potion one could drink, my goddess, what a truly kind child, here take these two, they're the best catch of today, she places the fish inside my straw bag, thank you very much for such kindness, I hope Aria will pay you, I walk away from the stand into the rest of the market while waving goodbye to the kind lady that's not far from my mother age, take care young girl, do your best to be happy, happy, happiness. Yes, she's right, since I was born that's the one thing I sought from the despair of my past life. A great joy for being alive and having my dear parents treating me so warmly, and later with the addition of Aurora who started our rather coldly, slowly became a real sister to me. 
I place the bag on the floor and slap my cheeks with both hands hurting myself in the process. Notice, 30 health has been deducted. System, the title Masochist has been received. System, the title Pervert series has been received. Oh my god system are you for real? I burst with laughter as a normal kid would from this stupidity, scaring those around me eventually stopping after shedding a few tears reviving myself up. Ah man. That was surely something else. What's so funny girl with a mysterious hair? A childish voice questions me and then I turn around, meeting a child a little taller than me which I end up gazing at for a while. I've never seen such a beautiful skin tone before. It reminds me of that obsidian. Ah. Ah. T thank you. I notice a slight blush on the boy's cheeks which makes me smile happily. You're very welcome. I'm Iris. How about you? I'm surprised you know what an obsidian is, and I'm Maverick, my teacher actually teased me for not knowing the different gems used for necklaces, so he took me to an expensive looking shop some days ago to have a look at them. His dark blue eyes stare at my green ones with curiosity. Hum, that's uncommon, yet an easy way to go about it, I suppose. Also why do you have such weird hair and eyes color? What? Are they weird? I make a sad expression feeling insecure while thinking they were cute till now from what friends and family told me. Feeling flustered and embarrassed the boy raises the voice, I I mean they're unique. Cute even, it's just I hadn't seen such colors before, so it was quite the surprise for me. Oh, thank you. I smile kindly and then ending up smelling the fishes inside the bag. I start walking to the next stand leaving Maverick behind who decides to chase after me. Where are you going? Upon catching up to me he gasps for air. How is she so fast? Younger than me for sure but quite the physical aptitude. Hello sir. I'd like to buy some potatoes. I then gaze at the boy next to me, shopping as you can see. Did you need anything? Good morning child. How many would you like to get? Around 10 big ones. It should be enough. I open a different bag and the man starts throwing them inside with some cautiousness. What are you going to use so many potatoes in? The curious boy keeps up with the questions. I'll be cooking a meal why? I gaze back to the shopkeeper. Thank you how much will it be? 600 bronze coins will do missy. As I take the necessary money from my shorts left pocket, 60 coins per potato isn't a bad price. It varies a bit depending on the season we're in. Do you need help with the bags? Here you go sir, I give him the coins and then turn to the boy next to me. Sorry Maverick I can handle it myself but thank you. I walk onto the opposite stall who is selling vegetables, upon getting there, hello good morning, I'd like a cabbage, an onion, and a lettuce please. Hello Iris, it has been a while since the last time you dropped by, have you been taking good care of that old drunkard grandfather of yours? Yes, of course. He's doing well Miss Lilia, though I'd hope Grandpa would drink less alcohol and behave a bit better, but can't be helped, some habits are just plain hard to change. I understand hun, here you go the greenest I have left, make him a soup with some water and potatoes, I'm sure it'll be good for both, thank you so much, I'll do as you suggest. I smile happily while Maverick listens to the whole conversation, and then the miss adds, how about you boy? Are you going to buy anything, or you're just bothering the little girl, huh? With an awkward expression, Maverick gazes to the ground after being shouted at without knowing what to say, and then grips the hands and looks at her. I, I was just passing by when I ended up randomly meeting her. Yes, don't worry Miss Lilia, Maverick a new friend, speaking of which, have you eaten yet? I'm about to make some lunch for my grandfather if you'd like to join us. Sure, I'd love to join you too kids are. Lilia smiles watching over both. Have a good day and take good care, Iris. See you soon Miss Lilia. See you Iris and Maverick. Take care of your new friend. I'll be keeping my eyes on you boy. Sure, I'll do my best. This time he replies happily without feeling any pressure from the lady. Kid adapts fast. She giggles lightly staring at us walk away. A little while later I place the ingredients on top of a stone balcony in front and placing the potatoes and a knife on top of the wooden table behind me. To peel those for me will you Maverick? Sure. I'll do my best. Sounds good. As soon as I start washing the lettuce, I hear a loud scream behind me which makes me instantly turn around startled. 
Are you? Okay. I gaze upon the deep large cut he made picking a cloth and then putting it around the hand. Have you ever peeled potatoes before? With an awkward and hurtful expression, Maverick looks down to the injury panicking as the boy's head nods to the sides, and then while holding my left hand on the cloth to staunch the blood flowing from the wound, I use the right one to pat his short brown hair calming him the best I can. Everything's okay. It'll stop soon. Here make some pressure on it while I do the cooking. Ah. Sure, thank you Iris, and sorry for being useless. Don't worry. I also cut myself plenty of times, but I slowly improved. It's a matter of time till you learn to do these things, he smiles while I am focused on cutting the lettuce in big pieces while washing them. Once I'm done I place them on a big pot with some water and start boiling it, and then sit on the table peeling the potatoes as fast as I can, resulting on a swift motion with barely any mistakes. Then I wash the naked potatoes cut them in half and drop half of them on the pot, the rest of them I place them on a metal tray and start handling the fish which makes Maverick make a disgusted expression while looking at the clean cut in the middle of the fish belly from the hole where it pees to the neck without opening the sides, making the blood, entrails, and guts flow outside. Then I slice with some strength splitting the head from the body, and an eyeball rolls down to the floor making him almost puke. Lastly, I wash the fish insides while taking any leftover guts and place them on the trail along with the potatoes. I drop a bit of salt on the potatoes and place the metal board inside the oven. Then I drop an extra amount of salt inside the pot and close it with the lid. We chat to pass time. So are you from Tun Village? My eyes gaze at the expensive clothing he's wearing. No, I live a bit closer to the capital in the northwest, but due to war, we ended up dropping here before meeting Prince Marty. Royalty is it? Sounds like you'll have a tough time ahead of you. A tough time? He gazes curiously at me while holding the question inside. How about you Iris? Have you always lived here as a peasant I suppose? Hum? Yes, I mean, not since my birth but for a while now at least. I stare at the table for a moment, in the end my clothes do seem pretty normal compared to his green and white attire. Might have gotten a noble rank from Aurora achievements, however, I'd rather not show it off, it just doesn't suit me, don't believe it ever did, and makes me disgusted just thinking about it, my past life, ugh. Makes sense, that smaller wooden house next to this one, was it a storehouse? He asks with a kind noticing my strange expression as I think, I'd call it a dojo, I think that's what my grandfather named it apparently a place where people practice some sort of art. Upon hearing those words he places both knuckles on top of the table and shouts excitedly, Do you do something like that? Yes. I practice a bit with a wooden sword, but I'm still very weak and inexperienced compared to him. I believe that's normal you do look super young after all. You don't look much older, I giggle embarrassing him to which he voices a complaint loudly, just so you know I'm sixteen. I'm pretty sure I'm older than you, that you certainly are, I'm only 9 years old, but I'm a good cooker, I stare at him teasing him while laughing softly making the boy feel comfortable despite it, well, I'm a very good archer, the son of the best sniper in the world, that sounds pretty amazing maverick, you're probably forced to train very hard, well, I can't really say you're wrong, but at least, if I train hard I get to visit places and sometimes tag along with my mother on trips, like this one. I end up meeting new people, mostly kids my age which I hope I'll meet them again at a different time. He then smiles happily after telling me about it. Sounds a lot better than Alicia who gets stuck in her mansion learning swordsmanship, though between the two I don't feel much pressure from this boy. His fingers don't have calluses either so the effort might not be equal between the three of us. You're lost in thought again Iris. He points at my forehead with a finger while voicing out making me chuckle joyfully. Can't help it, after all, I appear to be in the presence of someone important. Don't worry about that, I'm used to meeting all types of children, even the ones from the slums, who live completely in poverty without anything to hold on to. Surprised your parents allow that? I ask gaining some curiosity towards him. They certainly don't, I always sneak out and meet children that way, 
and pray inside that they won't find out, but I can't help myself. I wish to change this world one day. Therefore, meeting others who may share this wish of mine, that's very noble of you. I hoped that was the true meaning of the word noble, but sadly they all act superior. I was mesmerized by the speech of a young girl such as yourself in the capital. Her words really pierced this heart of mine. A speech I ask curiously despite knowing what he's possibly conversing about. She's in a different army than the one my mother serves, but a little kid called Aurora, with blonde hair, blue eyes, and young like you. The main reason I approached you, since there's a bit of a similarity in the hair color, however, I was too far to know how she looked like but I could tell how the girl truly was with the speech alone, a magnificent child like the saintess, sharing the rightful values that woman has. You're talking like my sister is the kindest person in the world, in a way, I wouldn't mind that was true, but there's little to that left inside of her, and possibly the remnants of it are only given to me and parents. You don't happen to be her right? Certainly not, my name is Iris after all. Three men and a woman then barge in Ray's house causing a ruckus. Maverick, what are you doing in this place with a peasant no else? The mother approaches the son and pulls his right hand forcing him to leave the place he was seated on while staring at the confused me. It's okay mother, I was just passing by. She didn't do anything wrong, and Iris is just a normal human like us. Upon hearing such words the entitled mother started shouting things like, are you saying we're the same? Guards punish that peasant. I'm tired of this bad behavior of you always meeting the lowborn didn't you learn anything? One of the guards approaches me and pulls me upwards by the hair forcing my body to ascend from the chair, and then delivers a punch to my stomach which makes puke almost come out from deep inside. Notice, 50 health has been deducted. Please stop, Iris did nothing wrong. She's just a little girl mother hear me ooh he received a slap from Ileana the head of the Green Rose family, five green rings left a mark on the face of the boy which didn't go unnoticed by me, understanding clearly who the noble woman was, therefore disabling me to act as the guards were most likely on the level of the royal guards, and this woman possibly being the famous sniper. Uck my hand, you're hurting me, Ileana. The mother then looked at the delicate hands of her son become furious, and then at Iris, make sure she's beat to death for harming my son. I receive a punch in the left cheek close to the eye from a different man making me moan in pain. My left eye vision has disappeared a bit, must be swelling, filthy humans. I receive a kick in my right leg which makes me trip to the floor hitting my head and then I instantly cover it with both arms and hands while shaking from the pain. Notice, 200 health has been deducted. I receive a kick on the chest and then another on my back, followed by a few more in random spots making me cough blood out dirtying the floor with it. Notice, 180 health has been deducted. After taking a good beating losing about 400 more health one of them spits on my hair and then being left laying on the house floor they leave with Maverick silent in tears and snot coming out of the nose. System. The title humiliated has been received. He stares discreetly at me one last time before leaving with the rest of them to which I let out a kind faint smile with my face swollen that doesn't go unnoticed by the boy as if saying everything is alright. Uck. They sure didn't go easy on me. I splash some water on my face that looks a bit swollen on the cheeks and resume the cooking. Surprised Omar didn't step in. Though knowing him. He wouldn't want to cause a direct confrontation either. Possibly the reason for naming himself the strongest assassin in the world, maybe the most careful one too. I chuckle letting out a painful moan as my entire body hurts. Bad parents aren't equal to their children, but sadly for that boy, he's stuck with quite nasty mother. I almost fought back. If it wasn't for a teachings, I would have certainly died after taking at least one of them with me. I spit some blood in the wash basin where I then let water allow it to stream downwards through its drain disappearing slowly in a small whirlpool. Status Status Level 15 Experience 751,500 Fame 4,300 Disgrace 32,420 Unique Class Babel Witch Rank 3 Experience 4,798 Thousandths Race 
Correct human, name, Iris, 9 years old health, 441,270, mana, 3,853,850 status points colon 0 strength, 325 plus 39, stamina, 77 plus 50, agility, 85 plus 45, dexterity, 119 plus 20, intelligence, 263 plus 41, wisdom, 335 plus 50 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 1754 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, purchases, wisdoms, body trainings, animal slayers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sales, soul bounds, elements, contracteds, peasant, f, class a, monster slayer d, slime slayer b, skill mastery a, criminals, herbs gathered, herbs types is, potion brewers, potion type c, status masteries, beast slayer c, horned rabbit slayer c, potion administered f, goblin slayer e, orc slayer f, assassinations, herbalist series c, skeleton slayer c, potion selling f, potion failed d, potion succeeded d, alchemist series f, money makers, merchant series c, tradings, herbs sold, herbs bought, disgraceful, s, zombie slayer f, curse slayers, turtle slayer f, corpse transporters, library completions, crime series f, wises, strongs, human slayer f, murderer f, villainesses, swordsmanships, sword series e, connections, connected series e, demented's, masochists, pervert series d, humiliateds, completed series, fishings, farmings, illusions, readers, trees, gods, skill points, zero actives, system library level 100 s, mana coat level 72 b, mana wave level 23 e, ice bind level 36 e, ice sword level 20 e, icicle level 66 c, long slash level 40 f, ice expansion level 18 f, ice hammer level 1 f, ice spear level 1 f, ice wave level 10 f, ice light armor level 20 e, ice heavy armor level 10 f, triple slash level 50 d, thrust level 30 e, parry level 40 d, backstep level 20 e, dance of death level 5 f, vanish step level 1 f, passives, bleeding resistance level 55 d, swordsmanship level 60 c, sword mastery level d 50, mana control level 56 d, ice control level 40 d, slight wisdom boost level 50 d, slight mana recovery level 62 c, acid resistance level 1 f, axe art level 10 f, axe mastery level 4 f, corpse dismantler level 10 f, brainwash resistance level 100 s, night vision level 30 e, slight stamina boost level 50 d, slight agility boost level 45 e, slight strength boost level 39 e, slight intelligence boost level 30 e, slight health recovery level 73 d, ice resistance level 50 d, cold resistance level 60 d, heat resistance level 30 e, lightning resistance level 40 d, knockback resistance level 22 e, stealth detection level 15 f, paralyze resistance level 4 f, sword posture level 5 f, class actives, dark alchemy level 52, magic analysis level 50, destiny cards level 1, cursing objects level 5, decay level 6, mana shield level 46, class rituals, snow falling level 42, class passives, dark alchemy mastery level 40, witchcraft level 100, curses mastery level 100, rituals mastery level 30, magic control level 60, magic knowledge level 60, ice mastery level 40, babel mastery level 20, grimoire mastery level 20, magic attack level 1, magic defense level 1, babel arts, grimoire possession, grimoire announcing, unique, 
Appraisal Level 53, Illusion Level 1, Hero Detector Level 1, Status Level 70, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 17, Soul Manifestation, Endless Growth, Endless Cap, Endless Awakening, Profane Sealing, Profane Connection, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank Unique Final Phase, 151200, Contracted Witches, Anastasia. Funny how humiliated improved the pervert series further. This system titles really does make me wonder if the gods have fun watching us humans suffer. Year 5009 after the system day 82 of the flowering season in Tun Village. At night teacher Ray returns from the little trip and notices my face which he doesn't hold back and states, seems like you took quite the beating blondie, were they that strong for you to allow it? The head of the Green Rose family and some strong looking guards, I unintentionally meet the son at the market where I was buying some groceries for the lunch and dinner where you'd most likely return, and then they somehow ended up barging inside the house, suppose someone ratted us out. From here to the market is not a far distance, were you able to drain your daily share? With a cold tone and stare, I focus on Ray. Yes, even if the chance comes where I must train while harmed I will do it. Don't intend to remain powerless. Feeling what we do not wish to experience often makes our determination to grow boundaries, whilst it was a bad experience for my pupil. The rewards may outdo the pain felt, after all. Your eyes are starting to be friendlier with your ice element, little Iris. Come teacher. I managed to cook something pretty good, and I don't care if you already ate or you're tired. Keep me company. Sure, I'll set the table. Can't wait to see what you did this time around. His friendly words and tone make me smile. Do place a soup plate and a wider plain one. Oat soup, I like that. Used to be my main meal whenever I wandered through the kingdom, even received such a title. Wanderer title? How did you get it? I believe it was when I wandered around the entire kingdom. It gave me some agility, so it was quite worthwhile even though it wasn't intentional. Just happened to receive the title. Interesting, I'll be sure to get it myself one day. Do it, and challenge every strong person you meet along the way. That was my purpose back then, it gave me a lot of experience. Eventually becoming a sword master, a title that is received when at least one swordsmanship skill reaches the max level 100. They grow faster through combat. Eh? That's pretty amazing information. I shout bringing some happiness to his old face, the training I'm making you do will have as many titles as possible, since I also did it. In the end, with what you already have, I expect you to become quite a strong girl, I'll do my best to meet your expectations and of course my own. I place on both plates a big spoon of soup while handling smaller metal spoons to both. As always Ray starts praying while I wait patiently for him to be done as I've never done it. Neither took a liking to it. Once he's done his eyes gaze at me and the light not follows through where we start eating the soup. After eating a few spoons some words reach my ears. This is a pretty good soup. You should make it more often. Really? I'm glad. I did it the best Lilia told me. The young woman from the market teaching you recipes? Yes. I know some from my mother like the other one I have warming up in the oven, was supposed to eat it earlier today, but due to the pain ended up just preparing it instead, looking forward to whatever's in there, though by the smell I can tell it's something with fish, he declares loudly making me smile innocently, for sure, I let out a bit of laughter and then eat a few more spoons while holding back tears, if you'd like you can even try to add carrots to this soup. I feel like it could fit and you might even enjoy it more, with the recommendation letter we get to spend a bit of money, so you don't need to hold back in food, it'll allow your body to grow healthier and hopefully faster, he laughed loudly as always to what I reply softly, once we finish this one I'll give it a try. Once we finish eating the soup I place the fish dishes on top of the table, stretching my aura catching Omar's presence on top of the roof making him enter through the half-open window to watch Ray stares at without saying anything. Sit Omar and eat, surely you haven't had much the entire day, I won't accept a no either, so don't bother contesting me. The tall man nods lightly and sits in front of Ray where I placed the dish, and then I pour some water into a wooden cup and put it in front of his knife that is right beside the plate, 
leaving the fork in the opposite direction. Then I take a seat next to both leaving me at the edge in the middle with full visibility to both. From this day onwards, unless impossible, I'll be having both of your presences during meals. I'll cook double, don't really mind it, and it's also up to no negotiation, you may eat. I look at both slightly nodding then eating the fish silently while allowing my body to relax. How's my sister's progress? Once Omar finishes gulping down the piece of fish and hot potatoes he was chewing, there hasn't been much since the tournament. The last raven I've received from Master Balthazar indicated that the different houses supporting Prince Julius had been gathered, so I suspect your sister will be training the men while recruiting more before attempting something big, I can't start to possibly understand the steps she will walk towards winning the war, but I'll let you know if anything interesting occurs, also the meal is pretty good, you'd do a good wife one day Iris. I blush lightly from the compliment and smile happily at the information, thank you, I won't promise everything I'll make will be good, but at least I'll give it my best. All I can say is that my expectations for her are unfathomable, after all, the words peerless general were written in there, and through history, I've never seen any general with them. You've tried the red book in people that weren't disgraceful through history. We were normal humans and our group wasn't a bad one. It all started on the day that Riddle came out, and everyone started being prosecuted. The generals of humanity at best would get general achievement. But peerless means perfect, in other words. I firmly believe Aurora will conquer the world if supported properly. That sounds fantastic. There were also other things listed in the Red Book, but I can't picture Sister being any of them. Though after talking with her about it, they are real. Omar's right hand shivers slightly as he handles the fish making a shrieking sound by cutting the plate in mistake. She's not here. You don't need to be afraid, I giggle innocently making him attack the fish body once more with the cutlery. I didn't know my student sister was that proficient. Didn't you tell me she was your age? Yes, but by whatever reason, the god is blessed with a boundless quantity of knowledge related to war. I shout happily since it's related to Aurora. That's quite interesting. I suppose my presence won't be necessary for such a war then. Don't worry, you'll be busy teaching me after all, once I succeed you. I suppose then we could go help her if she requests it. Omar listens to our conversation while biting on a potato breathing some cold air on one as he made a narrow cut splitting it in two but not entirely making a little steam ascent from the middle of it. I've been wanting to ask something for a while. What do you both know about our Tana gods? Both gaze at me attentively due to the subject in question, and then at each other to which Ray takes the initiative. From what I know there are around four gods, each containing abilities that are able to affect our world, but I only know the goddess Arya one which is summoning and celestial messages through the saintess, and humans are not the only thing she can invoke to our world but I don't know many details regarding it aside of the blue sword the first hero Rizia wielded. I know about that sword, I made Alicia sign a contract to it, allowing her to become an unawakened hero, but at least thanks to the soul remnant that was inside of it, will surely be able to help my friend grow a lot. Surprised you didn't take that chance for yourself, Omar said in a soft tone surprised at my words, for better or worse. We can't have more than one contract with these so-called unique weapons. Does that mean you have one already? The surprise of his reply could be felt by the both of us as he doesn't know much about me or my sister, aside from the sole information of the Red Book which in a way isn't worth a lot. Yes, though which weapon I own is a secret that I'll keep from both of you. Is that the reason my student wants to learn swordsmanship with her left hand alone, so that whichever weapon she has can be used with the right one? Then it must be a small type, maybe a wand? A short staff? Understood. I'll be happy with whatever information you wish to disclosure for you are the one. You have that right. The one? Why would you call my student in such an exquisite way? Ray gazes at him confused. She's the dark robes savior. The one from the prophecy. That's why. Both stare at me, and I notice my teacher's face making an awkward expression. Seems like you're both done. I take both plates from the table and start cleaning them into a bag that we use to put the garbage in. 
I'm sure Omar wouldn't mind explaining to you about it. Once I finish I start washing the dishes with a small sized wooden scrubbing bush. After staring at each other for a while Omar started the explanation. It all started a long time ago a bit after the system was implemented when a twin of the saintess who inherited a cursed version of the blessed skill oracle appeared, the one given by Arya which is the one passed down through every generation granting them visions through dreams along with a couple of celestial visions from the goddess herself. The other one, however, causes the user to grant riddles to others about the future as well. This was then interpreted by the church from back then as a specific disgraceful class user getting much stronger powers than usual. This would one day bring the destruction of this world through a pandemonium which we aligned in a way to the god of chaos loot. Speaking of which, for your question earlier what we know is that the god of evil Harthus is able to help beings awaken, usually used on demons. The gender shift to god or goddess of chaos loot, is able to do probably whatever it pleases. We've got ancient records of random things changing through the thousands of years. One of them being the ruins close to Astia village. These are things were most likely produced by him, and we've found a few more in other places also sealed. I've ventured through that one, but there were only monsters like slimes, skeletons, and zombies. They were pretty strong, but the barrier doesn't allow them to go outside. So it's safe, for now at least. There's a chance those seals will one day break upon the god of chaos command and make the world filled with monsters, I explain calmly from the little knowledge I have about it. Nothing remains sealed forever that is common knowledge unless there's someone that is capable of creating god level ones. Yes Ray, since it was the god itself, he could easily release or undo them when it fits unless they take a certain amount of time to do so due to how powerful they are. I look at both with a kind smile as they're starting to talk with one another with less awkwardness remaining silent. Next on the list would still be the god of chaos who is known to be able to allow monsters to become stronger through godly levels of transformation raising their tier. It is known that the red dragon in the north is no less than a tier 7 monster, where the goblin king would be around 3. But beasts like him work differently and under the goddess of order Luna alone, through what it's called evolution. An example would be how their type changes, from for example normal goblin, to warrior type, granting them a class and the body to improve. While our human race doesn't evolve, awaken, or transform, however, we are able to get any class a little earlier than them, but ultimately they can become stronger than us especially monsters, demons would most likely be the second strongest in this world. I take my seat again upon finishing washing the dishes and waiting for them to dry to store them back while feeling fascinated with the conversation. How do you think demons awaken Omar, from the information? We gathered from a lot of encounters with them to torturing experiments we do have enough. There are four types known, low demons, high demons, lords, and then kings, which is a similar system to the beasts one just through a different method goblin king, and the different soldiers below it, but I've never heard of a goblin lord before, we can assume it exists then, yes, we can assume any class that we humans can get, may appear in the enemy race's side as either evolution, transformation or awakening, your sister will have a rough path ahead of her then, Ray looks at me while rubbing his white beard, I believe in her, and she's pretty intelligent. I'm sure this information is already within her expectation. As to be expected of a peerless general, Omar smiles under the black mask that covers all the way to the eyes. Speaking of gods, is there any information related to why they are at war? They look at each other nodding in disagreement. Something I'll have to find out eventually then, but at least I've got to know more about them. Thank you both. Anytime Blondie, you should get some rest. Tomorrow there's another daily dose of training waiting for you. I'll be taking my leave, Ray, Iris, Omar gets up from the chair and before disappearing. Thank you for the meal. He vanishes. You're welcome. All right, teacher. I'll go to my room and sleep. See you tomorrow. Too bad he left. Might have shared a drink with that annoying assassin. He grabs a bottle and a small cup pouring some of it in it then getting himself slowly wasted while I walk to my room. Can't say drinking will get him killed since he's already quite old and is still alive. I smile faintly reaching the door of the room opening it. And going inside. 
mirror, once it appears I go inside of it, after some steps I find Anastasia laying on the ground looking at the sky with a small pile of white snow on top of her. I get your bored being here all the time adorable witch. Anastasia turns the entire body around and then gets up facing me. Not anymore. Once the witch eyes meet mine the happy expression she wore turns rather eerie along with a cold aura around herself. What happened to your face master? There was a sort of incident with the head of the Green Rose family, apparently being a peasant was a bad thing for her. So she had the guards attack me. It was quite the beating. But I'll become better by tomorrow. I heal quite fast while asleep after all. The aura became more sinister and colder as she took some steps forward placing both her hands on my cheeks, and then stands on the tip of the toes gaining some extra height and kisses my forehead then glues her own to mine while descending returning her feet to normal. I'm truly sorry you had to go through that, but don't worry Iris, she lets go of my forehead and looks at me with an unfamiliar sweet and innocent smile then speaks slowly yet happily making her appearance look extra adorable, I'll make sure to kill their entire family in the future, truly wicked. But I understand where you're coming from, still it's not a good idea, it would only cause the advance of the humans to slow down, let them be, they didn't know better, I tell her in a kind tone while expressionless. Is that an order? She smiles with a wide smile while tilting her head. A piece of advice as they're stronger than us. She then bows deeply in front of me with her right hand reaching the heart. I understand. Then in that case please fulfill my conditions so I can awaken and handle that matter in your place. I'll gladly regain your honor and bath in their blood for the master. Anything shall be accomplished. Anastasia's status was it? Status. Anastasia. The adorable witch, class, witch, master, iris health, 1170 mana, 3700-3700, parameters, the master ones, titles, the master ones, skills, the master ones, conditions to awaken, receive a flower from the master. Does the type of flower matter? What would you awaken to? Humans aren't supposed to awaken, yet you're a copy of me. Does that mean I'm not human anymore? Any flower will do Master Iris, I'd stop being a clone and gain my own entity which I'd still remain in a contract with you for all the eternity nonetheless, my class would evolve to Babel, and you are 100% human. Even then, you still wouldn't be strong enough to handle those. We're still too weak. Perhaps when we become powerful you may do as you wish. Though do spare a boy named Maverick. He stood against it from the beginning to the end. And even shed tears for me. As you wish. Her pose returns back to normal and we stare at each other silently. Shortly after her hands return to my cheeks. And then I hear a cute trembling soft voice almost crying. It truly does pain me to see you suffering. Tears flew from my eyes as the last word resonated in my mind then I allow my face to be buried in her fingers. With a whisper, my heart gets consoled. We are here for you, anything you need, whatever it may be, we seek your awakening, and our own, the day we all gather and move under your name. The moment all our souls entangle as one, and our beings become one, soon we'll all be freed and follow your will which will take shape under your own title. After all. You two are a witch. A soft tone comes from my lips. I'll receive a title. Yes, you shall. When you awake, it'll reflect your true wish, and depending on it, the world of Artana and even this one might meet their ends. She pats my hair softly and then continues, everything will be yours to toy with. Every soul shall fear being consumed by you. Kings and gods will have their kingdoms and realms destroyed. That is one of the paths your title may guide you to. A soft tone comes from my lips, a different outcome, take your time becoming truly strong my dear master, for once you do, we will know. She takes me to the mirror where I go through and fall on my bed falling asleep while feeling bewitched. Year 5009 after the system day 90 of the flowering season inside the dojo, your posture is becoming a bit better overall. He uses the wooden sword in his hand to adjust my body like a mannequin pushing my elbow slightly to the front along with a harmless hit on my back forcing me to stretch it. Looking good more 100 swings let's go, 
I gulp hearing the number but I do as I'm told, charge my hands and legs and take strong left steps while waving my wooden sword from above my head to the front of it while imagining one of those skeletons. Thanks to my imagination I was able to acquire the unique skill illusion, even though I haven't had a chance to try it out due to all this hardcore training. I did speak with my teacher about it, it could be categorized as a balanced type of combat skill should allow me to trick my opponent in many ways, but he's never heard of anyone having it. I'll have to try it for myself after today's training where Ray promised me he'd help with it, thus I'm extra motivated. Even after 30 days of swinging like this, I can't seem to get anywhere close to the natural wind slice Ray saw did. He told me it took him practically his entire life. So I shouldn't feel pressure from it. The truth is that I just want to be able to do everything he can right away. But sadly my body can't keep up, so training the bases it is. I let out a suspire and then my head receives a harmless hit by the teacher. Focus Blondie or I'll turn you bald next. Cold sweat ran all over my body upon such threat as my mother would be extremely sad if that were to happen. I do my best to concentrate and keep swinging proportionately faster than the one before. Slower, no need to rush we have time. The better each and every single of them is, the faster you'll attain a close to perfection form. I ready the stance while inhaling deeply and then swing while exhaling curving the sword in a very good arch right on the top of the skeleton head. It almost looks like the girl has an opponent in front. Is it the illusion skill mentioned earlier? If she could deceive herself to be fighting someone, it would be quite faster to train her, since combat experience is everything in this world. This is actually a great idea. I'm a genius. A true wise teacher, Ray started laughing randomly making my concentration be damaged slightly. I stare at him coldly and silently for making my life harder, sorry sorry. Here I have an idea Iris try to use that imagination of yours while using the skill illusion into thinking of a particular monster you've had a hard time against, see how that works out for you. The strongest ones I saw were the shiny skeleton and the goblin warrior, though that green one looked too dangerous, can it be a certain skeleton that beat me before? Try it. If it works we won't need to find sparring partners for you or even have you go to the annual tournament for the experience. I'll attempt it, even though I'd still like to go to the tournament since you once won a title from beating it. Most kids her age only want to receive the recommendation letter, but all she wants is to get the title to become slightly stronger. What a girl. I want to use unique skill illusion. Notice, suggestion to use appraisal. Right. Sometimes I forget I can use that skill to see how things work, appraise the skill please. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted, illusion of the unique tier, due to the low level can only be used either directly on an enemy with low brainwash resistance or on yourself through the use of a reflection, can bypass resistance when higher level, can bypass brainwash resistance. Well, that's pretty amazing since that passive skill is maxed. I can do what my teacher asked, otherwise it would be impossible, as to be expected of a unique tier. Mirror, as soon as it appears I stare at it seeing my reflection in it. The appearance of it startles Ray on the side who looks at the size of it. That's quite a big mirror, is it part of that illusion skill of yours? It seems I need a reflection to make it work on myself so yes, it is, unique skill illusion. I sense my brain focusing a lot along with my mana being slowly drained and then I think on a skeleton making one leave the mirror with a sword in the hand, similar to the one that died as I no longer remember it entirely well. Can you see something teacher? Somehow I can see a skeleton, it looks quite real. Are you sure that's an illusion? I make a panic expression upon those words, and then start running and grabbing a real sword while mana coating it and then I turn around and notice that the skeleton was chasing me. Our shining swords then clash once he attacks me, causing some weight to be felt on my left hand. Uck. This skeleton is quite strong, I gaze at him and see some distortions appear on and disappear repeatedly. That tells me this is not real. I sigh and then focus some strength pushing him away while regaining my composure. System. The title trickster has been received. Seems like it is truly an illusion alright with this I'm 100% sure. 
I charge my mana which gets copied by the skeleton like the one at the ruins did, and our swords clash. This time my weapon didn't break, I take a step to the side and attempt a body blow which gets blocked by a vertical slash. Focus on your opponent moves, dodge, and counter attack like I taught you in the beginning. Yes, teacher. I start taking small steps to the left circulating around him and then he slashes horizontally towards my hip where I take a step backward avoiding it, and then once the sword goes through I take a step charged with mana forward while waving my sword from top to bottom cutting diagonally the skeleton in half till the supposed liver location. Then his sword cuts my arm off making me scream loudly to what Ray reacts cutting the skeleton in many pieces and then the illusion disappears as I lose my concentration due to the shock. Are you alright kid? Your arm is fine, look at it, was just an illusion. A very good one at that. But it shows that you can't let your guard down against any opponent. Sometimes they can come with quite a set of tricks to defeat you. Faking death could easily be one of them. I look at my arm breathing hard while trying to inhale and exhale deeply as that scared the hell of me, that was something. Ray starts laughing loudly which strangely the sound helps me calm down, that was good practice, once you adjust yourself to the usage of that skill, we can make you fight all kinds of beasts and monsters, some stronger, others faster, small, big. The possibilities are endless, which means you'll definitely improve. I'll do my best, but for now I'll take a quick break. Need to calm myself. I give the sword back to him and he takes it gladly. Go for it kid. You did well. Thank you. Ray. I move away from him outside the dojo and let myself be bathed by the sunlight and the soft breeze. Unique skills are terrifying. To even show my arm being cut like that. I literally stopped feeling it for a moment there, I suppose it shuts down a part of my mind to allow those things to happen that smoothly. I take a deep breath and look around, between this dojo and the house there's a small well in the middle, and then wooden old walls around, the only exit leads to a hall that is composed of two different houses which lead to the main road. It even has a door that while closed makes outsiders think it's a wall. Sometimes they may think it's a dead end unless of course they jump over it or climb it somehow, but it's two meters tall, so I don't think many would be able to. We generally keep it closed so that outsiders don't barge in as Ray allows the house and the dojo doors to be open. He often says it's for the place to be able to breathe, often mentions that if we take care of non-living things as living ones that we're granting them a space for a soul to reside. Gibberish in the end, like him naming the swords. Mother did say that allowing windows to be open helps the air circulate and the bad smells to disappear, so at least that much I'm willing to believe even though I wouldn't go as far as to call it breathing. That's just silly. Okay, maybe if it was haunted by some spirits or ghosts. There was a story in the system library skill about it. It's a shame I ended up reading every book maxing the skill, this world doesn't have that many books, but it was worthwhile. Hopefully, in the future, someone writes something new, or maybe I get to use it in a different way. After all, this world always comes with a way to surprise me. Like this illusion skill, it sure paid me off quite the scare, however. If it made me fearful then my enemies depending on what I imagine, could end up quite marvelous. I rub the back of my head softly letting my hair wave randomly. It reaches a bit deeper than the shoulder line. A shame it was cut, a blessing to have it like this during the flowering season, and even better when the sun comes as it'll be too hot. It'll have time to regrow by the last one. Hey, Omar. A man suddenly appears to my left. Yes? I forgot to ask but I remember someone telling me that the seasons and the gods had some correlation. Do you happen to know about it? It's pretty simple really. The flowering season was named in the name of Arya, sun season in the name of Lutz, decaying season in the name of Harthus, and moon season in the name of Luna. Oh alright. That's actually simpler than I initially thought it would be. It's interesting how the human race uses all the seasons but hide the fact of the other gods' existence. Well, it would be a direct conflict to the beliefs of the church under Pope Klaus. The day we met, you mentioned something about people being tortured and killed just for having the disgrace class. Does that still happen even in these days by the Pope? 
I believe he inherited some of the necessary skills for it. However, they stopped those practices and started exiling our kin from Lumen Kingdom after a certain event. A certain event? Someone stopped them or so? There is a certain being similar to you. We of the Dark Robes call her Witch of the South. Even though I've never seen her for quite a long time now, it's known that saying her name can get you cursed, so we don't mention it. And she killed a bunch of priests as revenge for being exiled. A person to be feared. Exactly. She was the second person inheriting the cursed version of the Saintess Oracle skill, like that twin from the old Taylight told you and Ray the other day. A twin thing again? Indeed, since the goddess never said anything about such a skill, we take it as being a good thing meant to help humans, so we made use of it through the generations keeping on believing the prophecy up to this very day. Shouldn't that same test twin be part of you guys? Sadly, I couldn't find her when that event became known, so didn't get the chance, even though one of our five dark masters, Balthazar the one holding the highest power between them, believes it's best to stay away from her as it is possible she's no longer sane due to her class. Becoming insane might be something that will affect me eventually. I look down sad, and Omar noticing this places his hand on top of my head patting me softly. I'll see if I can find something to help you with the class side effects, thus I'll be gone for a while, make sure to stay close to that old beast. He'll make sure to keep you safe. Really? Thank you so much, Omar. I'll become even stronger by the time you're back. I make a big smile while staring at him joyfully. I'm counting on that. You wouldn't be able to complete the prophecy otherwise. He smiles under the mask then disappears from my sight. I feel him pat me a bit more and then I feel the hand departing from the top of my head. I return back inside to resume the training, picking the silver sword instead of the wooden one making Ray smile faintly. I do some heavy swings with it while maintaining a natural outer layer of mana on my hands and feet warming my body up again. If too heavy for you just keep up with their wooden one, no need to pressure your body that far. I can manage. I wave the sword rather freely and then stare into the mirror. Add my reflection, and use illusion once again bringing the skeleton enemy back. Posture teacher order makes my back stretch fully and I charge mana into the usual spots along with mana coating my sword. This time I'll beat you skeleton. For this round focus on parrying the attacks, Iris, the skeleton does a vertical cut to which I respond by a diagonal one close to its tip forcing it to go left and my body right good but try to hit closer to the middle of his sword, it'll require less strength then. All right teacher, I'll attempt it. The enemy failing to hit me decides to do a large horizontal slash, to what I block by vertically slashing with all my strength, ending up breaking his sword in half surprising myself. I assume that wasn't supposed to happen, I gaze at my teacher who adds, well it's not uncommon, since it's an illusion just think of a sword appearing below him. I concentrate on teacher words and a new sword really does appear, to which I point downwards and the skeleton replaces the one in his hand with it. In a way, it wouldn't be weird if the skeleton improved his combat prowess as well while I do too, right? I concentrate on this thought imagining him like that giving some sort of ego while at it. The skeleton starts shrieking and then laughs making the mouth teeth hit each other rather violently. Ah! Did you do something Iris? The teacher gazes at me noticing the weird behavior watching my face dumbfounded, I see. Well might as well give him the ability to talk while at it, so you get used to defeating foes with some emotions and stuff. I think this is creepy enough as it is, both the skeleton and Ray start laughing loudly making me face palm. Though making him able to talk could be interesting, let's attempt it, I focus on that thought, and then my eyes open and the skeleton disappears. Notice, mana has been completely depleted. What now Iris? My mana ended. So the illusion was cancelled. It consumes some mana progressively, so I'll do normal swings instead. Very well, I'll go to the market buy some food, be back in a bit. All right, take your time Ray, and don't forget some carrots for the soup. I wave him goodbye as he leaves the dojo after nodding lightly, and then I spend a few hours swinging the sword as he taught me. What did I accomplish within these few hours of training status? Notice. Mirror is now level 5, swordsmanship level 63, 
Saw Darts Level 52, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 35, and Posture Level 8. Oh damn, that command actually worked? Notice, due to the recent evolution to the unique tier a lot more commands are available. Is that so? Well in a way it does make sense, that's pretty amazing and it makes me able to not waste time checking the entire status screen. I smile happily at the positive changes. Hey, Blondie are you done? I look at the dojo entrance in the middle of the wall. Yes, did you bring everything I asked for? I think so. Go take a shower and change clothes then you can try out your new recipe. Sure mirror evoke, I reply happily. It's been quite fun living with teacher A. At the beginning we used to fight a lot, and he still calls me Blondie which I got used to it, since he did it with my mother, so in a way, it reminds me of her. I head to the bathroom to prepare a bath. I wonder how my parents are doing, should see if I can sneak out and visit them even if I have to run forth and back. I chuckle at the tiresome yet wonderful idea. Once inside it, I start undressing placing the clothes in a straw basket with no lid, and then rotate the faucet and water starts filling the tub. I really do wonder what's the trick to make water come out warm or cold, whoever created this must be a genius. I giggle and then slowly enter the tub feeling the water level rise, and as it does my body is slowly submerged all the way to the neck. Being short has its benefits. I smile happily touching the water with my right hand and then passing it softly on my cheeks warming them up, I bend my legs allowing my head to fall inside the water and then two seconds later I stretch them returning to my original position. The worst thing of having such a great element is that purely by just using mana I feel cold from it. It obviously gets a lot worse when I converge my mana to the ice element. Even if I max the ice and cold resistances the odds are that I'll always feel some cold from using it. I gaze at the ceiling and relax thinking about something peculiar, wondering what which title would suit me, maybe not something as profound as my sister achievements. I don't want to be a walking calamity, or a death bringer, not interested in being a peerless general either and lastly but not least possessing unfathomable power whatever that is, I'm way too powerless for that. I grab a pink soap along with a small scrub a bit longer compared to the one I use for the dishes and start rubbing my body with it. Which advice? I also use swords so maybe something to do with both. Ice swordsman. I chuckle from rubbing under my feet, that doesn't sound very witch-like. Is there something that would sound good enough? Witch of coldness? Ah times like these that I realize my naming sense is terrible, except for the adorable witch. Her name belonged to one of the book stories I read in my past world, and once the other ones awaken, I know what to name them. A hopeful and bright smile fills my expression thinking on having more sisters. Being able to increase my family thanks to the mistake of the gods, in a way, I'm thankful they cursed my class, even if it's corroding my sanity in the process. I need to somehow surpass the brainwash resistance. Just not sure how, I really need to start figuring things out otherwise I'm always depending on others to help me. I look into the water which is still ending up seeing my reflection. My cute childish face with a small nose, small thin lips, green eyes, round small ears, and short blonde hair. Perhaps, I need to stop thinking this way and instead of depending on people. I should seek the help of those who know instead, appraise me a solution that enables me to fight this brainwash power. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Suggestion to appraise your cursed skills as each has a special function that can enable your growth. Please do show me everything. I wish to improve somehow. Hoping that my pleas are heard the mechanical voice starts resounding in my head granting me knowledge. Notice. 1000 mana has been deducted. They will now be analyzed according to appraisal level. Soul manifestation can be used to create things in exchange for soul power. Endless growth grants a faster growth of the body, better learning speed. Endless cap can increase skill potential which has reached the max level. Endless awakening allows entities and things to awaken. Profane sealing concedes the seal to block the freedom of entities and things. Profane connection enables contact with entities and sentient objects. Suggestion to use endless cap skill in the brainwash resistance 1, 
highly advise to do it in the mirror world. I bend my legs once more and rub my hair to remove any soap leftovers, then take off the tub stopper enabling the water to flush out. I stretch my legs and with the support of both my hands on each side of the tub I get up slowly to not trip or slip. Then allow the excess of the water to fall before stepping out while reaching out for a towel on top of the wash basin. Then I start drying my hair and body. When I finish, I get out and dry my feet. Then I head to my room while inside the towel. Once inside I open the wardrobe and pick some clothes, a long black sleeve shirt, and brown pants, along with white panties, black socks, and small brown boots, making me look kind of tomboyish. Mirror, once it appears I began walking to it while speaking. Well then time to have some fun with this new knowledge. After taking some steps, I look around before taking a seat by crossing my legs in the usual spot of the magic circle, the only one without a soul stone. I stared at the girl next to me who had her eyes closed, after a while I get tired of waiting and say softly, are you asleep Anastasia? Due to becoming startled by my voice. She looks at me with those cute blue eyes, while doing a funny awkward expression making me laugh. Iris? She gets closer to me and as she's about to hug me the girl's motion stops and with only her head starts sniffing me. You smell good. Really good. What's this smell? Are you saying the other times I smelled badly? I make a serious expression while looking at her making her timid. AID didn't meant it like that, it's just that. I interrupt her with a kind tone. I was just kidding you silly, I poke her forehead with my index left handed finger making her do a soft strange word sound, and you, she closes her eyes while spouting whatever that was out while blushing. Anastasia sure is fun to bully. I wonder what kind of personalities will the other ones have, can't wait to meet them. What ordeal have you brought in mind today? She replies with a playful tone attempting to mock me back. I bend two fingers opening some space between them and grab her nose, closing them softly afterward. It sounds like you're calling me bothersome, you evil witch. I start laughing making her giggle along in a different pitch due to the trapped nose. Though for today's ordeal, I intend to try to use the skill endless cap on brainwash resistance that is currently maxed to stop having corruption in my mind if we can call it that. We don't know much about what the goddess skills we stole do. In fact, they're skills that a witch shouldn't have, as such, you're already in a different level than the rest that may have our class or similar. I used appraisal to find some information of those skills, you should be able to use it too no? Sadly as I'm not awakened the skills from unique and above are off limits. Perhaps once I go beyond I'll be able to. Really need to find you a flower. Next time I meet my parents I'll buy you a good looking one. I stick my tongue out bringing confusion to Anastasia and then mention, that smells good, which makes her giggle adorably. Ah. You're just too cute. I hug her tight, imagining the bunny doll I left at home. One of the very few birthday gifts I received. I make her cheeks blush intensely. Tea thank you. But that's due to looking like Master Iris, who is very cute. Silly. We stay hugged for a bit while smiling without being able to see each other faces. Alright. It's time to start. Feel free to help me. Status. Current mana, please. Upon hearing my words Anastasia gets away from me and goes back to her seat. Mana. 1500-3850. This world sure is great with all the mana density. It allows me to recover at a great pace. I hope this much will be enough. I gaze at the witch next to me who looks with eyes filled with curiosity and anticipation. Endless cap. A screen similar to status appears before me. Endless cap maxed skills system library level 100 brainwash resistance level 100 witchcraft level 100 curses mastery level 100. So level 100 truly means the max we can get for the skills. Normally at least, I make a big smile before touching the brainwash resistance skill, on the screen that appeared in front of me. Anastasia who also stared at the screen noticed the last two skills on it making a sinister smile that goes unnoticed by me. Notice, 5000 mana has been deducted in total. I then notice the witch next to me lending me her mana happily. A big blue light surrounds my body fueling me with power, 
and then it goes inside as a voice once more resounds in my mind. Notice, brainwash resistance skill cap has successfully increased to 150. Successfully, does it mean this process can fail? It didn't mention that the cap was maxed, meaning I can probably repeat this process, perhaps, endlessly. Well, I'd eventually die before reaching the last level. This must mean that I could possibly increase the witch's skills in the future, once I secure a good enough brainwash resistance. I bet you would like to have these cursed skills improved, I say with a happy smile, receiving a corresponding one from the girl next to me. Of course master, they would allow our overall skills to have better chances, if we think logically about it, despite being 100% chance of causing an effect to an enemy. If they have resistance it could even end up being nullified. To avoid such a scenario we would need a really big level to always get our curses and rituals to work. Makes sense, I'll focus on brainwash resistance from here onwards and once it is high enough, I'll start evolving the others, so be patient alright? As you wish Iris, she smiled happily content from my offer that was more than what the girl hoped for, due to its drawbacks to her master. My little witch Anastasia seems to be in a rush to become stronger reminds me of another sister of mine, however, I won't allow myself to fall for insanity. I'll become stronger on my own terms at the pace I wish, and once I'm done in a few years, I hope I'll have grown strong enough to protect my family and friends, if not, I'll have to keep finding ways to improve further to reach the happy ending I seek, while remaining kind like parents taught me to be. I raise my hands to the shoulder level with the palms upwards while voicing out. It's a great shame you can't use these cursed skills, otherwise, you'd be able to increase them as you're permanently inside this overflowing world full of mana. That's true, but once I'm finished unlocking all the skills, I can start practicing with them, so they level up faster. That does sound really good, but it might take a while no? it most likely will take long on my own. Ah, a very long time indeed. I'll also take long till my training is over. So we'll be both busy, even our sister is, compared to us, she's most likely the one having the hardest time. Having to take care of who knows how many humans, and planning an infinite amount of complicated ideas, theories, and things. Anastasia smiles at me agreeing to my words. It is quite intriguing how Master Iris hasn't completely been corrupted by now, how is it possible that someone so young has such a strong will, what do you mean Anastasia, we are skills entities with specific knowledge and behavior, we were once part of the system as data, in other words, we know the human limits, for example, how much they're supposed to handle, and yet, you remain yourself no matter what, the knowledge, the mindset, the personality, after analyzing all of it, they do not fit you, so how, how, how is my master so fantastic, she makes a lustful expression while licking the tip of her finger, I lower my hands, placing them on top of my lap while gazing at them, I guess that unlike Aurora they didn't have the chance to copy or pray in my memories, which means they don't know I'm like 24 years old in total from both lives, even though my mentality isn't of an adult, as I've not experienced and grown enough mentally, but it's probably enough to cope with this situation. Maybe there's something else. Perhaps the brainwash resistance. The link to my sister. I don't think Aurora would want me to go insane, so these things should be protecting me. Sending the different voices out of my head to the soul stones also helped a lot, even if they're not exactly evil, nor against me, but it still has some impact. I shift my focus to the girl noticing the erotic way she looks at me. Without feeling anything about it, I stare deeply, trying to find whatever is behind that expression. At some point, I notice Anastasia's hands trembling slightly, and then I notice a hint of fear in the glint of her eyes. Do you fear me, little sister? With a cold tone, but a cute expression, yes, because you're an exception to the system, someone no one is capable of understanding except perhaps the gods, it feels to me that even if you didn't have Aurora with you, that weapon, I think we would have still met, and the result would be similar, that may be so, but isn't that a good thing, after all, you're no longer part of the system, the world it exists isn't this one, 
You and the other seven are now your own selves and can easily live however you want, and even pursue your own paths. This place is our new home, a place for us to live happily. I point all around and continue, an entire world to explore without all the madness the other one has. She stops sitting like me and changes to sitting on the back of her feet, then kneels forward placing the forehead on the snow. I understand Master Iris. Do you really my silly, adorable witch? I save this thought in my head to not hurt her feelings. I will do my best to treasure this world, your world. I interrupt her instantly. Our world dear Anastasia. She blushes happily and then continues, our world, and I'll also treasure your friends and family. When the time comes if necessary, I'll help you protect them once they arrive on this side. I extend my right hand, which is the closest one and pat her beautiful light blue hair. After a bit I approach the girl next to me pulling her face to my lap, allowing the cheek to rest comfortably. Slowly she becomes extremely red while continuously patting the blue hair eventually falling asleep on top of the snow with Anastasia next to me. As the night goes by, she keeps me warm through the night by cuddling with me tightly, while protecting me from the mana density with an outer mana layer. Year 5009 After the system day 1 of the sun season After a long night goes by I wake up finding Anastasia next to me, reminding me of the days I'd sleep comfortably with Aurora. I carefully get up by placing her arm that I find on top of my body on hers and then kiss Anastasia's forehead softly. I'll be going now little sister, we shall meet again soon enough, mirror. I walk towards the summoned item, going through its glass, as it was normal at this point. Appearing inside the room rail and me with the new brainwash resistance. My mind feels completely clean, it seems like my class can no longer get its hold on me. But just in case. I shall increase it some more times. Once my class awakens, the effect may grow a lot stronger, for that reason, I shall aim to max brainwash resistance. I make a happy smile that is further enhanced by the breaking dawn of Adana's morning. After changing into brown shorts and a brown shirt I head downwards into the kitchen grabbing some bread with strawberry jam and eat it outside enjoying the remnants of the dark sky. An hour goes by and I start running around the house warming my body up before picking a sword. Once time passes by, I find myself inside the dojo doing sword swings, in an attempt to improve the posture and mana control further. After some more training, I take a short break. With the ability to increase my skills making them stronger than other people, possibly even more powerful than the ones summoned by the goddess Arya. I should start focusing on the ones I wish to learn fully, and select the most useful ones, to not lose again in the future, or to at least have a better chance at it. I sit on the floor with my legs crossed, show me the skills I own status. Skill points, 5 actives, system library level 100 s, mana coat level 72 b, mana wave level 23 e, ice bind level 36 e. Ice Sword Level 20 E, Icicle Level 66 C, Long Slash Level 40 F, Ice Expansion Level 18 F, Ice Hammer Level 1 F, Ice Spear Level 1 F, Ice Wave Level 10 F, Ice Light Armor Level 20 E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10 F, Triple Slash Level 50 D, Thrust Level 30 E, Parry Level 40 D, Backstep Level 20 E. Dance of Death Level 5F, Vanish Step Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 60C, Swordsmanship Level 63C, Sword Mastery Level D52, Mana Control Level 56D, Ice Control Level 40D, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 50D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 62C, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 10F, Axe Mastery Level 4F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 100S, Night Vision Level 30E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 50D, Slight Agility Boost Level 45E, Slight Strength Boost Level 39E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 35E, Slight Health Recovery Level 73D, Ice Resistance Level 50D, Cold Resistance Level 60D, Heat Resistance Level 30E, Lightning Resistance Level 40D, Knockback Resistance Level 22E, 
Stealth Detection Level 20 E, Paralyze Resistance Level 4 F, Sword Posture Level 8 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 6, Mana Shield Level 46, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 45, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 60, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Magic Attack Level 1, Magic Defense Level 1, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 61, Illusion Level 5, Hero Detector Level 1, Status Level 70, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 17, Soul Manifestation, Endless Growth, Endless Cap, Endless Awakening, Profane Sealing, Profane Connection, 5 Skill Points, Where did I possibly get those? Haven't leveled up in so long, Notice. Due to the new skills gained from Adorable which the title Skill Mastery reached the max rank S. Oh my. Thank you, Anastasia and Status. Speaking of which recommend me the most useful skills, please can use the appraisal skill for it. Notice, 800 mana has been deducted. Dark Mastery to use it when in control of the Grimoire skills. Space and Time Mastery is necessary for the Mirror. Summoning Mastery is necessary to improve the Witches since it was a type of invocation. Charm it'll help with handling the different personalities of your underlings. Really now? Without the time to practice new rituals? I suppose I can pass those for now. The curses I'll go for them once I return to adventuring. They should help me out against different enemies. Get those skills status. I'll believe in you both for this. Notice, skills successfully learned. Status updated. Wondering how that will be of help to the mirror. Time will tell I guess. It'll still be level 1 so can't expect much as it is. I continue my gaze at the screen filled with skills reading all of them. My sure to kill combo so far has been icicle into ice expansion. But if I think on all my skills, perhaps finding new combinations could be rather interesting. After all Teacher A, told me to focus on more than just swordsmanship and like him, so I can reach beyond his own talent. When I coated my sword alongside with decay skill, Moonflower got scared about it. I suppose that skill is dangerous. I believe it made the skin of the fake one get corroded. It also worked on a curse. So it should be pretty interesting. If I used it against skeletons who don't have skin or meat I guess, it would be quite useless, like how Sister Dark Element isn't too favorable either. Mirror, Illusion Skill, show me a level 1 skeleton. Suddenly in front of me, a creature appeared to what I aimed the sword and coated it with mana and decay. I approach it slowly and glue the sword to it. Doesn't seem to be doing anything, even though the skill is chance based, so perhaps it simply didn't have an effect. Guess I'll wave it a bit through the bones. I do a couple of slow slashes one in the left shoulder to the hand vertically, a different one from the same starting spot to the right hip, another to the left leg. Seems like some of the spots are indeed decaying. I can notice the black appearance of the skill doing something to it, but it barely does anything. I guess bones take a long time to decay. Goblin level 1 instead of a skeleton. Instantly the creatures change place with one another, making the first one completely disappear. This skill is truly amazing, to think I could trick myself to this point. Now then let's see what happens when I use it in the goblin. I repeat the same movements I did before on the skeleton, and then slowly my expression becomes one filled with disgust. The body starts to disfigure, melting even in some spots where blood along with some liquid, created from melted skin, muscle and flesh drops to the ground, making it look very sticky. Uck, horrible, yet extremely effective on living things, in other words, 
Moonflower who noticed this became wary if it had touched her back then. After a bit more passes, seems like the places where it was decayed only disappear if it doesn't touch any other part of the body. If an enemy uses it on me, I'd have to freeze the effect instantly before it starts spreading towards my entire body. Feels a lot slower than poison, but there might be some monsters who are immune to one of the two. Skeletons seem immune to a lot of things for example, if there was an entire kingdom of them. It would certainly be quite problematic to handle. Perhaps even more than demons? The more things I think about the stronger I feel like I need to become. One step at a time Iris, small ones, I'll manage somehow. Hero detector on. I remember sister having them always on, even though hers were a lot more useful. At least, it'll keep me away from them. Alicia's a hero now too. Well it'll make me easier to find her if I must. Wondering what's she doing after being illuminated in front of everyone, I bet she's surprised about it. Hope she didn't lose herself to the soul fragment inside. Knowing her I'm sure she didn't, I believe in my friend. Villainous title. Hero class. By some reason these two things are contradictory to one another. From the explanation, it feels like I'm the enemy of humanity. Fame and disgrace, hero and villain. How are they correlated appraisal? Notice. 400 mana has been deducted. Hero is the peak class of fame, villain is the peak class of disgrace. Does that mean my class can evolve further beyond appraisal? Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Babel which is one of the peaks of a witch class, an aberrant and unique path of it. Therefore, as it matches what can be considered of hero and villain classes, is that the reason why I received the villainous title appraisal? Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Every being who reaches the fame peak receives the hero class and title. Huh? That was not what I asked though. What is the reason I received the villainous title appraisal? Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Every being who reaches the fame peak receives the hero class and title. What's going on? Why are you not appraising appraisal? Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Superior interference. Understood. Take it easy appraisal. This means the gods or one in specific is blocking this information. If I were a god, why would I do this? Perhaps to hide some sort of mistake. I suppose gods wouldn't do that easily. Something else? The witches referred the system brought a malfunction upon my soul. I gazed towards the goblin whose half decayed, disperse illusion. I then move inside the mirror. Let's see if in the other world I can find something more about this issue. On the other side of the mirror, in my own world, I approach the circle feeling the mana flow inside my body regaining it at a fast pace. Anastasia's love for me was it, I voice my thoughts in a low tone unconsciously, making the girl in front of me look at me lustfully. A chill passes through the spine on my back, forcing me to avert her gaze while I sit on the ground not too far from the fellow witch. What's today's ordeal master? She looks at me changing her expression to an innocent and curious one. Now then. How could I possibly get the appraisal skill to tell me classified information? If it's information related to the higher beings of Artana, perhaps you could ask it to this world system? No? Anastasia you're a genius. I shout happily making her embarrassed, forcing her gaze to be averted from me. Status show me the cursed skills. Cursed, unidentified skill. Mirror level 17, soul manifestation, endless growth, endless cap, endless awakening, profane sealing, profane connection, hum, profane connection was it, profane connection level 2 colon connect to the witches, connect to the system, connect to the system, system, brr, brr, system, the title high call has been received, system, hello, hello. Is this the system of my world? System, yes. How can the system be of help, Master Iris? I was trying to appraise some information about the higher beings of Adana, but someone, perhaps a god interrupted it. System, no one to block you here, but might not have enough information depending on the request. The mirror copied the world and the system knowledge, not the gods one, among other things. Hum, might be worth trying it nonetheless. What is the reason I received the villainous title appraisal system, conferring knowledge and permission to appraisal? Upon the records of Artana, it was caused and rewarded by the god of chaos loot. Unknown reason system, 
the title Stalker has been received seriously. Stalker system master did stalk for certain classified information, and I can't choose what titles to give, it is automatic like in the past world, I face palm making Anastasia burst into laughter unable to contain herself any further. Noticing her I make a snowball and throw it at her right in the face causing some of the snow to enter her mouth which quickly results in her coughing it out. We look at each other and resume laughing while throwing snowballs at one another like two kids, after a while, we lay on the snow in a straight line with our heads close to each other, both looking up to the sky. Say Anastasia what titles do you think I should give to the other witches? You can let them choose or simply give them based on the tone of voice like you did with me. The later would probably be best. Think they would want to pick something dangerous if I gave them the chance of choice? Definitely, even though if you pick only good things, their personalities won't change, so based on it, would make them able to be true to themselves. Speaking of personal experience, yes master. I understand. I'll go like that then, I shall name and entitle them as my mind initially perceived them, be it good or evil. In the end, we're witches? Happiness is not something we strive for. I see. Also master, don't use the cursed skill profane connection on Artana. It wouldn't surprise me if you were able to communicate with the gods with it which would cause a ruckus. Yes, I definitely don't want more attention to myself. Already had my share with this class. Do you regret being the Babel witch master? Not at all, just dislike the corruption part of it. All right, I'm glad. Anastasia says with a soft tone feeling relieved deep inside, don't worry, I'm content with all the curses and blessings I've received, without them, I wouldn't be able to extend my family members, upon hearing my words she smiles, a kind and beautiful one, unnoticed by me, master should permanently stay living in the shadows while hiding in Aurora's light, what do you mean by that, if she's as great as you make her be, my dear Iris, then Artana world will surely pay attention to her, even the gods won't be able to avert their gazes. In other words, you. No, we surpass Aurora from the shadows while hiding in this world, we seal your status information from them, and also your existence, we further enhance it with an illusory layer so they get fake information, in case one of the gods has a special skill of sorts, are we even able to do that? I sit and face her direction looking diagonally downwards with a surprised expression finding a smiling expression on the girl's face. There's nothing that Master Iris can't do, after all, we did receive quite the blessings from the goddess Aria, without her realizing it too, as she most likely thought it was Aurora only, a neary expression fills the girl's face reminding me of my sister. It seems like today's ordeal, we'll be taking a new update. I chuckle happily making her smile joyfully matching my expression. I extend my hand towards her which she changes from a sleeping position to a sitting one, matching the crossed legs and grabbing my hands. Let us start, cursed skill profane ceiling. Profane ceiling level 1 colon status. I touch the status option on the screen to avoid opening the usual screen showing my parameters. Notice, once sealed will require 100 times the mana spent to unseal. Do you wish to proceed? Yes, seal my status information with 5000,000. Notice, 5000 mana has been deducted. The mana from Anastasia converges with my own as I watch it passing through our hands, enveloping my entire body. Once it turns into a concentrated aura around me the typical blue light becomes purely white like snow and then a voice pops into my mind. Notice, the status has been sealed, to unseal will require 500,000 mana from you or a different entity who may attempt. The light aura touches my skin and then disappears, making me think it entered my body. With this gigantic amount of 500,000 mana even gods will have some trouble, but just in case, unique skill illusion profane seal layer in my status. Notice, 1000 mana has been deducted. Notice. An illusory layer has been placed, defensive countermeasures have been finished Anastasia. We let go of each other hands while smiling happily. Like this, Master Iris will be able to slowly progress in the dark without any god bothering you, and best of all, it'll also hide the mirror. Will this be enough to hide this world from the other gods? Unlikely. 
but seeing how small it is compared to Artana since your soul is lacking, it'll be fine for a lot longer, alright, let's worry about that when the time comes, if my soul even grows that much, hopefully it will, otherwise, soul manifestation skill will remain rather useless, and I'd like a place to live in. I look around remembering that Anastasia has been sleeping in this place every day. You're right, I apologize, and I'll see what I can do about that. Master doesn't have to be sorry. She bows her head feeling that her behavior was out of place. You're absolutely right Anastasia. Devising a suitable place for you to sleep in, is but something I as the older sister must proportion it. We smile at each other which causes her to feel relieved once more. Even then it'll be hard without soul power, and that's not something Master Iris can easily get without consequences. Actually I've had an idea on how to get some, I grin thinking on teacher A and the leftover funds from my recommendation letter. What will you do? She looks at me innocently tilting her head with eyes full of curiosity which makes me grin slightly. I'll make that old man go buy me soul stones like before, and then use the soul in it instead of absorbing it directly as my sister does. That way I shouldn't get tainted by what it contains. I think it's best if you consume them, but human ones only, so if possible make him buy those. Won't that bring issues? I believe it'll be fine, especially since humans consuming humans can't change in that sense. Understood, I'll talk with teacher and train swordsmanship some more then. Alright, meet you later Master Iris. We wave at each other while I head to the mirror going through it. On the other side, I raise the mirror and head outside the dojo going inside the house to look for my teacher. Teacher, I need a favor. What's up? I need some more soul stones, they don't have to be the best grade, just whatever you can find will do. Oh and a flower, a cute and good smelling one. Upon hearing the first half he feels confused, but the second part makes his left eyebrow raise. I won't question as you don't ask what I do either. Thank you. I smile happily as we built some sort of relationship ever since we began training together. How's your training? Mastered the bases yet? Not at all. I shout with a big smile making him go in fury. Then what you're waiting for you lazy idiotic student? I run back to the dojo while hiding my smile, making the teacher's happy expression go unnoticed by me. Once inside of it, I grab one of the wooden short swords and start waving it up and down. Illusion the high level goblin warrior I met that time, I then start using it as a practice dummy, studying where my sword will land, and what swings would be the most viable. When I met this one it felt like he could kill me and Aurora in one axe blow, if it was now. Would I be able to beat him? I gaze at it who looks perfectly the same as I remembered it to be. Suppose the unique skill uses my memory to create these things meaning he should have the level 20 from back then. Without having ever hit him the body feels very sturdy. Even if I got a few more levels, it still feels like I'd lose one on one. I'm sure he'll be a lot stronger than before if we ever meet again. I would like to fight him, and Moonflower too. I want to win against her the next time, but for that, I'd need to learn the sense skill. Back then I felt it for a couple of moments. But I suppose it wasn't enough to learn it. Teacher Ray says the skill is a unique tiered one, as such, it would be great if I learned a basic version of it. As long as I get it, I should be able to improve further, and eventually increase its level if necessary. With the current tools I have, it's simply a matter of time till I become stronger, not sure what my limit will be. I can't wait to reach it. I keep swinging my sword for a few hours more against its body. Year 5009 after the system day 5 of the sun season inside the dojo. Two days ago I had a visit from Ming and Momo, by now they should have probably arrived near sister. I wonder if they'll test her too. Just hope they won't get themselves killed, knowing Aurora. I gulp reminding me of certain aspects of her. Since I approved of them, and made sure they tell her about it, they should be alright. Even though I wasn't expecting Momo's words, her skill sure says the strangest things. I wonder if he works like a praiser or what's behind it. Once I awaken, she said I might bring a catastrophe into this world if I became a bad witch, didn't specify my class, meaning it has to do with something or someone else. 
perhaps a being who went through a similar way as I did with my classes, but it doesn't matter, my path is my own to take and I shall do what I desire for the best of everyone. Well, at least those whom I feel are worthy, as I spend a while practicing my swordsmanship once more increase the bases someone gets my attention. Iris, are you here? A man walks inside the dojo looking around meeting me shortly. Hello Omar, it's been a while. I smile happily at him while waving my sword downwards. That movement, feels a bit better than last time. Really? I've been trying really hard. That's great Iris, become strong, one step at a time. Did you need anything, coming all the way here after so long? I went into some of the Dark Forces hideouts looking at different artifacts and I found something peculiar, but unsure if it'll be of help. An item? What is it? I place the wooden sword on the ground softly and then walk to him who is a few steps further away close to the door. He places his hand inside the magic bag and pulls out what looks like a string with a black jewel, and then extends it towards me. Have a look for yourself, though be careful as the necklace is very old, one of the ancient equipment pieces we have in our possession. Surprise they even let you bring it, I stare at him without touching. Well. The majority of the five leaders decided to vote in favor to keep you alive, and seeing where you'd lead us. For that reason, despite the ones who hold the treasures being the ones who voted no, they still allowed me to bring you this. Supposedly it should help against corruption, but I'm not entirely sure of its effects. I consent with a nod and extend my left hand at it. Appraise it. Upon hearing my words Omar's eyebrow raises making a confused expression as he sees mana flowing on my hand. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Obsidian necklace, 10 magic defense. Brainwash effect may change the user's mind or protect it. Durability 200 200 rank unique accessory. This, I make a surprised expression startling Omar who wasn't expecting me to raise my voice. What is wrong kid? The necklace can both change the wearer's mind or keep it safe, in other words, it has two effects to it. Sounds like a no-go then. Guess I'll keep looking into some other items. Not at all Omar. This item is just perfect for me. How so? Won't it just bring more corruption? Generally it would. But, I need to develop myself further and I believe this is a good chance. Behold Omar, skill cursing objects, I aim at the necklace in front of me. As soon as my usual blue aura starts becoming pitch black Omar lets go of the necklace making it float in the air with my aura that surrounds it. I then close my eyes and start imagining a certain effect it could have instead, after a while passes my aura returns blue and the necklace falls into Omar's hands who grabbed it no longer feeling fear, as the ominous part of me was gone. Let's see if it worked. Appraise it once more. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Obsidian necklace, brainwash effect increases the resistance against mental attacks, and while equipped brainwashing effect on others will be stronger by 1%. Durability 150 150 rank cursed accessory. Seems like I'll have to improve this skill, but it worked. Now it gives brainwash effect and a little boost to one of my skills. You were able to change the item effect? He looks at me like I did something impossible. Yes, the item was unique grade so I changed it to cursed, by adding a type of curse which had a similar effect to the original one, though it lost the magic defense and one fourth of the durability, at least like this, it becomes useful for me. To you and any other, having such a resistance. You have no clue how expensive this item could be sold for, even a king would want to buy it. Though the royal family has absurdly good items to protect themselves, as well as the selected guards who sense the magic being used by others. Since they sense it, they can kill the caster, so brainwashing them or something wouldn't work. Though what about a ritual done from far away? Perhaps, hitting the entire castle. Something like that would take who knows how long and an absurd amount of mana. It's just not practical Iris. Even if you joined a lot of witches under the same circle? Circle? Witches act alone, be it in their curses or their rituals, it is known different levels of rituals would cause confusion between two different witches. Oh my goodness. I start remembering about the adorable witch status, and how everything was equal to my own making me place a hand in front of my mouth. It's not that the ritual can't work, 
but the witches need to be completely aligned, in other words, if it were me, maybe I could make such a catastrophe, I would still need large quantities of mana which by no means I have, but maybe I can find some rituals that need less or other options, well Iris, feel free to take the necklace, shall I put it around you, you've already changed it and also, yes please do, I turn around facing the opposite side of Omar, and then feel the cold obsidian touch the warmth of my skin in the front giving me the chills, eventually I hear some sort of click sound, and I stop feeling the fingers of Omar, instead my hair waves downwards naturally, your hair seems to grow pretty fast now that I'm taking a closer look at it. In fact. Come here and put your back on the wall. I do as Omar says and then with a knife that he takes from one of the sheaths in the belt around his waist, raising it a bit above my head level and making a cut on the wooden wall. Like this, your height has been marked, for a nine year old, you're tall enough, but from the last time. Well never mind, I'll know soon enough if I'm right or not. Could he be talking about my cursed skill endless growth? I do believe it said a faster growth of the body would happen. I guess it'll make me mature faster? How fast? Probably not at a speed my body cannot keep. So it should be fine, and I'll be able to have my hair length back in no time. I smile brightly taking a few steps forward creating some distance from Omar who remains staring silently. My mind is fully clear now. The necklace sustained some permanent damage, however, is proving useful. I should still be careful and keep maximizing the brainwash resistance. Status How much level do I have currently? Brainwash resistance level 110? It already increased 10 levels since I increased it. I hope at some point the corruption will reduce and disappear. I'll be around, if you need anything just shout. Also where is the old man? Shouldn't he be teaching you? He's either at home drinking or outside doing it. The only way Ray will teach me anything is after my base grows enough. Whatever that implies. In that case, I'm pretty sure it won't take long. After all, by some reason you seem to be growing nicely. Just take your time increasing your skills levels. Once you start maximizing them, you'll be able to focus on other ones. Eventually or at least ideally you'll have everything maxed in no time. I suppose so. I face him watching as he leaves closing the dojo door. Unless you can increase the level of all the skills. In other words, I can't really max anything. Kind of like my mirror skill that just goes to random levels as it pleases. Does it even have a max level? The last time I appraised it didn't work so well. Cursed skills truly are nasty. I'll have to be careful about how I handle them. For now, I'll do my best to increase every skill to at least 100. Status Illusory Sealed Status Level 15 Experience 751,500 Fame 4,450 Disgrace 32,720 Unique Class Babel Witch Rank 3 Experience 4798 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 9 years old health, 1271 1270, mana, 3853850 status points colon 0 strength, 325 plus 39, stamina, 77 plus 50, agility, 85 plus 45, Dexterity, 119 plus 20, Intelligence, 263 plus 41, Wisdom, 335 plus 50, Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 1, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 1 Soul, 2200 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Purchases, Wisdoms, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Cooked fishes, preyed upon F, cheetah, S, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird F, cooking series, E, slayer series F, sales, soul bounds, elements, contracteds, peasant, F, class A, monster slayer D, slime slayer B, skill masteries, criminals, herbs gathered, herbs types, potion brewers, potion type C, status masteries, Beast Slayer C, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, 
Orc Slayer Ref, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer C, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boards, Disgraceful, S, Zombie Slayer F, Curse Slayers, Turtler Slayer Ref, Corpse Transporters, Library Completions, Crime Series F, Wises, Strongs, Human Slayer Ref, Murderer Ref, Villainesses, Swordsmanships, Sword Series E, Connections, Connected Series D, Dementeds, Masochists, Pervert Series C, Humiliateds, Tricksters, High Calls, Stalkers, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Illusions, Readers, Trees, Gods, Skill Points, Zero Actives, System Library Level 100S, Mana Coat Level 72B, Mana Wave Level 23E, Ice Bind Level 36E, Ice Sword Level 20E, Icicle Level 66C, Long Slash Level 40F, Ice Expansion Level 18F, Ice Hammer Level 1F, Ice Spear Level 1F, Ice Wave Level 10F, Ice Light Armor Level 20E, Ice Heavy Armor Level 10F, Triple Slash Level 50D, Thrust Level 30E, Parry Level 40D, Backstep Level 20E, Dance of Death Level 5F, Vanish Step Level 1F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 60C, Swordsmanship Level 65C, Sword Mastery Level D54, Mana Control Level 59D, Ice Control Level 40D, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 50D, Slight Mana Recovery Level 71C, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 10F, Axe Mastery Level 4F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 110S, Night Vision Level 30E, Slight Stamina Boost Level 50D, Slight Agility Boost Level 45E, Slight Strength Boost Level 39E, Slight Intelligence Boost Level 35E, Slight Health Recovery Level 73D, Ice Resistance Level 50D, Cold Resistance Level 60D, Heat Resistance Level 30E, Lightning Resistance Level 40D, Knockback Resistance Level 22E, Stealth Detection Level 20E, Paralyze Resistance Level 4F, Sword Posture Level 12F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 10, Decay Level 6, Mana Shield Level 46, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 45, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 100, Curses Mastery Level 100, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 72, Magic Knowledge Level 70, Ice Mastery Level 40, Babel Mastery Level 20, Dark Mastery Level 1, Space Mastery Level 1, Time Mastery Level 1, Summoning Mastery Level 1, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Magic Attack Level 1, Magic Defense Level 1, Charm Level 1, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 69, Illusion Level 13, Hero Detector Level 1, Status Level 75, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 22, Soul Manifestation, Endless Growth, Endless Cap, Endless Awakening, Profane Sealing, Profane Connection, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank Unique Final Phase, 151200, Contracted Witches, Anastasia, Equipment Effects, Brainwash, Resistance. Let's begin the Babel Witch Ordeal of Iris to have all these skills maxed. Year 5009 After the system day 60 of the decaying season outside the dojo, sitting on the ground next to Ray, the leaves seem to be falling rather aggressively. Really? It looks normal during this time of the year. You've been a good student this far, someone so young. I didn't expect you to actually go through all that practice without complaining. We're far from over. So hit me with your best or worst training. I smile eagerly while shifting my gaze at him. Yes, it'll become a lot harder from here onwards. You shall sense this world as blind people do. 
he starts taking something out of the pocket while making me scared of such words. Eventually, I notice what it is reminding myself of when my parents surprised me during a certain birthday giving me some comfort. Get up kid. From today onwards you shall do everything you've done till now blindfolded till I deem it right for you to remove it. All of this to learn the skill sense? Yes, if you manage to learn it, your base will become better. You'll start to feel things you never know existed. I understand teacher A. I get up and face the front of the dojo entrance, gazing one last time at the tree with orange leaves. Are you ready Iris? I take a long deep breath and then nod. Good. He places the blindfold around my eyes making me meet familiar darkness. Now walk towards that tree you are seeing just now. Remembering the distance somewhat I walk slowly, and after a few steps, I almost trip. This is harder than I expected, being blind makes the distance feel a lot differently. Feel the things around you, feel the tree, it'll show you the way if you do. What am I supposed to feel from a tree? It's not like it breathes or as if it makes any sound. The rustling of leaves near it approaches my ears with the help of the wind. I can hear that. I take braver steps this time around towards the tree while extending my arms in front of me with my hands open. As I get closer I hear what feels like the smaller branches shake causing me to pause as they are extensive causing me some space distortion. If I keep walking forward I'll be sure to hit the tree. Wasn't it sound what I was supposed to feel? I focus further on the tree in front of me, on my most recent memory of it. In the darkness of my mind, I remind myself of the first time I practiced mana with my father. To fill oneself with mana and allow an inner image to be dyed. Mana starts slowly painting me a tree inside my mind, from the bottom to the top. Eventually reaching with some difficulty the branches, and with even more effort the different leaves. From the side or even behind me perhaps I hear a soft whisper. Sit down and meditate, focus on whatever you are doing now and sense everything. Feel the world and your mind will develop a lot more. I do as Ray tells me to do, and then start all over again grasping towards that familiar feeling while telling myself a couple of things in my mind. Status close the notifications of mana, new titles, and skills. Notice, affirmative. Once I hear the status voice I allow my mind to drown in the world, and in a way allowing everything around to sink in me. Slowly I start to paint the darkness of my mind into a tone of blue, the tree, the branches, and the leaves. Behind it is a stone wall that surrounds the back section of it that I'm not unable to see. Feeling like the wall is incomplete. I try to see things from above, and as I do slowly I see the hole in the middle of the stone wall, filling it, and then the back of the tree, the branches, and the leaves I couldn't see before. Once I'm done I sense a leaf touching my leg, it just dropped. But from where, I didn't sense it falling. I focus on every leaf on the tree picture I just made, and slowly aim at every single one covering the spots with mana searching for it, for the flaw that the picture became. It must remain the same, perfectly as it is, otherwise, I'm not sensing it well enough. Many hours pass with me battling against the art I drew, always fixing it whenever I feel it necessary, eventually dyeing the leaves on the floor around me instead, removing them from the branches while at it. This is fun, despite being hard, incredibly difficult truly. After a few more hours goes by I hear a voice whispering in my ear. This time I realize that it's coming from the side, and not behind. Come eat Iris, it's already night. You shall continue tomorrow. I place my hand on the floor smashing a leaf and then get up walking slowly towards the source of the voice, as I don't have the energy to draw a completely different image. The next day I sit in front of the tree crossing my legs and leaving my arms on top of them with my hands closed in a fist shape. I draw the entire tree and notice how different the detail is from the day before, not knowing the exact number of leaves that were lost. Perhaps with enough time, I'll be able to compare the before and the after, realizing the differences instantly. Possibly training like this is the goal of teacher Ray. He doesn't really go into much explanation, but knows when I'm doing something wrong and corrects me. So should be fine, despite spending his days loitering around here and there. There are times, in some days, and few moments where I do see him slashing the air, almost like cutting the air itself, 
neither knows the origin of what we breathe or what's around us, but we feel it in our faces. We know it exists, as such, we respect its guidance and allow it to serve our sword in its path. Teacher often says that to produce the wind blades that are propelled with his sword, is not something he managed to do alone, but a blessing of the air itself, an invisible something that allows it. There is no god of wind. We both know the four gods that exist, so perhaps it is something else, maybe a higher being, but not one that lives up there, above the sky. To own the power to strive over anything and anyone, that's been one of my goals, and the witches approved of it, I am eagerly looking towards the day that becomes true, the one time where the survivability of the human race persists. In the end, I'm only alive thanks to the goddess Aria, along with my sister. For that reason if I can, I'll give her a hand, if I and my sister manage to save humans then that is nice. If not we'll grab our family and friends and live in my own world. Being born or reborn doesn't equal that my life can just be given away in the name of a higher being. I've never prayed and I most likely never will, the gods didn't save me in my past life. I accept they exist, but that's it, if I had been born as a different species, the same result would be given. Monsters, beasts, humans, demons, and whatever else is out there. Everyone has a soul and is part of this world and system. That is enough to see everyone as equal. And I shall give everyone a fair chance to surrender, and even befriend me if they so desire. My dear mother always told me, be nice to those who treat me good, and beat those who mistreat me. My parents' values and teachings are sacred to me. If it wasn't for them I may have ended up having a terrible second life instead, I miss them very much and am eager to meet them again. But mother told me to not waste this opportunity, both for her and myself. I'll become stronger and surpass Sylvia in swordsmanship, my teacher even. I shall show my mother her efforts weren't a waste, and then I'll master magic, and show my father the time he spent teaching me was priceless. Might not become the strongest being of Adana or any world really, but that's fine. In the end, a goal is something to strive for. My life attempting both shall be like a quest. An adventure even, I nod gently while beaming brightly like the sunlight outside which I can't see. I shall become the villainous of this world if that's what takes to keep my entire family safe and use the Grimo Eye powers if it comes to it. I miss my silly outstanding sister, silly Aurora. You should have stayed with me. I make a sad face turning the picture in my mind darker, closer to a tree with no leaves in a cold night sky. I mustn't be selfish, she's very talented after all, sister is needed elsewhere. My dear sister must be having a hard time on her side too. After all, the enemies are strong, and we the humans are weak. I need to overcome myself and catch up, join the army if she needs my assistance. The prince said there weren't many ice mages, so I'm sure I could be of help to her, surely. For that, I need to continue my training and finish it as early as possible. I take a deep breath and regain tranquility inside my mind, dying the picture in front of me as it's meant to be. In my mind, there's no place for darkness, in here it is I who commands it, and I shall dig out the corruption in it erasing it completely. For a brief moment inside my mind, the colors being used are neither blue nor black, but a sinister white that makes it look rather pure. Year 5009 After the system one season later in the day 90 of the moon season, Tun village northeast outskirts near a lake, all right we're far enough and in a good spot, Iris undress. Ah, do you know just how cold it is, hum? You're still dressed? Do you need help? Of course not you perverted teacher. I shout angrily while embarrassed at the typical randomness of this old man. If not then get going you weakling. Ray kicks me into the lake giving me no time to undress and falling inside its coldness. Ah. It's completely freezing. I do my best to stay on top of the water as it is not that deep while completely undressing, except for my panties and necklace. I throw my clothes in ball shaped projectiles making them fall near A then places them near a bonfire as he's not completely an insane man. What do I do now Ray? I question the man who's evaluating me as he sees me struggle to stay at the surface. Swim while you resist the cold from one margin to the other, you should have enough stamina to do forth and back ten times. It's like ten meters far, 
once you build some cold resistance and swimming skill, along learning how to sustain your breath properly, we'll climb that waterfall and you'll swim in the river instead, yet another insane training. He's just trying to kill me at this point. I haven't even learned how to swim as my mother didn't let me too close to the water. But oh well, time to learn and do my best as always. Whining about it will just get me punished. I start using my hands mimicking a dog to what Ray who sees this starts yelling. You freaking idiot, you have to do it like this. He starts rotating his arm as circular as possible a few times and then shows the way he shaped the right hand. Why are you semi-closing the hand like that teacher? I ask while attempting to mimic his movement making me able to move in the water a bit nearer to the margin. It allows your hands to push more water behind. If you shape them like a shell, it should give you a swimming skill once you learn it called frog swimming. Don't forget to use those legs underwater, it's part of swimming and the best tool to keep you on the surface, like this. He starts alternating the arms, waving up and down and I mimic those movements with my legs, slowly gaining a better grasp of it. It's not fun gulping water down, is it? At least like that, you won't go down, and if you do just hit your feet on the ground and jump back up, all right. I allow my head to lean forward and start doing those circular movements with my hand half closed feeling the water being pulled and pushed while waving my legs. I take a long while to get used to it eventually making a voice ring in my head, notice, the skill swimming has been acquired. I got a swimming skill, but it doesn't have a name like the one you mentioned teacher, I do my best to swim close to him hitting enough height to place my feet on top of the muddy ground feeling it squishy, leaving from my neck and below, underwater. That's fine, not often do we get the same skills, and we're a bit different too. What matters is that you got the skill you need, now go work hard for those titles, swim, swim, and swim some more. He started laughing crazily and loudly. In the end, I'm just doing what he's been doing for who knows how long, so I need to do what he tells me. Even though lately teacher feels a tad different, is it due to age? Once she's far enough he turns around and starts coughing to the bonfire making some of the blood be burned by it. Just a bit more body, don't give up on me just yet. He sits near it gazing at me while thinking, their kid finished the enlightened series making her mind purer that will definitely keep her corruption away despite being a witch. She's also improved her swordsmanship, the control over mana and her element, along with some secret training she did on her own. With her being this very hard working and growing faster than the rest of the students I have, it is a shame if I'm to die without finish teaching her all the things I know. I won't allow my life wish to fail just because of some crappy thing like age. Even if it's the last thing I have to do or resorting to becoming a different race to achieve it. Don't betray my expectations girl, you're all I have left now, and we have a promise along with a reward, so run, swing, meditate swim, do everything necessary to become stronger and stronger. A shadow suddenly appears on the other side of the bonfire with a blanket in the hand, Ray looks at it in front of him, here's something old man, can't have you dying without finishing the one training, if she's to become as powerful as you, then at the very least keep yourself warm. TSH damn brat. Ray receives the blanket from Omar who throws it at him covering himself with it. Watching her naked body from here does ascertain me that she's growing physically faster than normal. It is a blessed skill she has. But even with it, the base is still not solid enough. No matter how many titles she gets and statuses she may have, age really impacts the person in the end. Wasn't it only for extra stats per year? Omar sits near the bonfire placing both hands close to it warming them up. That's like saying a baby of one year that is 1000 statuses of everything can beat an adult with one one hundredth of it. Putting it that way I see what you mean. At the speed she's growing, around her 15 or 16 birthday, should be the ideal age where her body will be able to reach its peak. I might not be alive by then. So when that time comes make her eat this list of soul stones. If it's this combination her soul base will remain human which shouldn't become bothersome for her. Ray takes out a list from the pocket and then lifts the shirt upward showing his body to Omar whose eyes open wider. And then he hides it. That explains a lot of things old man, 
Omar grabs the list and his eyes widen even more than before. This. Are you truly sure about it? Of course, she's my student after all, plus I'm passing everything I know to her. In a way, for her to be able to match any future threat, I believe all that will be necessary. Won't that affect her? Don't worry, the secondary effects are only for the one who takes it firstly. Once life is extinguished it'll fully become equal to the base. That's incredibly smart I know, took me some tries in the past. Therefore, that list being important, you can even save everything in the magic's bag for when the time comes, and make sure you never betray her. I'll come back from the dead to slay every single one of your dark robes if necessary. Despite Omar taking the threat seriously, he laughed at the old man's words. No one can cheat death, but don't worry. I'll take good care of the one. She's a very interesting kid after all. Not bringing the topic of the prophecy. That's new. Well, I've really taken a liking to her. A little beam of light in a terrible world like this one I suppose. Ray takes out two small bottles of wine from a nearby basket and throws Omar one of them. To the future of Iris. To the future of Iris. Omar repeats and they beat the bottles softly against one another. They take the cork of it and start gulping it relentlessly leaving both bottles halfway. Ah, this is good stuff, Ray mentions while gazing back at Iris noticing how her swimming has become slightly better. Agreed. It is a nice wine. Look at that. She didn't know how to swim, and now look at her, how much she improved. Blessed skill endless growth. If I had that when I was her age. Perhaps I'd be dueling the red dragon by now before passing on to the next life. Ray starts laughing loudly making Omar smile faintly. I'm pretty sure that one would still kill you without much of an effort. After all, it has lived far too long in this world. Possibly ever since the start of it, and you know how age makes us stronger. Even if not much for us humans. I suppose for that race it'd be a lot more. It should affect every race no matter what. There may be beings far stronger than it out there. Some of them could even put the demon kingdom in peril. In fact, one of the things I've always wondered is that humans deem demons as the strongest race. Now that you mention it, Ray. Omar takes another sip while the old man continues. There may be races far stronger, and they might simply belong to the god of chaos, if I were to guess. That god is the strongest of the four. Why do you say that? He controls far too many monsters. Perhaps not by quality but quantity. Enough of them to make the different races struggle, otherwise. How do you explain the demon race not have conquered this world by now? Like the different beast races like the goblins, kobolds, and orcs. You're saying that there's plenty of monster ones too. Some of them that go in pair with the demons. That's indeed possible. This is just a wild guess. But the legendary turtle monster could be a very advanced version of those turtle monsters that you can find, and the red dragon. An evolved type of normal dragons. That would mean there's a kingdom of both types out there somewhere, perhaps across the sea. Both take a sip and then Ray continues with his theory. If I were to gauge all the gods based on their achievements after chaos would come order, then evil and lastly Arya. Since the first two have a different quantity of beast and monster races it makes sense, whilst us humans are pretty weak, and the demons the other way around. Yes, I believe that fits pretty well. What are the two of you talking about? I arrive with a towel around me leaving the knees and below exposed while sitting close to the bonfire. After they explain everything they were discussing I add, that does sound very likely to be fair. I don't even understand how both Arya and the evil god only picked one race, it's pretty silly. Well in war what wins is usually numbers, so ultimately the reason could have been solely preference based on their godly titles I suppose. Isn't Arya the goddess of summons? Since she does it a lot with humans? From our records, she has three titles, more than the rest but none really makes her particularly formidable. She's sometimes known as the goddess of good, of summons, and of laziness. Upon hearing those words, Ray spits some of the wine bursting into laughter startling me causing a smile on me and Omar. Still isn't it weird that a lazy goddess has managed to keep her kingdom intact? Was it purely only based on luck and the summons? I've met a few of them and they weren't particularly anything special. We look at each other and then Omar shrugs his shoulders while Ray decides to discuss a bit more. Perhaps there is indeed something else that makes Arya special. 
but since they're gods, it's unlikely that we'll find out about it. You've reached closer to the level of the Saint Osiris. Why do you say that Omar? The aura around your body is emanating by itself, meaning you have reached the minimum of 5000 mana. Oh, so that's what the elemental aura title meant, didn't know I'd also receive one. They laugh at each other about my typical innocence. Since when did the two of you became so buddies? I pout without being really mad at them making them laugh even more. Ah. Whatever, I'll sleep. Good night. I dressed the clothes that Omar throws me as the others were still drying and then I lay down next to the bonfire while attempting to fall asleep. It seems like Omar's assumption was right, the kid body, the height, hair length, chest having an unexpected size, and hey kid, have you started bleeding yet? Like between your legs? Ah, uh, why would I? That say no? Yes, it say no. What kind of question is that even? I and Omar think that your body might be around 10 to 10 and a half years if you haven't bled yet. Women bleed as a sign that they can have kids. It's a natural thing that Rosa would eventually teach you. I believe it usually starts at the age of 12. If it ever happens then you'll know how far your body is due to that endless growth skill. Your body is a little different than a normal human one. Does that mean that I'll age faster and die earlier too? I shout worriedly at my teacher who replies calmly. Don't worry about it, I'll make you eat some soul stones in some years to keep your body in a good state. For now, focus on getting stronger and allowing yourself to grow. Wouldn't I become something else if I ate them? Not if they're humans or a stable mixture of different species, as long as you don't overdo one race, it'll be fine. To achieve that, you'll need a big soul, and also a strong base which is what we're building right now. Don't worry kid, even if I die, I've instructed Omar to lead you to the rightful path. Alright, I'll focus on my training for now or in resting. Swimming was more tiresome than expected. Worse comes to worst I can use the appraisal skill to find ways to get a proper soul stone combination. Allowing my body to grow faster here is necessary, so I'll go along with it for now. Sleep well kid. I'll return to watch the surroundings. Omar places the empty bottle and disappears, enabling Ray to also get some rest. Epilogue days like this certainly wouldn't last forever, but while they did, it made something deep inside of me grateful, perhaps the new bond that grew from spending my current daily life with them, I was happy, and these two knew of it, despite the odd they treated me like their daughter and granddaughter, in a way that made me miss my family, and above all else I wished that my feet would walk me to them, towards my father and mother embrace, but mum always made me stick to my promises, and there was no greater vow than the one I made to Rosalind. As a child it was without a doubt my goal to succeed my parents, to fulfill their dreams, I had it in me, after all, my teacher A convinced me of it, and I also wished to strive for my own goals, be either me or Aurora, we the chosen children of a strange prophecy, anticipated patiently for what tomorrow could bring, whereas many a monsters awaited with their sharp teeth and weapons to gnaw our lives away as the goddess Arya declared the day she evaluated us. She who knew we wouldn't last, and the two of us who would certainly do our best to show her wrong. End of block 4